Good morning motorsport fans and welcome back to BARC TV for our second day of action here in Pembrey, the home of Welsh motorsport. We have got 12 races to bring you today. Four of those for our headline is the British Truck Racing Championship. Pointy of course is here, he's going to be looking after the trucks for you. I'll be looking after the MG Owners Club Championship, their final round of the championship this weekend. Plenty to play for in every single class. Also got the pickup truck racing, Rhys Jones is leading that one and also the Welsh Sport and Saloon Car Championship. So everything going on and before you say anything, yes, it's not yet nine o'clock. Yes, we're in South Wales. Yes, it's October and yes, it is pretty much t-shirt weather. A beautiful day here and it's going to be packed crowds around the banks as well. So first race of the day is the Welsh Sport and Saloon Car Championship. I spoke to Wayne Spiller who could wrap up the class and the overall championship in race one. Let's go racing. So we have three races this weekend in the Welsh Sport and Saloon Car Championship. Leading the championship and looking pretty good, it must say, Wayne Spiller Car 96. We'll get on to the 961 in a second. Um, seven wins this year, having a great season, aren't you? Brilliant, yeah, yeah. Very, very happy. Worked hard, but very, very happy with it, yeah. yeah. Everybody's got to work hard. Now, last year, you won the class. This year, you're leading the class and the overall. And the points table, like we've said, I mean, I don't want to sort of put any monikers on this, but you really just need to finish race one and that could potentially be enough, yeah? Yeah, finish race one, anywhere in the class and we've won. So pressure's on, yeah. <laughs> say, we say just finish. Just finishing can be hard sometimes, but the weather looks good tomorrow. The car's been in sensational form. Um, it's, it's all looking pretty good for you. Now, to our right-hand side here, yeah. 961, yes. this is your car as well. Yes. Um, I understand this is you being very confident. If you if you do it in race one, have a play in this car over here. This is sensational looking, by the way. Thank you. More of an insurance policy. If I don't <laughs> finish race one and the car breaks down like it did in Thruxton, we can still win the championship. Um, uh, three races. Have you got a, a, a car three meth potentially as well? Oh no, 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 no. Unfortunately not. No. Um, tell us about this car. I can't tell my eyes off it. Uh, yes, uh, I bought it earlier this year. Uh, to lay on TCR, really. That's it. It's some. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's very difficult. I Left-hand drive, this, that. So, yeah. I mean, my favourite colour is orange. I just love the livery as well. Um, so, tomorrow morning, you are the first race out. You could potentially be class and overall winner by about 20 past nine tomorrow morning. You ready for it? It's a bit early for a beer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you off. Champagne on the roof when you finish. Hey, mate, Wayne, good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. No much worries, appreciate mate. it. Take care. Cheers. Uh, so our first race of the week, uh, of the Sunday, is the Welsh Sports Lucar Championships. Uh, let's go motor racing over to you, Dave. Well, thanks very much, Ewan. Yes, good morning from me, race fans, and welcome to sunny Pembrey, the home of motorsports in South Wales, ready for day two here on BARC TV. Full day of race action presented by the British Automobile Racing Club. It's a full day of racing. We've done qualifying. That was all done yesterday. Four different categories racing on the Pembrey circuit today. Headlined by the British Truck Racing Championship. They had two races yesterday. Another four coming up today. Very busy weekend, the penultimate weekend of the year for our big rig racers. My name's Dave Goddard. I'm your commentator for today's racing. We kick off very shortly with our first race for the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. Their title decider potentially coming up here this morning, followed by the trucks and then the pickup truck racing championship. We've got about 18 pickups here waiting to go into action. Three races for them here today. We've also got two races for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. MGs of all ages in action title battle between Steve McDermott in his, his uh, ZR and Will Sharp in his MG Midget will be coming up over the course of today. McDermott won yesterday, another two races coming up for them today. More racing from our various categories throughout the day. We've also got a parade of classic cars taking place this afternoon. We'll also have some highlights of some two-wheeled action that took place at the end of uh, yesterday. The uh, cycling event organised in uh, aid of the My Name's Doddy campaign. Of course, set up by Scottish Rugby International Doddy Weir in aid of uh, motor neurone disease research. And uh, the uh, fundraisers there had uh, a cycling event at the end of yesterday. We'll hopefully have some highlights from that. So we're awaiting our first race to come out onto track then, which is the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship, administered by the Welsh Racing Drivers Association, which uh, was instrumental in setting up racing here at uh, Pembrey several years ago. Pembrey circuits uh, opened back in the 1980s. 
from the Welsh Racing Drivers Association was um, instrumental in uh, setting up racing here at Pembrey. Formed in 1981, they found uh, the venue at Pembrey Airfield. There is still an active airfield next door to this venue, but the older part of the airfield now converted for racing. Held its first events uh, in the mid-1980s. Uh, the first race day held in 1989, to be precise. Organised by Clanetley Borough Council. We're just west of Clanetley here in South Wales, near the town of uh, Burryport. There's some of the Orange family as they're known, our volunteer marshals. Thank you as always to uh, all of them out there in all weathers, uh, keeping our drivers safe. Uh, we couldn't go racing without them. And they'll be in position on their posts throughout the day. The Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship, meanwhile, goes uh, dates back to 1990-91 uh, was when the um, first championship was held. And look, we look back uh, yesterday during the qualifying session at the uh, list of champions, 1990 and 91. The uh, late great Blake Edwards was the first champion in a Ford Capri. He won it for the first two years. The big attraction of this series is you can use anything you like. Much, as long as it's not a single seater, you can race sports racing cars, saloons, modified special saloons. We even had um, a couple of super touring cars race in this field from the British Touring Car Championship over the years. Let's have a look at the variety we've got on the grid then for this uh, first race of the day. Pole position in the qualifying session yesterday went to Derry Davies from uh, Aberystwyth in his Welsh-built Darien T90. He's on pole with a lap of 1 minute 0 0.402. Just a few hundredths of a second ahead of Damien Longatano in his very quick two-litre Westfield SE. He's running in Class 4. The classes go from 1 to 5, and there's also an invitation class, which uh, doesn't score points. That's what Derry Davies is racing in. Second row of the grid is Chris Everill in his Ginetta G55 GT4. Those top three on the grid are likely to be the ones fighting for overall victory. Chris Everill in Class 5 for the most powerful uh, point-scoring cars. He starts alongside Fabio Lafarelli in his Space Frame Mini Saloon with a 1,000cc motorcycle engine. We said this championship takes all sorts. Row 3, former champion Gareth John in his Ginetta G40 starts uh, hopefully alongside John Morris. John... Uh, Went up in smoke, unfortunately, in his uh, space frame Vauxhall Tigra hot rod style car in qualifying yesterday. Hopefully, he's been able to repair it. He's on the grid. We'll wait and see. Then we've got a pair of Mazda RX-8s. Uh, Aaron Edmonds is running in the invitation class. Craig Attard is in class two, same class as Wayne Spiller. Our champion elect, he lines up on row five alongside Robert Rees in his BMW Mini R56, completing the top ten on the grid. On the sixth row of the grid is the uh, chair, I believe is still the chairman of the Welsh Racing Drivers Association, Roger Dowden, at the wheel of his Davrian. Davrian, the predecessor to Darian, when the uh, company was founded in London. That's uh, another one-litre engine car. It's either a Mini or Hillman Imp engine in there, that Davrian. Starts alongside Andrew Williams in his Renault Clio. Row seven, Mike Cook in his BMW, alongside Verity Banks in his Ford, in her Ford Fiesta. And the final row, a couple of cars we didn't see in qualifying yesterday. Alan Smith, who used to race a Ford sport car in this championship. He's now in something called an NMR Kawasaki. I presume that's some sort of kit car with a Kawasaki motorcycle engine. We didn't see it in qualifying yesterday, so I'm interested to see what that car looks like. And alongside him, Ruben Taylor in a Peugeot 206cc coupe with a two-litre race-tuned engine. That's another uh, space frame hot rod style car. He was racing at Castle Coombe in Wiltshire yesterday in their GT Championship finale. So um, just doing his mandatory couple of laps behind the safety car. There is the uh, number 149 of Ruben Taylor running in the invitation class. You can see it uh, looks like in shape a 206 coupe, but that's uh, a space frame chassis with a carbon fibre and Kevlar body, similar to a national hot rod if you're familiar with uh, short oval racing the bmw mini safety car just leading him round he has to do a mandatory couple of laps um, just to effectively qualify for the back of the grid heading down to brooklyn's corner and was racing with some quite exotic cars at castle Coombe in uh, yesterday's uh, gt championship there ferraris lamborghinis and all sorts they get at, uh, at Coombe. And the variety here can sometimes be as impressive as that as well. We've seen Keith Butcher with his Audi A4 Super Touring car. He's uh, brought out GT3 cars as well. He had an ex-team Rosberg Audi R8 a few years ago, I remember. 
Alvin Powell had his Ford Mondeo Super Touring car, the Andy Rouse built machine for many years. You can see some of the variety there in the uh, pit area as well. Some of the cars that have won the championship over the years. I mentioned the Ford Capri, there's been Porsches, Ford Sapphire Cosworths, Welsh built uh, Darians, Minis, Radical Sports Cars, Skoda Special Saloons, Honda Civics, Audi TTs, Seat Leon Cupras, everything down to Russell Haggerty's little Ford Sport car, which won the title in 2009 and 10. A silver riot kit car, Suzuki Ignis, more uh, famous as a rally car, Keith White's famous BMW Z4 silhouette car, a Citroen Saxo, a Peugeot 106, a Caterham, Damien Longatano's Westfield, he was champion in 2019, Gareth Johns Ginetta won it in 2021, and the reigning champion Colin Dunn used a Renault Clio. So you really can race anything you like in the Welsh Racing Drivers Association uh, Sports and Saloon Car Championship. And you don't have to come from Wales either. We've got a couple of drivers from England here today. Uh, Mark Williams was booked in to race with his Renault Clio. He's from Bristol. Not sure if Mark's here, though. We've got Andrew Williams, no relation in his uh, Clio. Verity Banks, she comes from Farringdon in Oxfordshire in her Ford Fiesta. Whereas uh, Alan Smith, if he's here, we've not seen his car yet, but he is on the grid sheet. He comes from Barnsley. John Morris from Hereford in the Welsh Borders. Fabio Lufferelli from Camelford. And uh, Reuben Taylor comes from Ivy Bridge in Devon. He's completing his laps there behind the safety car. So it'll be a 15 minute race. Just waiting to see. Um, yes, he's going to join straight onto the back of the grid here once the other cars come out from the assembly area. In the background there, we see the very green. Darian T90 about to lead the cars out. That's Derry Davis from Aberystwyth on the West Wales coast, a butcher by trade. So Wales' fastest butcher going for victory here. We've not seen him on track very often this year. And Damien Longatano and Chris Everill will be his main contenders. Chris Everill in the Ginetta G55 GC4 spec car. Comes from Templecombe in the southwest of England. Damien Longatano from Haverford West in the southwest of Wales with his very quick Westfield SE. Two litre, I believe it's a Vauxhall engine in that car. The Darien has uh, a Vauxhall based uh, two litre engine as well. The Millington tuned engine built in Lampeter in mid Wales. Company revived by uh, Tim Duffy in the mid 80s. Started in London in the 60s as Davrian. We've got a Davrian on the grid as well as we've seen. It's up to the grid they come. It'll be a rolling start behind our pace car. It was a Darien T90 that uh, won the British GT Championship outright. It was the Swansea uh, University run car back in uh, the 1990s. 1996, I believe it was Ken Thompson and Del Delrond who were the uh, drivers on that occasion. So they're in position. I think that orange car, we can just see at the back, that is Alan Smith's car. The NMR Kawasaki. Watch for that coming through, the one litre motorcycle engine machine. Also with a bike engine is Fabio Lufferelli in his space frame mini, very much in the special saloons mould from the 70s. John Morris is not there. The uh, Tigra unfortunately blew its engine in uh, qualifying yesterday. Thanks for all your comments so far on our YouTube stream. We've even got a couple of uh, viewers from Brazil. So uh, hello to you. Big hello to Richard Barwick, who's been watching on before we went live as well. Thanks to Richard for his help with our onboard cameras in the truck races today. Normally it's Chris Clark, but he's gone to Australia for the Bath Bathurst Thousand, the lucky devil. We know the British Touring Car Championship is going to be decided uh, today at Brands Hatch as well. So if we could ask people not to post spoilers in the YouTube chat, please. Partly because I'd like to watch that when I get home today. <laughs> it's, uh, we're almost ready to go racing then. The uh, Marshall displays the 30-second board. And the safety car, the Ford Focus Estates, will lead them away for a rolling start. Here we go. Derry Davies and Damien 
Longotano at the front of the grid as the green flag waves. It's Chris Everill's Ginetta, so it's likely to be the top three on the grid fighting, as we say, for the overall victory. But there's uh, six classes in this race. Classes one to five, determined by engine size and by tyre regulations. And the invitation class for uh, those not registered for the full championship. So they won't score points. Uh, the invitation class runners are Derry Davies, Roger Dowd and Alan Smith, Aaron Edmonds, Fabio Lufferelli and Ruben Taylor. John Morris would have been as well, but he's a non-starter. Look how tiny that Davrian is of uh, Roger Dowd compared to the even the Renault Clio next to it. Alan Smith's little sports car there, the NMR Kawasaki, could fly through. Very much in the kit car tradition, as is the Westfield of Damien Longatano, the former championship winning car. As the cars head through the left at Dibeni, first hairpin is hatchets, then followed by Spitfires. Then they go over the crossing, past the truck racing paddock. Got some classic cars on display in there as well. They'll be out on uh, track for a parade at around 1.40pm. One car at the back there, the uh, Mini of Robert Rees. So uh, maybe he didn't get away as the cars moved off for the rolling starts. This is Senna corner. Etten Senna did hold the outright lap record at one time here at Pembrey in a Formula One test session. I think that was in the McLaren back in 1993. The Mazda RX-8, watch for number 96, the red and black car there, Wayne Spiller. Just needs to finish this race to secure the championship as we heard earlier. There's Alan Smith, a bit different to the Ford KA that he used to race. For a team named IDGAF Racing. I'll leave you to work out what that might stand for. There. Out of Brooklyn's corner, down Speedway Straight. Then towards Honda Curve to the end of the lap. The pace car will pull into pit lane. And then this eclectic varied grid will be released 15 minute race we should see the quickest cars doing laps in the region of nearly 80 miles an hour average lapping in around one minute around the Pembrey circuit these are some of the quickest cars we have here today revs beginning to rise and Wayne Spiller take his first overall championship in the rotary engine Mazda Here we go then, first race of the day here at the Pembrey Circuits, the Welsh Racing Drivers Association Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. Derry Davies and Damien Longatano about to lead them away. The power comes on and away they go. Decent start by Longatano. Good start by Chris Everill up the inside. Not the best of starts at all for Derry Davies. He's down to fourth behind Fabio Lufferelli. And it's the Westfield of Longatano who leads the way into Hatchet's hairpin for the first time. Chris Everill in the Ginetta in second place. Derry Davies is going backwards because Gareth John has come through as well. Roger Dowden bounces over the kerb in the little Davrian. Gets ahead of Mike Cook's BMW and Verity Banks in the Fiesta. Yes, Derry Davies has got a problem. He's slowing down. I thought he was a bit slow off the grid. Yeah, the, Davri the Darian is uh, out of it, I think. That's a great shame for the Aberystwyth driver. Hopefully he can pull that to a safe place off circuit. That's a real shame because he would have been a contender for overall victory here. There's Robert Rees in his BMW Mini, chased by Wayne Spiller and the other Mazda of Craig Attard. He's the class rival for Spiller here. Aaron Edmonds in the third of the Mazdas, who had a spinning qualifying yesterday, is in the invitation class. Now, I suspect we're going to see these two run away at the front of the field. Listen to the rumble of that uh, Ginetta G55 and Chris Everill as he chases Damien Longatano. He could go for the lead here down the main straights. Fabio Lufferelli's mini in third place. Everill goes for the lead. The extra grunt of the Ginetta takes him into the lead. Attach its hairpin. Gets in on the brakes, but uh, watch that cheeky little Westfield. It's uh, much more nimble than the Ginetta, and he's all over the back of Everill there. Damien Longatano through Spitfires. Through the left-hander at uh, Dibeni. Raffarelli in third, Gareth John is fourth, Robert Rees in the BMW Mini has come through into uh, fifth position. He leads class three, Longatano's in class four and Everill in class five. Robert Rees, as I can tell you, has been given a 10-second penalty. That'll be for an out-of-position start. We saw him out of position on the uh, rolling lap. So, uh, as he didn't get away, I suspect that because he came through the grid on the rolling lap and uh, retook his position. He should have started from the back. There's Alan Smith at the wheel of the number 
2013 NMR Kawasaki Special. Everill leads over the line. Last lap of 1 minute 1.232. And these two already way ahead of the rest of the field. There we see the notification of that uh, penalty for our third place man, our uh, fifth place man as he was. There is Robert Rees, the BMW Mini. He's got the Mazdas queuing up behind him. What's the correct uh, collective noun for a group of Mazda RX-8s? So a rotary of Mazdas, I suppose. They're 1300cc rotary engines. And Wayne Spiller attacks Robert Rees, who's got that 10-second uh, penalty, but he's dropping back behind uh, Wayne Spiller. He's leading class two. He just needs to uh, keep going here and he'll win the championship for 2023. Another two races for these cars, though, over the course of the weekend. Ruben Taylor showing on the timing screen in P5. So we'll pick uh, the black Peugeot up in a moment. If that's uh, correct, he's come through very quickly from the back of the field. Yes, there he is. He's on the tail of Gareth John. That's a great run through by Ruben Taylor, the man from Devon in the Peugeot 206cc uh, coupe. And he goes straight past Gareth John. That Peugeot absolutely flying. He could catch the podium runners here. But he may not catch our top two because they're already 12 seconds clear of Fabio Lafarelli in third place. We've lost uh, Derry Davis, unfortunately. For some reason, our timing tower isn't picking up Ruben Taylor. That's why I... Uh, Got a bit confused there. He's showing at the uh, bottom of our graphic there. But uh, on the TSL timing screen here in the box, he is showing in P4. But he hasn't quite got the fastest lap of the race. That's with Chris Everill's Ginetta. There he is. They've already lapped Verity Banks in the Fiesta at the tail of the field. Alan Smith a lap down as well in the NMR Kawasaki. Just getting used to a, a new car for him. A bit different to a Ford KA hatchback. Ford Sport Car is a very potent little machine, though Russell Haggerty's version won the title a couple of times. It's all about results in your class in a championship such as this. Everill leads Class 5, Longatano Class 4, Lafarelli's leading the Invitation Class. Class 2 is led by Wayne Spiller, Class 3 by Robert Rees. And Class 1 is the only runner is Verity Banks because Russell Haggerty was a no-show. There's Alan Smith a lap down in the orange uh, NMR. Reminiscent of the cars that compete in the Sports 1000 series run by the 750 Motor Club. See that Kawasaki engine in the back. Chris Everill leads by one and three quarter seconds. There is Longatano shadowing him. On our previous visit to Pembrey back in May, Longatano broke down in the first race and then uh, screamed through from the back of the grid in the second race to take the win. Here's a battle between Clio and BMW. 88, Andrew Williams in the Clio. Mike Cook in the BMW, been a supporter of this championship for many years now. This is the fight for 11th place overall. Andrew Williams second in, uh, uh, third rather, in Class 2 behind the Mazdas. Mike Cook second in Class 3 behind Robert Rees in the BMW Mini R56. Across the line they go. New fastest lap for Longatano, 1 minute 0.605, a personal best for Everill as well, 1 minute 0.73. There's our third place, man. That's, uh, it looks like a mini of Fabio Lafarelli, but it's a space frame car with a one litre motorcycle engine. Very much in the special saloons uh, mould of the 70s and early 80s, when anything went. These of Jerry Marshall and company. You could even put a saloon silhouette body on top of a single seater, several did. Most famous of those was Mick Hill in the Formula 5000 single-seater chassis with a Volkswagen Beetle body on top of it. The car still exists, but uh, not competing. Over the line they go then, and Longatano goes under the one-minute bracket. 59.857 for Longatano. Everill did a one-minute seven, one-minute point seven once again, and they're lapping Cook and Williams. Back markers will get out of the way. The marshals will show them the blue flag to warn them that they're being lapped. Yes, you see it there from the post at Debeni. There's Roger Dowden in the little Davrian. 88.8 .8 miles an hour around the Pembrey circuits. And now the Mazda's coming into their own. Gareth John starting to drop back in his little Ginetta. He's second in class four behind Longatano, won the championship in 2021. Wayne Spiller's got through. He's not hanging around here. The champion elect, he's up into fifth position and leads class two. 
Notatano is going for the overall lead on the back of Chris Everill's Ginetta, who's competed in a whole variety of club events. He's an old-fashioned club racer, is Chris, what I call a freelancer. Races wherever his Ginetta is eligible. A bit like uh, Jazz Vesapra, the BMW racer. He's somewhere racing every weekend in one series or another. Andy Thompson with his XBTCC Seat as well. Verity Banks is now two laps down, as is Alan Smith. You can see the gulf in performance between these cars. Part of the attraction, as we said earlier. You can use any car you like. Robert Rees being lapped as well. That BMW Mini is struggling. Real shame he lost Derry Davies at the start because he'd be up there battling with this little lot, I'm sure. And if we can get the Darien fixed again, we'll find out hopefully what the problem is with you and Down and uh, on the ground in the pit lane. Hopefully he'll uh, be on the back of the grid for race two a little bit later on. The second race of these cars due off at 11.20. Across the line goes Spiller. He's in fifth. Then John and uh, Craig Attard from Cardiff in the Rocket Dog Racing Mazda RX-8. I'm assuming that refers to some sort of tuning company. Japanese car tuning companies do tend to have slightly unusual names. There's uh, the Rocket Dog car. There's Alan Smith in the NMR Kawasaki. Running fifth in the invitation class. Ruben Taylor's catching Fabio Luffarelli, the uh, Battle of the Space Framers, for third place. Find out how far behind the two leaders have already gone across the line, just under two seconds between them. Chris Everill's done the fastest lap, he's responded to the pressure from Longatano, 59.696 for the Ginetta. And these two, 30 seconds behind, and that's a spin for Craig Attard. 56 has gone off at Senna. This is the battle for third place. There'll be yellow flags out at centre corner, so no passing there. They haven't reached it yet. These two are some 30 seconds behind Everill and Longatano now. Fabio Lofarelli, three members of his family have raced in uh, this championship. Fabio used to race a VW Corrado with uh, a bike engine under the bonnets. The, uh, another of the hot rod style cars, a bit like uh, Ruben Taylor's. Uh, we've seen Melissa Lafarelli race this Mini as well, and uh, Tyrant Lafarelli is a former overall champion. That was back in 2017. He won the title in a Peugeot 106 GTI. All in this familiar green livery, the Lafarelli family. Keith White used to race a Corrado as well before switching to his famous BMW Z4. He's a double champion. Here comes Taylor. He's going for third, down into the hairpin, the black. Persia, very menacing looking little car that one is, and he goes through, up into third position. Now the result of this race sets the grid for race two. There are the leaders, Gareth John being lapped, and there's uh, yellow flags, I think we've got a safety car, indeed we have, the safety car board is out, so the field will slow down, Wayne Spiller waving the uh, cars around him to slow. So the safety car will pick up our race leader. Presumably that's because um, Craig Attard has got stuck in the grass at uh, Senna. It's a bit muddy on the grass. We've had rain in the week leading up to this event. We saw a couple of the trucks get uh, stuck in the grass yesterday. Michael Oliver and Craig Reed that had to be recovered. Although no safety cars and truck races, of course, it's a straight uh, red flag. Yes, yeah, Craig Attard's car stuck there, the rotary engine Mazda. That's good news for Wayne Spiller, because that's the only other car in Class 2, I think. No, I tell a lie, Andrew Williams in his clear is a Class 2 runner as well. Apologies there. That's one of his class rivals out. The Rocket Dog Racing Mazda RX-8. It's uh, stuck in the grass there. We'll need a tow, so the safety car coming out. We've got uh, just under four minutes of the race to go. So we might finish under the safety car. Hopefully we won't, and we'll get back to green flag racing. Hope the marshals can move that uh, Mazda. Yellow flag being waved, the SC board being held aloft. So two retirements so far. We lost Derry Davies at the start. There's the uh, rescue pickup, the Ford Ranger. Which will... Uh, Get the tow rope already attached, and uh, Craig Attard's car will be pulled to a position of safety. <laughs> the 
as Verity Banks on to win class one in her Fiesta. Three laps down on the leaders. Won't take long for the uh, rescue crew there to take the Mazda off track. Just driving onto the Rallycross course there. There is Wayne Spiller. He's two minutes and 15 seconds away from being champion for the first time in his Mazda. Intriguing car, the uh, Mazda RX-8. Not quite as big as it looks from a distance and only a 1300cc rotary engine. Rotary engines known for being quick but slightly fragile. Of course, the most famous rotary Mazda was the 787B that won the Le Mans 24 hours in 1991 with uh, Volker Wiedler, Bertrand Gascho and Johnny Herberts were the drivers on that occasion. 787B, well known as one of the most amazing sounding race cars of all time. Safety car will hopefully come in on this lap. We'll have a one lap sprint for the line. Safety car leads them round. The pace is picking up as they start, start to column up behind it. There's uh, Aaron Edmonds and Robert Rees. Yep, the lights are out atop the Ford Focus, so that will head into pit lane. And we are going to have a one lap sprint for the line. Damien Longatano has got two back markers ahead of him, which he can't pass before the start finish line. So that's going to hamper his chances of catching Chris Everill here. We're back underway for the final lap, so we will get a bit of green flag racing in. Watch for Longatano. Westfield's going to shoot down the inside of Gareth John in the Ginetta. And Wayne Spiller lets it. Whoa, look at that sideways from Damien Longatano. He flings it through the hairpin. He's determined to catch Chris Everill here. He almost drifted it through the hairpin there. Superb from Longatano, but I don't think he's quite going to catch Chris Everill. Up towards the crossing through the left-hander for the final time. Up to Senna. And it's just Brooklyn's Speedway Straight and Honda Curve. Longatano will have another couple of chances of a victory. Later on, he is not going to catch Chris Everill here. The clock has counted down to zero. And the man behind is ready to celebrate as well because he's going to finish in fifth place, albeit a lap down, and he's going to win class two, more importantly, win the championship. They're coming up towards the line, then Chris Everill is going to win the race ahead of Damien Longotano. They cross the line, but Wayne Spiller comes out of the final corner, and he is the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Champion for 2023. He wins class two in fifth overall. The rest of the cars come across the line. Wayne Spiller, congratulations to him in the Intel construction. Mazda RX-8, the man from Hemgood to the north of Cardiff. Congratulations, his first overall championship. Last couple of cars come across the line. Ruben Taylor completes the overall podium. And there is our champion. Congratulations to the Mazda pilots. I'm sure we'll hear from him down in Park Ferme fairly shortly and our race winner Chris Everill as well. Chris Everill, I remember um, a couple of years ago was looking at having a go in the pickup truck championship but wasn't able to because he was too tall to fit in one. Damien Longatano in second, Ruben Taylor, well done to him from the back of the grid in third place. We'll confirm the uh, results then. Everill able to get away, helped by those back markers on the restart, just under four seconds clear of Damien Longatano. They win classes five and four. Ruben Taylor almost 30 seconds back in third ahead of Fabio Laforelli. They're first and second in the invitation class. Most important result, Wayne Spiller, P5, wins class two and wins the overall championship. Gareth John next, head of Aaron Edmonds, Roger Dowden, Andrew Williams in the Clio, Robert Rees, despite that 10-second penalty for an out-of-position start, he wins Class 3 
ahead of Mike Cook in the BMW Mini. Then Alan Smith and Verity Banks complete the finishes. Verity wins class one. We lost Craig Attard and Derry Davis. Chris Everill got the fastest lap, 59.696. And we await the cars to pull up in Park Ferme. I can see you and Dunlop down there. Microphone up the ready. And we can head down shortly to here from Chris Everill and hopefully from Wayne Spiller as well. Sorry, caught us off guard there, Dave. Um, cars are just coming in behind us. I was just enjoying what I was looking at here. Now, it's very rare you'll see a race where you get these types of cars like racing against each other. It is an absolute joy, not just to watch you, but I can absolutely assure you to be down here as well. So next time we're in Pembrey, it's going to be next April or so, if you can get down, do, because you can walk around the paddock, you can walk around and touch these cars, speak to the drivers. It's an incredibly friendly place to be. Um, let's speak, though, to our race winner, um, Chris. Oh, no, you're going to jump in. I'm, I'm going to go into... No, no, you, you're very, very busy. I'm going to speak to... Um, Longtano over here, and look at this for a vehicle. Is that we're going to speak to you while you're sat in there? Is that all right? Yeah. We're, we're under time constraints. Yeah. Um, couldn't quite catch him. I know you wanted to. Yeah, I did want to, but uh, <laughs> it was getting to the point where the tyres felt a little bit loose. So, uh, with uh, another two races, I thought I'd play the safe game and <laughs> finish. Now, after the safety car, you did this bit of um, drifting around the corner. It looked brilliant. How did that feel? Uh, it was a bit sketchy, but uh, yeah, at least Wayne didn't catch me. I was a bit worried about that. I mean, it, it could have been a three-way race with Derry, unfortunately, missing out on, on lap number one. Um, is there anything that you can do to these vehicles before race two and three, or is it all about driving skill and tactics? I think it's just about driving skill and tactics for the moment. It's, um, two more races to go. Can't wait to see this vehicle out there again. Good luck. Cheers, Cheers thanks. Um, and let's speak to our race winner. Now, we let our on-course commentator go in first because he's actually on his own today, so he needs to be down here and upstairs. He's usually got a friend with him, so we did agree that he can jump in first because he's got places to be. We, of course, got Pointy coming up next for our British Truck Racing Champs. Um, I'd love to speak to Wayne Spiller at some point today, and we will also have a chat with Derry Davies, see what happened um, to his car. Um, Chris, congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, that looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. A lot of cylinder down, but it was still fun. <laughs> um, not often you race this early either. Um, he was trying very hard to catch you. Yeah, trying. I, could, I knew where I was quicker than him, and <laughs> I knew where he was slower, so I just kept an eye on the mirror exactly. and uh, didn't overdo it. Like, but uh, yeah, the car was going well. It, it looks like an absolute beast. Um, two more races today. It is a beautiful day here in Wales. Of, it's one of those races, because it's quite far away, we don't always get as many drivers coming down, but it's a beautiful place to be, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely here. I, I like coming here, but it is, it's a fair old track for yeah. us. Yeah, it's yeah. four hours minimum, yeah. um, and it was like five and a half hours on the way up. Yeah. So it's a fair old track. But uh, Worth it when you win the first race of the day? Yeah, I wasn't expecting to. <laughs> Mate, well done. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Um, not sure what happened to our third place finisher, but again, we'll find Derry, we'll find out what happened to his car, we'll speak to our overall class champion and overall champion, Wayne Spiller, too. Um, coming up next, it is our first race of the day in the British Truck Racing Championship. First of four today. We are being very, very spoilt, and uh, Pointy is going to speak to a few of the drivers. OK, thanks very much, uh, Ewan. Uh, the celebrations already starting, I think, for Wayne Spiller back in the paddock. He headed straight back in, probably for a celebratory breakfast, I would think, after such an early race today. Bacon butties all round, hopefully. So next up, then, it is the big rigs. First of four British Truck Racing Championship events here today. And our man on the ground down in the paddock caught up with a couple of the drivers earlier on. So without further ado, here's Pointy. So, good morning. Here we are with Dave Jenkins, and uh, we've had tons to uh, catch up with him uh, after yesterday's race in action. So, four races today, uh, lots to play for. Third in the points, third uh, on the grid to start the day off, and, uh, and, and as well, a third place trophy yesterday, which we had left over from Thruxton, essentially. Yeah, it was a you know a busy day yesterday with shakedown qualifying, and then two races yesterday, one from Thruxton, so that was quite good. It was a reverse grid race, so 
um, you know, we got P3 there, which is a good solid point. And then in the champion, the first of the weekend championship races, uh, unfortunately, I locked up into the hairpin, stalled the engine, and uh, went across for the start button, missed the start button in my panic. Oh. I daren't take my other hand off the steering wheel, daren't look away, and uh, anyhow, I managed to just hook second and bump it away again. So, uh, and that cost us a lump of time. And then um, we made some, we had some good race pace, uh, made some reasonable progress, caught Craig, and uh, we were just getting to deal with Michael, and then unfortunately he slid off. Yeah. So, and then the race got shortened as well. So. It was a little bit of a, a frantic afternoon. But, it sounds um, it, yeah. I mean, we had about two and a half minutes left on the clock when Michael eventually went off. I mean, th is is there like stuff on the track or something? Because we saw a lot of drivers going going off uh, yesterday in all sorts of different places. So, is there anything like on on the surface there? Or? It was quite slippy yesterday, and trucks were getting quite understeery um, as the day was going on, and then that was dragging mud back on the circuit, and then particularly where Michael slid off the the exit the turn before the mud was getting dragged across the circuit it was in the braking zone then so it was quite tricky yeah so even though relatively good track conditions it's amazing how much grip you lose when stuff starts getting spread across the tarmac yeah definitely just um yeah it, it's just it's a busy weekend you know there's a lot to fight for everybody's pushing really hard just making little cuts and just you know just pulling a bit of mud across the circuit that's all now i've asked a few of the guys uh, for races today is that going to be stressful for the team do they know what they're doing i mean i'm sure it's it's not the first time they've had a busy day yeah one of my boys has just said oh we need to stay out of trouble today i thought i hadn't thought of that what a great very obvious but yeah. thanks mate <laughs> yeah yeah no that's definitely the essence of today solid point scoring and stay out of trouble Fantastic. Well, Dave, very good job for your team. Good job yesterday. Hopefully we'll get some more silverware for you today. No problem. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Dave Jenkins, ladies and gentlemen. Good to hear from David Jenkins, currently fighting for second in the championship. He's currently third, four points behind Stuart Oliver, the 10 times champion. Ryan Smith leads Division 1, looking for his eighth consecutive title. It's an onboard shot from one of our Division 2 uh, title contenders as well, Adam Bint in his Volvo. He sits just 11 points clear of Paul Rivette at the top of Division 2. So the Division 1 trucks, the more powerful machine stars at the front. This grid set by the second quickest time for each driver in qualifying yesterday and it is Ryan Smith who has taken pole just ahead of Stuart Oliver. Two men with 17 British titles between them. Stuart Oliver won the uh, second race held yesterday. Ryan Smith won the first, which was a postponed race from Thruxton earlier this year. Second row, David Jenkins and Michael Oliver. This truck uh, fixed after an off at Brooklands yesterday. Row three, the Reed brothers, Simon ahead of Craig in their Evicos. And on row four, John Bowl, and number 14, struggling a bit yesterday alongside Stephen Powell. On the fifth row, Bradley Smith. He's been having some handling problems with his MAN. And Tom O'Rourke, who missed the second race yesterday after problems in race one, completes the top ten. Row six of the grid will be number 92, Simon Faulkner, with his Evico, alongside welcome returnee Jock Borthwick, coming back from injury this weekend. The Scotsman in his MAN, Ricky Collett and Neil Yates, complete the Division 1 field. Ricky Collett failed to set a time in qualifying after a bit of a moment yesterday, but he'll be out there from the back. Then we've got Division 2 further back. It's Paul Rivette who got the second uh, quickest time to set pole for this one ahead of Adam Bint. So they've swapped around from race one yesterday. Craig Evans and John Powell on row two. And Simon Cole and Jim Bennett complete the grid. So that's your lineup. We should have 20 trucks out there across the two divisions. Ryan Smith, with continued success, could possibly seal the title this weekend if things go his way. An eighth consecutive Division One title. If he can get more than 80 points clear at the end of the weekend, because that's how many is on offer at uh, Brands Hatch at the season finale in November. It's currently 53 points clear of Stuart Oliver by my own calculations after yesterday. David Jenkins four points further back, and then Bradley Smith in P4. In Division 2, meanwhile, Adam Bint sits 11 points clear of Paul Rivette. It was Rivette who won the second race yesterday. John Powell is 20 points further back in the number six. Craig Evans failed to finish the second race held yesterday, so that's dropped him away. He's 53 points down, so I suspect it's going to be between those three. Division 2, I don't think we're going to see it decided this weekend. That will go through to the finale at Sir Brands. 
This will be a 15-minute race, the uh, Martin Oliver Transport GT Tyres MAN in position as our pace truck. These trucks weigh around five tonnes. They produce almost 1,000 horsepower from their 12 and 13-litre turbo diesel engines. So we sit on board with John Bowler with his MAN, number 14, making the move up to Division 1 this season. Has had one win at uh, Thruxton in July. That meeting, of course, uh, was unfortunately abandoned after Neil Yates had a big accident and uh, due to barrier damage, the last race couldn't be held. So that was uh, postponed and held here yesterday, effectively as uh, an additional race run by Ryan Smith. Race one of this Pembrey meeting was won by Stuart Oliver. Adam Bint locked in battle with Paul Rivette and John Powell in Division 2. There's Neil Yates ahead of us, now up in Division 1 in an ex-Stephen Powell MAN. They were rolling away then. Start the rolling lap with Adam Bint. If you've not seen truck racing before, you have got a real treat coming up here on BARC TV. These trucks are limited electronically to 100 miles an hour. If you do exceed that 100 miles an hour, limit then you risk exclusion we saw that happen to Paul Rivetta earlier this season on one occasion and Hatchet's hairpin is certainly not going to be for the faint of heart first time around good to see Tom O'Rourke's back out there missed the second race yesterday so it looks like we've got our full compliments there's Simon Cole and Jim Bennett at the back gentleman Jim the oldest man on the grid in his uh, said Atkinson Oldest competitor in Division 1, I think, is uh, Ricky Collett there at the back, the uh, champion on two occasions back in the 1990s, a real veteran of truck racing. Second visit of the season to Pembrey for the championship. They came here back in May. Ryan Smith had a couple of wins on that occasion. Jock Borthwick took his first Division 1 win, and Michael Oliver had a win as well. Reed brothers in their Evicos, identical in almost every way except for the numbers. There's Jock Borthwick, good to have him back after those injuries he suffered uh, in a motorcycle crash earlier this year. Here we go then. Big rigs on track in South Wales. I'm looking forward to this. Keeping it steady around the far end of the circuit at Brooklands. You can see those tyre marks, that's where Michael Oliver went off yesterday. The tractors will have to be brought in if anybody does get bogged down in the grass. You can see it's pretty muddy on that outside line. 15 minutes of British truck racing to come then. Ryan Smith and Stuart Oliver, the two all-time greats on the front row. David Jenkins and Michael Oliver, son of Stewart, on row two. The pace truck is in pit lane. Ready for the first of four truck races here on the Pembrey circuit today. The penultimate weekend of the season for the 2023 British Truck Racing Championship. Paul Rivetta and Adam Bint lead Division 2. Waiting for the red lights to go out, the power to come on. Here we go, it's the charge of the truck brigade down towards Hatchet's hairpin for the first time. Can Stuart Oliver outpace Ryan Smith into the first corner? It doesn't look like he's being pushed there, Ryan Smith, almost by David Jenkins. What's going to happen as they go into the hairpin? Simon Reid moving up the inside in the 89. They just about make it round the hairpin so far. All Division 1 have got round. On board with Adam Bint chasing Neil Yates at the back of Division 1. Paul Rivette forces his way up the inside to take the lead of the class. Adam Bint being hung out to dry on the outside at Spitfires. Side by side between Simon Reid and Michael Oliver. Further forward, there's John Bowler, Stephen Powell. It looks like it is Ryan Smith who's got the lead. Indeed, it is. I think David Jenkins has got through into second place at the exit of the hairpin there ahead of Stuart Oliver. He has. Michael Oliver in fourth place, then the Reeds, then John Bowler, Powell, Bradley Smith, then Tom O'Rourke, Jock Borthwick, Simon Faulkner, Ricky Collins. Division 2 mixing it with Division 1. Further back, Neil Yates under fire from Paul Rivette, who leads the second division ahead of Adam Bint. Into Brooklands they go for the first time. A nice fast-paced start. Craig Evans runs a bit wide there in the number 10 behind John Powell. Neil Yates in the slightly more powerful Division 1 truck stays ahead of Adam Bint. We're with him. 
This is the last thing Adam Bint wants. He's got a slower Division 1 truck in between himself and his class rival, Paul Rivette. He wants to be on the tail of Rivette, challenging for the class lead. Talking of challenging for the lead, David Jenkins and Stuart Oliver weaving about down the pit straight, having a go at Ryan Smith. Ryan looking for his second win of the weekend. I think his 17th win of the season. There's been some contact there. Look, look at the back of David Jenkins' truck. One of the wheel arches is damaged. It's not slowing him down, though. He's still up there in second place. Jenkins was champion back in 2011. He wants a second title. It won't be this year, I don't think, unfortunately, for David. Flying Ryan starting to pull away already in the number one. The Daimler Freightliner leads the MAN, leads the Volvo. Fourth place is the... Uh, MAN of Michael Oliver. No, it's not. Michael Oliver's dropped back behind the Reeds. They've got through. Simon and Craig Reed, the two Evicos in fourth and fifth now. So four different makes in the top five places. Daimler Freightliner, MAN, Volvo, and Evico. Next in the order are a clutch of MANs. So we've got Michael Oliver, John Bowler, Stephen Powell. And we've got Bradley Smith, Tom O'Rourke, Neil Yates sideways, and that's caused chaos in Division 2. Adam Bintz on the grass. Can he get that going again? That's disaster for Adam Bintz. The championship contender goes off. That was because Neil Yates nearly spun it ahead of him in the 33. Adam Bintz will be uh, pretty angry as a result of that, and uh, channel his aggression into his driving try and fight back. Simon Cole there behind him in the number 41. John Powell under fire from Craig Evans, so that means Adam Bintz is down to P4 in Division 2. That's not what he wanted. Neil Yates dropping back the newcomer, the recovery company boss based in Kent. Loses out to John Powell and Craig Evans. Neil Yates, his first season of truck racing, had that big smash at uh, Thruxton. By the baptism of fire, that was for him. That was his first ever truck meeting. He's learning quickly, though, in the ex Stephen Powell MAN. Ryan Smith leads by just under a second. He has done the fastest lap of the race, 112.293. He wants John Powell under fire in Division 2, the Midland Caliper Centre. DAF, one of the oldest trucks on the grid. Craig Evans, MAN, the brown recycling truck in behind him. They run wide through Brooklyn. This is for second in Division 2. Craig Evans has yet to win a Division 2 race. He came very close at Brands Hatch early this season, ran wide on the last lap through Paddock Bend and uh, lost the lead. They may be limited to 100 miles now, but they certainly look as if they're going a lot quicker coming through Honda Curve there. Fastest lap of the race for David Jenkins, 112.051. Only a few thousands quicker than uh, Ryan Smith on that last lap. He's trying to close in. Closing in here is Bradley Smith on the back of Stephen Powell. This is the battle for eighth place. The results of this race sets the grid for race four of the weekend with the top eight in each division reverse. So if you finish eight, you start on pole in a couple of races' time. Jenkins has now slipped back into the clutches of Stuart Oliver. Had a win yesterday, the ten-time British champion, one-time European champion as well, Stuart. Reeds in fourth and fifth, and they've dropped away from this lead battle. Neil Yates under fire from Adam Bintz. Adam looking frustrated here after Neil uh, made a mistake in front of him, forced him onto the grass. Thought he was going to give him a tap there, just to let him know he was there. Try and get past this uh, slightly slower Division 1 runner and get up with his Division 2 rivals. Adam does not want to be stuck behind Neil Yates. All due respect, Neil is uh, learning his craft. It's only his uh, third truck race meeting. Raffi Smith still all over. Stephen Powell, he had a shunt at Donington early this year, young Bradley, the youngest man on the grid, 23 years of age, went into the tyre wall at the Crane Curves, and that's uh, damaged the front axle on Bradley's truck. They performed heroics to get him back out later in the weekend. But it's uh, not handling as well as it should, that MAN. It's a great shame for Bradley, because he's fourth in the championship. His father, Tony, was uh, a previous race winner in Division 2 in a Finnish-built Sisu. Remember him taking a couple of wins here at Pembrey a few years ago. Sisu was uh, successful in European truck racing, the likes of Yoke uh, Kallio and uh, the Finnish lady racer Mina Kropala. One of many ladies to have raced trucks over the years, had some success for Sisu. Harry Lestaraven as well. 
It's MAN's numerically dominant these days. MAN and Mercedes-Benz, the big makes in the European Championship. David Jenkins still holding second place from Stuart Oliver. Steam pouring off these trucks, incidentally, if you've uh, not seen these before, is uh, coming from the water-cooled brakes. See steam coming from the wheels. under eight and a half minutes of this race to go so we're coming up towards half distance now first of four races today for the British Truck Racing Championship now you can see that loose wheel arch on David Jenkins's truck now from Stafford in the Morris Lubricants and Digraph Transport MAN Stuart Oliver trying to have a look for second place and dropping back from Ryan Smith who's got the fastest lap of the race now 111.74 there is flying Ryan comes from near Nottingham Stuart Oliver from Northumberland, the greatest British truck racer of all. Certainly at British Championship level internationally, I think Steve Parrish and Richard Walker might contest that. Still Adam Bipp cannot get past Neil Yates to challenge his fellow Division 2 runs. Yates sideways again at Brooklands. This is the battle for second in Division 2. John Powell and uh, Craig Evans, but they've dropped about two and a half seconds behind Paul Rivette in his MAN. Rivette has been in dominant form recently, the black and white flag going out to uh, somebody there. That's the driving standards flag. Check the number, it's number three, Stephen Powell. So he's transgressed in some way, I suspect that's for exceeding track limits on one too many occasions. If he does it again, he might risk a time penalty. Still the battle for second in Division 2 rages on. Stephen Powell, just mentioned it, making a move on uh, Bradley Smith there. They've swapped places uh, a couple of times. This is the battle for eighth position. More importantly, pole in race four if you finish eighth. Michael Oliver still ahead of John Bowler, ahead of them. Further back, Tom O'Rourke from Southern Scotland, the boss of MV Commercial, one of the uh, partners of the championship. Adam Bint also getting the uh, driving standards flag. The number five comes up on the timing screen as well. It's Craig Evans up the inside. He's taken John Powell. That's for second in Division Two. Where is Adam Bint? Oh, there he is. He's dropped back from uh, Neil Yates, so maybe he's made a mistake somewhere, and that's why he's exceeded track limits. But for a second, we'd lost him then. I remember Adam taking uh, a win in that Volvo here at Pembrey when he held off the entire Division 2 field for the entire race. Brilliant piece of defensive driving. That was when that truck was in its CMG recovery livery, the old blue and white on the Volvo White Aerodyne. Great name for a truck, that is. Not as good as the uh, Volvo White Road Boss, which um, the likes of Slim Borgen used to race. Well, there goes Flying Ryan. See what his lead is through this time. He's done another fastest lap of the race, 111.39. 4.2 seconds up now. So technically, yesterday his uh, record of winning race one at every weekend was ended because the first race he won was the Thruxton race. Every year he's won races one and two of the weekend from the front of the grid, but he was beaten yesterday once effectively Pembrey race one by Stuart Oliver. Got that? Good. Stuart Oliver is rather stuck behind David Jenkins here for second place. He wants to come on by. Can't get the line away then from the MAN pilots. The Reeds still fourth and fifth ahead of Michael Oliver. And Bradley Smith, I can tell you, has now got past Stephen Powell. This is the battle further back. So there's Bradley Smith up ahead. He's got through on the MAN now. Uh, number three, Stephen Powell, lives virtually next door to Brands Hatch Circuit in Kent. Tom O'Rourke, all the way from Livingston in Scotland. Ricky Collett from Halifax in Yorkshire runs a heavy haulage company. Some of the biggest loads on Britain's roads you'll see being hauled by Collets, including uh, many of the UK's wind turbines they've helped to put up over the years.
getting a big wind turbine blades into what are often very inaccessible locations is a big logistical challenge. Interesting to see some of the jobs Collins have done over the years. Jock Borthwick behind them, great to have the Scotsman back. After those injuries he suffered earlier this year when he came off his motorbike on the Isle of Man while visiting, visiting the TT. Raising money for the My Name's Doddy campaign, Jock Borthwick this year, made of uh, motor neurone disease research. Just over three minutes of this race to go now. Ryan Smith, as we've seen so often before. Oh, problems for Neil Yates. He's had an off. That's coming out of the hairpin, I think. Yes, it is. So Adam Bintz has finally got ahead of him, at least. They are in different divisions. There's Adam Bint now with free reign to go after the fellow Division 2 runners. The uh, leaders lapping Jim Bennett in the uh, classic set of Atkinson. There is our Division 2 leader, Paul Rivets. He's well clear of Craig Evans now in to the tune of three seconds, the Napa MAN. Ryan Smith leading by over five seconds. Still, Stuart Oliver unable to get past David Jenkins for P2. Ten laps in the book now. A couple more to go. A lively opener today for the British Truck Racing Championship. Three more races to go later on. Next one is at 11.50 uh, before the lunch break. Tom O'Rourke has got ahead of Ricky Collett and Jock Borthwick. Good fight going on there. Collett goes wide. Borthwick goes through at the crossing. He's up into P11. Oh, penalty for David Jenkins. He's got a five-second penalty for exceeding track limits. So Jenkins is going to lose that second place to Stuart Oliver. So Oliver doesn't need to attack now. Two laps to go. Or thereabouts. I think Jenkins, let's have a look, is uh, far enough ahead of Simon Reid that he will only lose one spot in the result with that penalty. So a five-second penalty. Yes, uh, Simon Reid's eight seconds back on these two. Reid brothers have run nose to tail all race long once they got past Michael Oliver. Still in P6. Bradley Smith is now up into seventh. We may have lost John Bowler and Stephen Powell. They're dropping down the timing screen, so something's happened somewhere. No, John Bowler is there. Might be a transponder issue for him. Yeah, he's in P8, but Stephen Powell has not come through on that last lap, so what has happened to the number three? Has he stopped somewhere or has he gone off? There are the reeds, fourth and fifth. Ah, that's what confused the issue. Stephen Powell's got a penalty as well. Yeah, it was a transponder uh, problem there is the number three. He is still going, so apologies there. Being confused a bit by the timing screen. He's in uh, P9. And he was given a five-second penalty, which initially dropped him down the timing screen, so we'll see where he slots in with that. So Powell gets a penalty for track limits as well. All 20 trucks then are still running. Clock has counted down to zero, so it's going to be yet another victory for Ryan Smith. A little bit of steam there from the right-hand side of the truck, but it's not slowing him down. All the way once again for the Daimler Freightliner. And he's going to take the fastest lap as well, so to get the full 16 points on offer, 15 for the win, one point for the fastest lap. John Bowler sideways there in his MAN. He was sideways all the way through yesterday as well, chasing Bradley Smith. But here comes flying Ryan Smith, no relation to Bradley. It's going to be another win for the number one. He takes the flag. Here, wait for our second place man to come in. They're going to finish together, Jenkins and Oliver. It will be Oliver second because Jenkins has got that penalty. Simon Cole comes in a lap down. The Reeds will come in fourth and fifth. Simon ahead of his younger brother, Craig. And Division 2 is going to be won by Paul Rivetta. Frustrating race there for 
Adam Bintz and Paul Rivetti even playing with the Division 1 trunks. He's chasing Simon Faulkner there for P13 overall. See where that penalty puts uh, Stephen Powell. Jock Borthwick's lost uh, a bit of ground on that last lap. He's in P10 ahead of Collett and O'Rourke. They had a good scrap towards the end of the race as well. Eighth place goes to John Bowler, so he'll have a pole position for race four later on alongside Bradley Smith in the reverse grid. Paul Rivet wins Division 2 ahead of Craig Evans. And here's Adam Bint up behind John Powell. He could snatch third in class here on the run to the line. No, he's gone wide onto the grass. That just about sums Adam Bint's race up, unfortunately. So while we await uh, Pointy down in Park Fermi, We will uh, try and do the mathematics in a moment to work out the championship points. So Ryan Smith takes the win by six seconds in the end ahead of Stuart Oliver. Gets the fastest lap as well in Division 1. Second for Oliver ahead of Jenkins, who got that uh, five-second penalty. But he does retain third ahead of the Reeds. Then Michael Oliver, Bradley Smith, John Bowler in eighth ahead of Stephen Powell, also with a five-second penalty. Just ahead of Jock Borthwick, then Collett, O'Rourke and Faulkner. Paul Rivette wins Division 2 in 14th place, gets the fastest lap as well, so a maximum score for him. Ahead of Craig Evans, John Powell, Adam Bint only fourth in class. That's going to close the gap at the top of the championship. Neil Yates, Simon Cole and Jim Bennett completing the finishes. Well, Waits uh, pointy down in Park Fermi then to hear from some of our drivers. I'll just uh, do a bit of... Uh, Mathematics to try and work out the point standings. Let's head down to here from Pointy. Go for Pointy. We're down here now in the pit lane. What a fantastic start to a sunny Sunday here at South Wales. Uh, a relatively uneventful race with regards to damage, which is fantastic. We have got a very busy day today, but of course, it's gone quiet in the background, which means they're on their parade lap. They'll be back joining us very soon. We see now in the distance, of course, Ryan Smith taking the first place as if we expected anything else. And a sterling effort from Dave Jenkins and Stuart Oliver. A real battle for second and third throughout the entire race there from Division 1. And, of course, our friend Craig Evans, who we spoke to earlier on, just before the race, coming home with a second place trophy, which is brilliant news, isn't it? So, <clears throat> Stuart Oliver there, though, just pipping Dave Jenkins to that second position, I believe, a penalty uh, for Dave Jenkins. He's a five-second penalty for him as well for track limits. Uh, let's see if we can get the Division 2 for a, a big, you know, hoo-ha, well done, you've won. They're always at the back, though, aren't they, the Division 2s? Waiting for drivers to join us. Teams dismounting the drivers. Let's have a quick chat to Ryan Smith whilst we've got him. Oh no, we've been we've been overruled by circuit commentary. Unbelievable. Does he even know who I am? Can't believe it. Right. Here come the division two trucks now. We've got Stuart Oliver down here now. Excuse me, sir, here we go. He's getting out, he's on it. That's my good side. That is your good side. <laughs> we'll come and talk to you just quickly because that was a hell of a race between you and Dave Jenkins. We see TSL just switch you around uh, before you come across the line, but you were literally about six inches ahead of him as you crossed the checker flag. That's right, yeah, I was, I was giving a yahoo, come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, knew, I knew I was out of the top there, last corner at Honda. I knew I was faster than him, but he always came across to the pit wall. Well, you're not going to get anywhere going around the outside there, so uh, that was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good, clean. There wasn't a great lot of contact, I think, of any. So uh, yeah, no flags. Race. Couple no of flags. time penalties That's for right, a few yeah. of the drivers, right, but yeah, otherwise yeah. fine. I, thought, I saw Jim Bennett going agricultural over the back about three laps to go, and I thought, oh, don't hit the wall, Jim. But uh, <laughs> he got it back on anyway. So oh, thank uh, it was good. Yeah, it was good. I love it when a driver. Right after us. <laughs> That's right, yeah. That's oh, what, don't be all, don't be well, all. well done, buddy. Thank Very you. good. And just think, hopefully, we've got your champagne from yesterday, so you, right, can, yeah. you can spray it from second place today. Okay? All right, very brilliant. Good. Right, let's go and find uh, Craig Evans just quickly. Hi, hi, hi there. 
Get your, get your thing out of the way. There we go. Look at this. Craig Evans, we hoped for some silverware for you. We spoke to you this morning. What a result for you to start the day. What a result. Must have been a good luck omen speaking to you this morning. I mean, a lot of people have said it in the past, but I don't want to take any credit. <laughs> we'll make it a more regular occurrence on a Sunday morning, eh? Yeah, you come and find me and we'll make it happen. That'll do. <laughs> That's what it takes. So uh, where, where did you find that space? Obviously, you managed to uh, hold a good position. I just, I, I, I was good onto the, into the brakes in the old airpin and I got a good pull out. Uh, and it just all happened from there. Well, there we go. I mean, it's enough said, really, isn't it? Well, it's uh, got us in second place, so that's what we want. Well, it's great to see you on the podium. I look forward to handing you out some trophies. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, Craig. Right, let's uh, see if we can't find Paul Rivet. Oh, my goodness. Look at the state of this. Two for two now, ladies and gentlemen. John Ward, circuit commentator. Just get the microphone in there and just start just doing it. Just... Two out of two, one yesterday. <laughs> Sling your rock! <laughs> Unbelievable. Can you believe this? Like jumping the gun, getting in, he took Ryan Smith, then he takes you. Oh, I don't know. Wow. So, Paul, um, fresh from your uh, bike ride yesterday, which will be going out very shortly. I've Good seen day. the edit, and my gosh, it's incredible. <laughs> brilliant. It was great fun, wasn't it? It really it was, was brilliant. Fun. You know, what a laugh we had. Uh, and, uh, so, and, and a great start to the day, first place trophy, as we've expected anything else. Yeah, that's uh, it's a bit of a dream weekend so far, three wins, three fastest laps, but as I was just saying um, uh, to John, it's just going to get tougher from here on in, three reverse grid races now, but then that's one of the things I absolutely love about truck racing, because, you know, we've got to now make our way through the pack every time. So, you're here uh, to race, you're here to battle, and that's what you've got to do for the yeah, rest of the so day. Yeah, so we'll be starting last for every race now for the rest of the day with oh. the reverse grid. And to me, that is just fun and exciting, and uh, it just makes the racing great. So what the spectators are here to see as well. Yeah, it is indeed. And, you know, they get four races today. So oh, they're in for a treat, we're in for a treat, you know. And lots All more the Napa fans are in for a treat. All and the Napa fans, you've got to get the name in there. Look, yeah. just zoom in on that. There you go, John. Brilliant. <laughs> you know, Napa, attack assist. <laughs> and, of course, don't forget the charity that we rode for, you know. Uh, right, my name's my Doddy name's Foundation. Doddy. Um, so, uh, yeah, go and find them online. Feel free to donate. We've been doing our best to raise money, and that's going to continue into Brands Hatch as well. Fantastic. Right, if you want to get involved, you hear the website. Go search them on Facebook. Back to Dave to now. Time for some more racing action. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Cheers, Sorry. <laughs> Truck's being sent back to the uh, paddock then, as we can see. You leave John Ward alone, pointy. He's a commentary legend commentated on motorcycles for uh, many years as well. We turn our attention next to the pickup truck racing championship. They had their qualifying yesterday. Grid will bring you uh, fairly shortly is uh, from the first part of qualifying. Of course, in pickup truck qualifying, uh, the top six get flipped around. So six fastest will start from uh, pole position. Before we get the trucks out on track, you and Dunlop caught up with some of the drivers a little earlier on. Here we go, ahead of our first of three races in the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. Raiding champion and leading the current championship, Rhys Jones. Uh, Rhys, first of all, this year been a fantastic season for you so far. Uh, yeah, we had a, not the best of starts to the year. We had a few differential problems, but we managed to get around them and uh, just been consistent, really. Now, uh, in qualifying for the pickups, the top six is reversed. Now, you've actually managed to qualify sixth which puts you on pole position. You lose a few points, well not lose a few points, but to your competitors because they get points for qualifying. But so, I mean, in terms of that, is sixth the perfect place to finish in qualifying then? Uh, at the moment, strategically, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, look, it, it's good because you, lo you lose minimal points in qualifying, but you can gain massive points in the race. Yeah. So yeah, it, it does work out better. Now, is Pembrey a track where you can overtake in these things, or is it the advantage being in the front all the time? No, you can overtake here, but it's harder where we're not doing the hairpin, uh, the S's, sorry. The, that takes a bit of it away because it's very flowy through there then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it does make it a little bit harder. The only way you're sort of doing it is diving down into the hairpin. So Now, out in front, who are you looking for behind you most closely? Is it Dale or is it Matt? He had a great rain last time. Yeah, no, I'm not concerned about Matt really. Um, a lot of it's just Dale. Yeah. I mean, like I say, if you finish 
two or three places behind it's only 30 points so you yeah you, I'm more concentrating on where Dale is and that's it really now you're leading the championship is 110 points that sounds like a lot it is not at all in pickups is it no it's definitely not a lot it's 200 for a win and if you come near the back you're probably only getting sort of like 80 points so it's a big drop right, Reese, best of luck cheers mate cheers, thank buddy. you uh, right let's go and speak to second place in the championship Dale Gent and here we are then with our second place driver in the championship Dale Gent um, 110 points behind, that's not very much in pickup truck racing, fastest in qualifying, starting sixth. How do you summarise the weekend so far ahead of three races? Well, <laughs> it's going to plan so far. We, we, I knew we didn't have very good qualifying last round at Lyddon. We needed to make some points up, so it's like we've got to come out we, and get the points in qualifying to help out. So, so far that's, that's worked out all right for us. The race. It's going to be a tough race. It's going to be a tough day, I think. Uh, I um, just got to try and keep been doing what I've been doing all year, really. Um, the team of the trucks, spot on. Everyone has been helping us out, and my sponsors and that, with uh, MA Ponce and me, BP Mitchell and J26, with them guys, I wouldn't be, a, be here with it. But yeah, we just got to keep focused. <laughs> you were leading for quite a lot of the year, but Donington didn't go to plan, did it? Nah, Donington didn't go to plan. It was on the Saturday. We was feeling pretty good after a win, and I think it was second on the on the Saturday. So yeah, Sunday for the two races. Yeah, that was that was a dreadful day for us. We we didn't make the first race because Clutch Slave Senator going, and then the last race it was coming from eleventh. We, we was moving forward, and then our shaft snapped. So <laughs> that that lost the lead for us there. So now we're just sort of playing catch up with it second place fire in the belly though oh yeah we, we i ain't giving up yet there's still pl still plenty of points up for grabs yeah. and cut, well plenty of races still to go with it so yeah we just keep keep plugging away at it keep going right. we can't wait for this one best of luck thank you very much cheers, cheers. uh first of three races this is going to be brilliant don't go anywhere over to you dave yes thanks very much ewan the uh, truck's already on their rolling lap this will be uh, First of three races for them this weekend, and it is Reese Jones, the championship leader, who is on pole position for this uh, first race. He starts alongside number 21 of Dean Tompkins. Second row will be 89, Chris Brockhurst, and Paul Tompkins, number 12, father of Dean. Former BTCC race winner Matt Simpson will be on uh, the third row, along with 83, Dale Gents, who we just heard from. Fourth row, 65, Mark Willis, and 24 of Ryan Hadfield. On row five, number five, Dan Fisher, and 29, Tom Hutchins. Sixth row is 68, Eric Bolton, and 71, Simon Ward. Row seven, number 13, Richard Ayling, and 25, Russell Smith. And on row eight, 72, Alan Coper. And number four, Steve Thompson, his first pickup truck race for 18 years driving his uh, son Aaron's car. More on that later. Uh, one non-starter, James Goldstraw, number 52. I don't think he's there at the back. See so pickup trucks in position. This is going to be an absolute cracker around the Pembrey circuit. They're always very, very close indeed, these trucks. Championship leader, Rhys Jones, looking to retain his title this year. The bright pink truck got the qualifying time right. He was sixth in the times. He leads them up to the line. Keeping it steady, they don't uh, go racing the pickups until they're out of the hairpin. They keep grid formation until they make it around Hatchet's hairpin for safety reasons and to uh, do a bit of damage limitation. So a little extra on their rolling lap. Once they're out of the Hatchet's hairpin, the race will get underway in earnest. It's a 20 minute race. Revs are up and here we go, the pack is now unleashed as they go through Spitfire, still in two by two formation for the moment. Now the pace will start to quicken, it's Dean Tompkins who makes a good start as they come out of De Benny and he's got the lead. So a little extra on the rolling lap in pickups, just for something a little bit different. 24 running wide there and the 68 of Eric Bolton locked up. It's Dean Tompkins who leads from Jones, Paul Tompkins in third, yeah there's Eric Bolton, I thought he'd gone off. There's Dale Jets in the Dale Earnhardt lookalike number 83. Side by side with Paul Tompkins, and then tackle Jones is gone. Jones goes round and wallop collected heavily. Big shunt there by Mark Willis. And so look at Simon Ward, he's gone into the wall as well, backwards. Oh dear, that's going to be a stoppage, I think. Certainly a safety car. Look at the state of Mark Willis, is number 65. But the big casualty there was Reese Jones in the number 40. The championship leader looks to be out of the race. It was contact with Paul Tompkins, you can see smoke coming off his truck that's uh, the bumper fouling the tyre 
Well, big incident to open the weekend for the pickups. It's Dean Tompkins, son of Paul, who leads the way. There's Simon Ward. He's got going again. The Barwell Trailers truck uh, looks like only bodywork damage for him. You can see the space frame of the truck exposed there. These are not uh, conventional pickup trucks you might see a local builder using, certainly. As uh, Matt Simpson gets through there on the inside of Paul Tompkins into P3. Matt, a former British touring car race winner with his uh, Honda Civic at Hudson Park a few years ago. Many of these drivers are ex-short oval hot rod racers. The uh, red and yellow striped flag out there at Brooklands, that's a warning for debris on the, possibly on the track after that incident. So Dean Tompkins, number 21, leads the way. We mentioned that uh, a lot of these drivers ex-short oval racers. Dean does occasionally go back to the short tracks, particularly down to Arlington Stadium in Sussex. Dale Gent in second place. His championship rival has gone, but uh, Rhys Jones is still going, I can see there, further back towards the tail of the field. Dale Gent trying to go round the outside. Tell he's an ex-short oval racer, can't you? And uh, Dean Tompkins goes wide on the exit. Gent's going to go through, I think. Here comes Matt Simpson. This is unusually fierce for the first couple of laps of a pickup weekend. You've got three of these races to get through, guys. Here comes uh, Simpson on the inside. The Simpson race exhaust truck. Paul Tompkins having a go as well. Dean Tompkins has been shuffled back down the order. Dale Gent's taken the lead. Simpson up to second. There's Paul Tompkins fourth. And Chris Brockhurst, also an ex-hot rod racer. Started his career, if I remember rightly, at Ringwood in Hampshire in the DLRD truck. Dave Longhurst Race Developments. Dave Longhurst, an um, ex Hot Rod World Champion, now team boss. Sixth place is Alan Cooper. He's come through from the back of the grid in the number 72. He's going well. Ex Formula 2 stock car driver. But what a sort out in the uh, first three laps here. Cooper's got the fastest lap of the race, no great surprise there. He's ahead of Tom Hutchins in the 29, which is the ex-George Turicki title-winning truck, as Chris Brockhurst up the inside of the hairpin. Now, let's see what's happened early on in this race. Let's see what happened to Rhys Jones. They tried to go three wide by the look of it coming out of the hairpin. Jones cut across, a couple of trucks up on the curve. There's contact with Paul Tompkins, and then Zock. Mark Willis straight into the back of the uh, number 40 of Rhys Jones. See it again from the other angle. Tompkins and Jones together into Brooklands. Paul Tompkins, ah, he missed his braking point. Tried to go up the inside, and that's how he got up on the curb and into Jones, and then Wallop. Mark Willis with nowhere to go. Simon Ward taken out as well. Ward and Willis both in the pits have retired. It was Paul Tompkins who uh, missed his braking point there, trying to get up the inside into Brooklands, and he cannoned off the curb into Jones. Nearly took Matt Simpson out as well. I can tell you, Rhys Jones is still going because he's just done the fastest lap, 1 minute 3.512, so he has only sustained superficial damage there. He's at the back of the field playing catch up. Let's see how far he can come through. Dale Gent leads in the number 83. Tom Simpson. Dean Tompkins, Chris Brockhurst, Paul Tompkins going to the inside into the hairpin. Maybe not the best time to mention that Paul Tompkins is a former World Banger Racing Champion. Incidentally, the World Banger Racing Championship was held last night at Foxhall Stadium in Ipswich. A cracking finish to that race. Jack Tuffin taking the title there, so congratulations to him. There's Reese Jones in what's left of the number 40 truck. Still going strong though. And this is the fastest truck on track. He's made up one um, place so far. Sponsored by R&K Body Repairs. He's going to need them and, uh, well, nearly some body repairs needed there. As uh, Matt Simpson goes for the inside, bounced off the kerb again, nearly into the side of Dale Gents. Absolutely together, side by side towards Honda Kerb. Look at this. Up the inside comes Matt Simpson, takes the lead out of Honda Kerb. There's a lot of needle creeping into this race. Dean Tompkins behind them. What's going to happen down into the hairpin? Of course, these trucks used to race on the uh, now sadly closed one and a half mile oval at Rockingham. Where you'd see them, I was just about to say, you'd see them bump drafting each other, and there was nearly a bit of bump drafting there from Dale Gents into the hairpin. This is cracking stuff. Simpson leads, Gent second. This is that move from Matt Simpson up into Brooklands, up on the curb again. Excuse me, says to Dale Gents. How about no, says Chen back again, and they were side by side all the way. A couple of inches between the two of them until Simpson got the inside line for Honda. Here comes Brockhurst now. Dean Tompkins has gone wide at Brooklands. Brock Brockhurst up into P3. I can hardly keep up with this. Paul Tompkins is fifth, then it's Cooper from the back up into uh, 
P6, then Tom Hutchins. Tompkins tries to fight back, Brockhurst cuts him off. Behind this group in the red and yellow truck, there is Ryan Hatfield, the ex-Ginetta racer. And uh, Dean Tompkins goes grass tracking, that's going to drop him back. Plows through the mud. Has to slow up to save it so he doesn't spin. There's Hadfield trying to come through. He'll get through on the hairpin in the uh, ex-Hun family truck and he uh, probably goes straight on. That's the place handed to him on a plate and then goes uh, heading off down towards Bury Port. What's gone into these drivers today? This is madness. There is Cooper, the number 72 from the back of the field. Behind him, Tom Hutchins, the ex-Honda Civic racer. Used to be a contemporary of Reese Jones, if I remember rightly, in the Honda Civics. Behind this group, Dan Fisher, number five. Smoke from uh, Paul Tompkins as he locks up. Fisher is ninth. Eric Bolton, who went off on the first lap, is tenth. Then it's Steve Thompson, number four. Now, normally we see his son Aaron racing that uh, number four truck as number 41, but uh, Aaron kept busy this weekend because he's just become a father. So uh, many congratulations to Aaron Thompson. His son Lenny arrives safely on Tuesday. They're watching from home. Steve competing in the pickup truck from for the first time in 18 years. It's under 12 minutes of this race to go. We're not even halfway through this frantic thrash for the pickups. Reese Jones still pressing on. He's in 13th place. He's got ahead of Russell Smith, the number 25. Fastest lap of the race, though, is now with Chris Brockhurst, having one of his best runs so far up there in P3, looking for what I think could be his first win if he can get past Simpson and Gents. It's Reese Jones who leads the championship on 3,410 points because the series uses a NASCAR style points scoring system. Dale Gents on 3283. They're well clear of Paul Tompkins in third on 2916. Alan Cooper fourth in the points and Matt Simpson fifth. 83 miles an hour average speed around the Pembrey circuit. Can Brockhurst get through? In the Everyman's Garage, number 89 truck run by DLRD, Dave Longhurst. Race developments. Sign so written by 6 0 Graphics. That's Mark Paffy, the X2 litre hot rod and uh, national hot rod racer. Reese Jones, truck not handling too well, battered and bruised. Chasing down Richard Ayling, number 13, and uh, nearly a tangle there in the background. Paul Tompkins and Alan Cooper nearly got together. Those spectators down at Brooklyn's are getting all the action incidents in this one. Coming up to half distance in our first of three pickup truck races this weekend. As Richard Ayling loses out to uh, Reese Jones, the number 13. It's the uh, another R and K bodywork sponsored car. There's certainly going to be some bodywork repair needed after this one, I think. Things calming down a little now. Not for Paul Tompkins and Alan Cooper as they fight for fourth. Tom Hutchins behind them is now up to six. Dean Tompkins has dropped to seventh after going onto the grass down the pit straight. Ryan Hadfield in eighth place, newcomer this year in uh, the ex Ricky and Danny Hunt truck as, uh, goodness me, Alan Cooper. And what a save. Just lunged at Paul Tompkins there. What was that all about? I thought they were both going to go flying off, but somehow, amazingly, they saved that. Dean Tompkins gets uh, past Tom Hutchins, who had to lift off to avoid them. What's gone into these drivers? There's Hadfield in the background being challenged by Dan Fisher in the number five. I think Dan has got pole position for race two. Black and white flag has just gone out to Dan Fisher for uh, presumably for track limits as Dean Tompkins back up the inside retakes Alan Cooper who promptly goes back through again on the exit of the hairpin. Dean Tompkins out breaking himself a little there. Alan Cooper has had a wild ride so far up the field in this race. The leaders are 
lapping, uh, I think that's the 25 of Russell Smith in the ex-Paul Jones truck. See Cooper sliding about, he's definitely got some uh, handling issues. This is what happened at the crossing, he went for the inside on Paul Tompkins and just straight into the side of him. Now, that's the sign of someone who's uh, experienced with rear-wheel drive and uh, also he raced on shale for many years in Formula 2 stock cars, so he was able to save that slide. That's the save of the season so far from Alan Cooper. Here's the battle for the lead. Simpson, Gents and Brockhurst, they're closer now. Covered by uh, just over half a second, these three, and Gents is going for it. With Reese jones still down in 12th place, he can sense a chance to uh, close for the championship lead. It will go down to the finale, which will be at Brands Hatch in November. Supporting the British Truck Racing finale. Further back, Dan Fisher's got ahead of... Uh, Ryan Hadfield, I could see in the background there. Eric Bolton, 10th. Steve Thompson, a.k.a. Grandad, in 11th place. And then Reese Jones, Richard Ayling and Russell Smith round out the runners. Typically frantic pickup truck action here at Pembrey. Russell and uh, Dale Gents drop back a bit there from Simpson. Simpson, who began his career in junior mini stocks on the short ovals, the son of longtime national hot rod racer Jeff Simpson. He's raced in Legends cars, he's done national hot rods himself before moving to the circuits in the pickups. Then he went to BTCC before moving back down into the pickups over the last couple of years. His dad Jeff appeared in this series as well. And now Matt's uh, son Ben Simpson is uh, an up and coming kart racer as well. Maybe we'll see Ben in a pickup someday. Dale Gent, meanwhile. His father, Mark, raced uh, various short oval classes in the UK and in the Netherlands. He used to race in uh, Holland at the uh, 1000 meter oval at Barlow. Famous for Formula One stock cars, among other things. Plenty of uh, archive footage from Barlow on YouTube. Dale followed him into the likes of these Ford Sierra based lightning rods. The V6 engine super rods as well. Lee Gents used to race uh, Ford Capris in that division. Chris Brockhurst, the ex Ringwood Raceway hot rod driver. Paul Tompkins comes from the Bangor Racing background. Started off at the uh, Paces Hill dirt track in Berkshire. Won the world title a few years ago at Ipswich in a Granada. Before moving into hot rods and subsequently to the pickups with his son Dean. So most of these drivers with a short oval background, a couple that haven't are uh, Tom Hutchins and Dan Fisher. They've come from saloon car racing on the circuits, likewise Rhys Jones. Ryan Hadfield comes from a short oval family. His dad Rob raced at Buxton Raceway in the Peak District. Ryan raced Formula 2 stock cars before moving onto the circuits in a Ginetta sports car. There's Rhys Jones, he's catching Grandad Thompson in the number four. Steve Thompson started racing uh, back in the early days of Eurocar. Remember those? The uh, space frame Ford Mondeos on the circuits. They combined circuits and short ovals. And uh, Steve raced Legends cars, then raced Eurocar and pickups before moving into the Brick Car Trophy a couple of years ago with his son Aaron in a clear. They uh, took their class title there. Five second penalty board going out there, and that is to Dan Fisher, number five, for exceeding track limits. Well, there is Fisher. He's currently in eighth place because we have lost Eric Bolter. Unfortunately, he's pulled into the pits. There's Reese Jones closing down Thompson. Pass his lap still with Brockhurst in the number 89. Just over four minutes of this frantic race to go. Jones will go for the inside, surely, under braking for the hairpin. And he'll take Steve Thompson's first race in a pickup for 18 years. It's like he's never been away. Side by side in the background, Alan Cooper has another go at Paul Tompkins. Paul out drags him down Speedway straights. Not sure why it's called that, because I don't think Speedway has ever been held here at Pembroke. Main venue for Welsh Speedway, the town of Newport. There was a track at Carmarthen briefly as well. A couple more cars with uh, trucks rather with penalties, and one of them 
is the race leader. Matt Simpson has got a five second penalty. So has Tom Hutchins. Now, presumably, yes, they are for track limits. That's just been confirmed. So the leader has a penalty. Now, he's only one and a half seconds clear of third place, so it's going to drop him uh, behind these two, Dale Gents and uh, Chris Brockhurst. So Matt Simpson is going to lose his knees all over the place. Look, he slides there, coming out of Senna. Three minutes of the race to go. There's definitely uh, some handling problems here. Dean Tompkins has dropped out as well. Now, where's that? That's at the crossing, I think. Dale Gent's going to take the lead from Matt Simpson. He didn't need to pass the number 30, though, because the penalty would have dropped him behind him anyway, but uh, they don't know that yet. A rather wild ride for our pickup truck racers. Dale Gent takes the lead. This is all working in his favour for the championship, he's going to close that gap to Rhys Jones, who's still down in P9. Simpson back around the outside. Could he get him on the brakes here into the hairpin? He has. Great move by Matt Simpson. That shows his short oval uh, practice. You can always tell a national hot rod race, so they're uh, very good at overtaking on the outside. Reese Jones ahead of Russell Smith. He's a lap down in the 25. And it's rather crazy race for the pickup truck racing championship. They always are here at Pembroke. Two minutes to go. Normally we see the pickups run to a set number of laps. It's uh, timed races today, all at 20 minutes. Still Tomkin, Paul Tompkins and Alan Cooper going at it, Hammer and Tongs for fourth place. Tom Hutchins in P6 behind them in uh, the ex-George Turicki truck that won three titles. George now back on the short ovals. Here comes Dale Gents again. Can he take the lead back again? He doesn't need to because Simpson has that penalty, but you try telling that to a racing driver in the heat of battle. Through Spitfire. To the left at Dibeni towards the crossing. Now, is there a yellow flag out here? Because uh, that's where Dean Tompkins pulled up. No, there isn't. Still Simpson sliding around. Whether his tyres are going off, I'm not sure. Or maybe brakes. Gent is positioning himself here for an attack. I think we'll get one more lap out of this. He's closed right up on Simpson there. He's on his tail. There's back marker traffic ahead, and here comes Chris Brockers. He's going to try and take both of them. No, you don't, says Dale Gent. I'm fighting for the championship. Simpson leads. They're coming around to start the final lap this time. Can Matt Simpson hang on to take race one? There's the back marker ahead of them. It's uh, Richard Ayling. Over the line they go. 25 seconds to go. Simpson moves to cover. Chris Brockhurst goes for broke up the outside in the 18 I'll try and get the cut back on the exit, but Gents there to defend. Great fight between these three. With Matt Simpson's penalty, I think he'll drop to P3. Yes, uh, Tompkins is... Uh, just over five seconds back off the leader. So it looks like it is going to be a win for Dale Gents, unless uh, Chris Brockhurst can get through. Simpson sliding again into Brooklands. Gent trying to position himself. What can Chris, Chris Brockhurst do behind them in number 89? I don't think it's going to get close enough. It's going to be a win on the road for Matt Simpson. We'll wait to see where the penalty drops him to, though. Here they come up towards the chequered flag in a frantic first race for the pickup truck racing championship. The chequered flag goes out. Simpson crosses the line first, but it's a win for Dale Gents. Simpson penalised to third for exceeding track limits. Gent wins it. Brockhurst second. Two tenths of a second between them. Paul Tompkins ahead of Alan Cooper in their battle. Tom Hutchins has picked up a penalty as well that he dan fisher and uh, ryan hadfield are all sufficiently clear of reese jones so their penalties won't affect their positions hadfield got a penalty as well late on reese jones should come home in p9 yes there he is in his battered and bruised number 40 machine steve thompson on his return completes the top 10 he tells us it's a one-off we'll hold you to that steve P11 is Richard Ailing. 
And P12 will go to Russell Smith. They're the only finishers in our first pickup truck race of the day. Fastest lap went to Chris Brockhurst, a strong race from him. There's Richard Ayling coming in as the last man to cross the line because, of course, uh, Russell Smith a lap down. There's a fair few body panels need to be repaired here. What's well, been a rather frantic affair for our pickup truck championship runners. See Eric Bolton struck being pushed away there in Park Fermi. We'll wait for the uh, race victors to pull in. I can see uh, Ewan down there in Park Fermi. I can see John Ward down there as well, the circuit commentator. Next up on uh, track today we have the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship but here's the results of our pickup trucks Dale Gent inherits the win Matt Simpson penalised to P3 for exceeding track limits Chris Brockhurst takes second place Paul Tompkins comes out on top of his battle with Alan Cooper he clashed a few times during that race Tom Hutchins in P6 ahead of Dan Fisher Ryan Hadfield Rhys Jones recovering after his tangle on the first lap takes ninth ahead of Steve Thompson on his return then Richard Ayling and Russell Smith, the final finishers. We lost Dean Tompkins, Eric Bolson, and of course Simon Ward and Mark Willis after that first lap smash at Brooklands. Hopefully, we'll see all 16 trucks back out for race two, which is due off at five past one. And the trucks coming into Park Fermi, they'll be down there with Ewan Dunlop very shortly. Cheers, Dave. Well, pickups never ever fails to entertain, does it? Right until the very end, they will speak to all three of our drivers. Um, supposedly a non contact sport, not quite the case. We're going to try and grab um, Reese Jones finishing ninth, so everything to play for in the championship now. We're going to wait for uh, Matt to jump out the car. First across the line, five second penalty. He looked a bit confused coming to third spot, but you'll find out very, very shortly why. Um, his team just having a chat with him. And uh, look at these cars here. You need to actually pin, unpin the doors to get them out of the car. It is one of the most difficult cars to get in and out of. But um, once again, what a thrill. Uh, Matt, can we jump in for a chat while she's still in the car? Uh, first across the line, five second penalty, third position. Um, first of all, what a race. Yeah, it was good. Um, I didn't realise I had two warnings of track limits, if I'm honest. So all, the only thing I see was over the pit board, we had a five second penalty. Yeah. So, but I say we've had a bad year, so you know we're not in the championship fight. So it's, it is I what mean, it is. Last round, you were superb. Couple of wins out there at um, Leaden Hill. And I mean, not technically, but first across the line. So you're racing really, really well at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, the track's working really well now. We've solved our overheating issues earlier in the year. Um, and just going to try and win as many races as we can towards the end. Brilliant. Um, Non-contact sport, but you and Dale having a fantastic race at the front. Some brilliant overtakes. Yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Sort of elbows out and just sort of clean, fair, square racing. So, no, it's good. Mate, great racing, well done. Cheers, mate. Cheers, buddy. Um, let's speak to Chris over here as well. Second position, third across the line. Um, mate. You were trying really hard, weren't you? Oh, that was everything. <laughs> everything I had there, I gave it all. <laughs> Nothing left in the can. But, um, third across the line, podium, second position. Happy with that, of course. Yeah, over the moon. I mean, I've been happy with third, but um, I could hear the penalties go being given out on the uh, on the radio and that, and I saw the Matt's name her number come up with penalty, and I thought, okay, well, I don't need to do it on the track. If I just stay with on his bumper and there or thereabouts, I thought I, I could mean, get a, third, a second. That, that could have been any three of you. You look absolutely knackered. Just yeah. explain, what is it like sort of holding on to the steering wheel when it's, the racing is that close? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no through air because obviously you're running the screens and stuff. You've got the exhaust running in with you as well. So, yeah, it gets extremely hot inside the cab. And, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's hard work and it's hot. And, yeah. Got to go two more times as well. Yeah, we've got to do it <laughs> two more times now. Let's hope we can move further forward. Mike, well, I'm going to recover. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. And now our race winner. And this has blown the championship wide open. Uh, first of all, congrats. Thank you very much. Uh, a brilliant race between you and Matt. That, yeah, that was a tough race. It was a good race. Um, clean, 
little bit bumping, pushing, but that's racing. That's just how it, it, it used to be. It was a bit of a bit of touching in there, but respectful still. You you both pulled off fantastic overtakes. I, I just we looked at it as I was he was battling with us, and then it was like Matt, go. You're a little bit quicker. I keep the pressure there, wait for him. Hopefully, he make a little mistake. He made a couple, no, had a little go at it, and then I see the black and white flag. <laughs> so I was like. We won't push too hard. We just we we'll settle for it because yeah. see what happens at the end of it. I was quite happy with second. So. And now, did you see what happened to Reese Leon? I was right in front of me. So he um, he got tagged, and then he literally the back just come round across the front of me where he got tagged up the inside. And little fist bump in the car. No, no, I want to race him fair. I want to have a battle. I get on well with Reese and with friends off the track and that. But I want a proper race. I want to battle with him to the end. So um, He did cross the line ninth, so I mean, it's really closed up now. <laughs> it is closed up, so yes, yeah, so let's hope we can bring it to the end at Brands. We were, we were looking forward to this race. We're looking forward even more to race two now. Good yeah, luck. Two more races and see, see if we can keep it, luck, keep it up there. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, like we say, pickup trucks, it's always an absolute thrill. No disappointment here. Brilliant race right to the very, very wire. Two more races to come. We'll try and get an update on you. It was 110 points. It is not going to be that now. Now, on to our next race. It's the MG Owners Club Lancaster Insurance Racing. Now, there's more classes and overall championships to win here too. So don't take your eye off anywhere on the track with the race coming up. Uh, Dave will run you through the grid. Yes, thanks, Ewan. We can see the uh, cars in the assembly area about to head out onto the grid for the uh, Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. And yes, you're not seeing things. That is an MG Montego estate. If you missed uh, yesterday's race, it was a win for uh, Steve McDermott in his ZR, and he starts on pole position here. We'll look at the points in just a moment. Scott Bugner joins him on the front row. They've been dividing up the overall wins between them this season. Second row, 87, Andrew Priest. He was on the podium yesterday. The first of the MGFs, Mark Baker, alongside him. Two more MGFs, Stuart Plotnick. He won the class yesterday. Starts alongside Simon Kendrick. And then on row four, Alan Forster in his MG Montego estate. Yes, really, alongside Jimmy Work in his ZR. Row five, another pair of ZRs. Adrian Olsen, good to see he's back out. He dropped out of yesterday's race. Starts alongside Andy Robinson. On row six, we've got the maestro of Anthony Bates. Hopefully he's there because he retired from yesterday's race as well. He's running in Class B, starting alongside the Class A champion, looking to win the overall title today, Will Sharp in his MG Midgets. Row seven is young gun Riley Price, only 16 years of age in his ZR. That's a less powerful ZR160 in Class B, alongside number 14, David Amflitz, MGB. And then at the back of the field, Nigel Woolcott, number six, in the MG Midget, shared with John Diffie. So Nigel takes over the car for this race. And at the back, 1-2-1, Lewis Saunders. He's driving Jim Bainham's MGB. Now, Lewis is going to be one to watch here. He's an ex-junior saloon car champion and was out in that car yesterday. The reason he didn't qualify and had to do his laps behind the safety car is he was racing that car at Silverstone with the uh, Equipe Classic Racing uh, Club yesterday and had some good results there too. So nice eclectic grid of MGs. Let's find the points chart. We've had it updated after race one yesterday. Steve McDermott is on 139 overall and Will Sharp on 145. So there's six points between the two class champions for the overall title. Steve McDermott is looking for his fourth overall championship. And Will Sharp is looking to take the title from Class A. There's Lewis Saunders at the back in Jim Bainham's famous MGB. We believe that MGB has covered more racing miles than any other B in motorsports. I think we're missing Anthony Bates, unfortunately. The Maestro isn't there. The Montego is, though. Or the Montego, or the Monty ZR, as Alan Forster calls it. It's got uh, MGZR running gear. Very potent for a fourth place yesterday. Hey, if Volvo, Honda, and uh, Subaru can run estates in British touring cars, why not a Montego? There's number 17, that's Riley Price. Looking at the points in Class B. See if he can overhaul Anthony Bates. He can get a maximum of, I think, 12 points for the rest of the weekend. No, he can't quite overhaul the Maestro. So Anthony Bates is going to win the Class B title, even if he doesn't race today. Will Sharp's already sewn up the Class title in Class A. 
ahead of David Amflitz. In class Z, Scott Bugner basically needs to rely on Steve McDermott not finishing and uh, taking both wins and fastest lap. So McDermott's almost there. He'll seal the class A title if he wins this race. Class F is a bit closer. There's only 10 points between Stuart Plotneck and Mark Baker, and Simon Kendrick's only three points behind them. But then, of course, there's dropped scores to consider as well. And those who know how uh, poor my maths is will know uh, I'll struggle to work that out. So we'll let the championship uh, coordinators work out the uh, points and give you an update when we get it. There's Andrew Priest, number 87. First full season of racing this year. He's had a couple of podiums. He's up to third in the Class Z points now. Class Z for ZR, Class F for MGFs. Class A is for Abingdon, where the uh, older MGs were built, the MGBs and midgets. Class B, well, would have been for the Maestro and for the less powerful ZR for the uh, older MGs, but so there's only Riley Price out there. And there's an Invitation class as well. Alan Forster's in the Invitation class because that car not registered for points. So Steve McDermott in pole position, former motorcycle racer, looking to pick up uh, another title today. He's been overall champion three times in the last four years, 2019, 21 and 22. Looking for his seventh win of the season. Also won the Class Z champion in 20... He was also Class Z champion in 2018. So certainly the dominant force in uh, terms of overall wins. But he's uh, rather met his match this year with Scott Bugner, who starts alongside here. Those two will be fighting for the overall win here. Race two of the weekend for the MG Owners Club Championship, sponsored for by Lancaster Insurance. Away they go. Decent start by Bugner. A slow start there for one of the ZRs. That's Jimmy Work, who's uh, dropped away. A bit of smoke from the back of his car so he's at the back side by side on the run into the first corner the two MGFs moving in behind them it'll be McDermott who takes the lead Andy Robinson firing down the outside there in the yellow number 30 ZR just about got the car stopped now where is Will Sharp he's lost the lead of the class look David Amflitz moved ahead of him in the number 14 but it is McDermott who leads goes a bit wide through Debeni there under fire from his uh, arch rival this year Scott Bugner had wins in uh, Fiestas and Ford Focuses in the past. His dad, Sean's appeared in the championship with him this year as well. Stuart Plotnick up to third, the first of the MGFs. He needs a class win here. Trying to take the Class F title. Mark Baker in behind him. Dropped back after an off at Brooklands yesterday. Fought his way back up the order. There ahead of Andrew Priest. Then Simon Kendrick in the Tiger Stripes. Uh, number 42 MGF. The White Tiger in third place of Stuart Plotnick. First two pulling away, the two ZRs. They've divided up the overall wins pretty much between them this year. Andy Robinson got a flyer there. He's ahead of Adrian Olsen, the XMG Maestro racer. He drops out of yesterday's race of mechanical trouble, but he's repaired. Behind him, it is uh, Riley Price, the number 17, the teenager making his uh, senior racing debut at Silverstone in the last round of the championship. Mark Baker. Almost bump drafting Stuart Plotnick there, trying to take the lead of the MGF class. He's still in contention for the championship, as is Simon Kendrick. But the two ZRs are already pulling away at the front. We need to keep an eye on Class A as well. And Will Sharp is down to third in class because uh, it's led by David Amphlett and Will S and uh, Lewis Saunders rather has uh, come through into second place from the back of the grid in Jim Bainham's car. We're hoping to see Jim make a racing return next year. The MGB legend. Mark Baker up the inside, he's going to take Stuart Plotnick, takes the lead of Class F. That could have a bearing on the championship because Baker is uh, only just behind Stuart Plotnick in the points in Class F. Yeah, only 10 points down. That's going to close the gap there. Alan Forster's dropped back a bit in the Montego. There is uh, Jimmy Work, and here are the classics further back. Lewis Saunders has taken the lead of the class. David Amflip back to third. Will Sharp up into P2. And Nigel Walcott, who was champion in the MGF uh, in the uh, MG Owners Club Championship back in the 1990s at the back of the field in the car shared with John Diffie. Lewis Saunders, a very highly rated young racer. Began his career in short oval racing in the junior class at Standlake in Oxfordshire before moving to the circuits with a Saxo in the junior saloon car championship. Won the title there. He's raced uh, 
BMW Mini since then, before switching to historic racing this season. It's up at Silverstone yesterday in the Equipe Classic Racing event. A whole variety of classic machinery in action there. Andrew Priest putting Simon Kendrick under pressure. The MGFs proving that they can run with the ZRs. ZRs have the straight line speed advantage, but Simon Kendrick has taken P5 from Priest. And it's Robinson, Olsen, Forster. You'll notice that the Montego, well, a bit of grass tracking there from the Montego estate. you notice it's liveried to look like the uh, infamous Volvo BTCC estate from 1994. I wonder what Ricard Rydell would think of that. Behind the Montego, we've got Riley Price and Jimmy Work recovering from a very slow start. He ended up at the back of the field. Andrew Priest dodging about on the tail of Simon Kendrick. He's going for the outside into the hairpin. I don't think he'll get round there. No, he doesn't. Three MGFs, third, fourth and fifth overall. Could we see an MGF on the overall podium? Normally it's the ZRs that take the podium places overall. Great stuff. Good, close, clean, competitive and friendly racing, as always, from the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club. Also uh, backed by Toyo Tyres and Wayside Adhesives. Here's the Montego. Not the first Montego estate to appear in the championship. Back in the 90s, uh, Andy Campbell raced one and had a few wins with it as well, up against the Maestros. When it was uh, before the ZRs came along, we used to have full grids of MG Maestros, believe it or not. Sadly, Anthony Bates' example that's here this weekend broke down yesterday. Forster going through. He's past Adrian Olsen, the ex-Maestro uh, racer. Jimmy Work up behind them in the Triad Motorsport ZR. There's our classic class leader. That's Lewis Saunders. Will Sharp wants to catch him here to try and uh, keep his championship lead. Now, the points you get depends on the number of starters in your class. So with four cars out there, I'm just going to check the uh, regulation as to whether the uh, class gets full points, because they didn't yesterday. Yes, if there's three or less starters, you only get a smaller number of points. Five for a win, three for second, one for third in the class. But with uh, more than three, it's full points. So 12 for a win, 10 for second. So Will Sharp basically needs to try and move ahead of Lewis Saunders here. There's David Amflitz, number 14 in his MGB, second in the Class A points already confirmed this year because nearest rivals Chris Millard and Malcolm Hill are not here. Nor is Mark Rehorsky, the Canadian. Flitz running down towards the tail of the field. Nigel Woolcott behind him. Coppers champion back in 1994 with an MGB. Went on to race Ginettas successfully in the uh, G27 One Mate Championship. Pack starting to close up in the midfield. Here comes Adrian Olsen attacking Andy Robinson in the number 30. This is for fourth in class. He goes through. Jimmy Work in there as well. Here are our leaders, still together. One second in it between uh, McDermott and Bugner. Fastest lap recorded by the leader, 1 minute 9.802. And they're nearly seven seconds clear of Mark Baker in third place now. There's Baker's blue MGF, and he's pulled away from Stuart Plotnick, who's under fire from Andy Priest. So there's battles everywhere you look. Lewis Saunders. Look at this, having a go at one of the ZRs in his MGB. That's Riley Price in the ZR 160. Lewis Saunders in uh, the famous Jim Bainham car. Hopefully we'll see Jim make a racing return next year. He's won this championship more times certainly than I can remember. Saunders looking for the inside. Can he make a pass on young Riley Price? Former junior saloon car racer, former kart racer. He loses out to Saunders on the hairpin. Had to wait until he was 16 in July, Riley, to make his senior racing debut. And now Alan Forster has caught Simon Kendrick. <laughs> what a wonderful juxtaposition, the uh, 
little sports car, the MGF, being challenged by a Montego estate. Admittedly, it's not really a Montego underneath. It does have an MGZR running gear. Ahead of them, Stuart Plotnick under fire from Andy Priest. Down speedway straight they come. Adrian Olsen in the Dayglow yellow car in the background, just ahead of Jimmy Work, who's now come through on Andy Robinson, making up for his slow start. He certainly had to work his way through the field. Sorry, Jimmy did have to get that one in. Jimmy, a newcomer this year, you can see the novice cross on the back of his car. He's a cousin of uh, Steve McDermott, our race leader. He's followed uh, Steve from the world of bike racing. Let's look on the outside on Adrian Olsen. He's raced in this championship since 1990, in the days of the Maestros. Made a return in 2019, best results being a fourth place this year. at Brands Hatch. Andy Priest all over Stuart Plotnick for fourth overall. Plotnick won't mind if the ZR gets through, they are in different classes. He just wants to concentrate on trying to stay with Mark Baker. It's over six seconds between them. The lead gap has come down slightly. Scott Buckner's just done the fastest lap, 109.733. There is Nigel Woolcott in the 1500cc MG Midgets. Slightly larger capacity than Will Sharp. Sharp still second in class. Extra point for fastest lap available as well. This fight raging on for fourth place. Plotnick, Priest, Kendrick, and Forster behind them. Here are the leaders. Scott Buckner's got his headlights on to try and intimidate Steve McDermott. The Buckinghamshire driver. Scott Buckner comes from St Ives. Andy Priest has got through on Stuart Plotnick. Now I thought the uh, ZR may get through. Up into fourth place. Now, can this group catch Mark Baker? That's what Stuart Plotnick wants to do. Nearly seven seconds up the road. He's uh, nearly 12 seconds behind the two leaders. So Mark Baker on his own at the moment. There he is. You just see the uh, streak of blue in the background. Simon Kendrick tigering along in sixth position. Third in class. And look at Lewis Saunders in the background. Challenging Andy Robinson, a class Z car. There's Baker, leading Class F, trying to close the gap. Ten points behind in the championship. He usurped Simon Kendrick yesterday with the second in class for second place in the championship. Baker got pole and fastest lap, so he scored the same as Stuart Plotnick. Of course, there's only three MGFs out there, so they only get the smaller amount of points. Baker will be on for another five points here. Who's going to get the point for fastest lap? We'll have to wait and see. It is Baker that has it at the moment. Out of these two, Bugner has the fastest lap. Of course, the ZRs have uh, the right number of cars in the class for the full score. I won't try and interpret the hand signals there from the pit crew. Drivers know what they mean, that's the main thing. Three minutes of the race still to go for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Here's the battle in Class A. Well, Will Sharp is going to have to settle for second place because uh, Lewis Saunders is away up the road playing with the uh, more modern cars. Sharp in second, David Amflip behind him. Sharp's already wrapped up the Class A title. We've seen him in a ZR over the last couple of years, but now back in his beloved MG Midgets. He's raced Porsches as well. His brother Henry raced in Porsches with him. Here come the leaders. And here comes Alan Forster. 
He's raced all sorts of things over the years. He's raced Legends cars, he's raced Formula V single-seaters, he's done some short oval racing as well. He's appeared in a maestro in this championship before the Monty ZR appeared. Well, they say motorsport should be fun. Alan Forster certainly treats it as such. He's all over the back of Simon Kendrick in the MGF. Who's a completes another lap? Andy Priest ahead of them. He's in fourth place, then Plotnek, then this fight for six. They're starting to break apart now, except for this pair. So you go to the inside. I wonder how a Montego, an MG Montego would have fared had uh, MG decided to enter it in the British Touring Car Championship in the 80s. Of course, uh, we saw the Austin Rover group with the uh, Rover SD1 in the early 80s in BTCC. Andy Rouse won a title with them as Forster to the inside at the crossing. Is he going to go through? Up towards Senna, Kendrick will have the inside. And Forster just drives around him. Superb from Alan Forster. The best we've seen this uh, estate run. Into the last lap we go, though. McDermott still from Bugner. Now, this will seal the Class A, uh, Class Z, I should say, title for Steve McDermott. Keep him in contention for the overall title. Is he going to overhaul Will Sharp? There were only six points between the two of them coming into this race before dropped scores were applied. With Will Sharp second in his class, this is going to be very close indeed. McDermott will also try and get the fastest lap on this last lap for an extra point. Bugner has it at the moment. A bit of damage to Bugner's driver's door there, I notice. Bugner closing up. He's going to try and snatch the win, but I don't think he's going to get close enough. It's going to be two out of two for Steve McDermott here at Pembroke. Round Honda curve, they come in the sunshine for the final time. The chequered flag is at the ready. And Steve McDermott takes two out of two. Scott Buckner second, they're way ahead of the rest. It's going to be Mark Baker on the podium in third place, and he's going to win Class F. Now, that's going to put the cat among the pigeons for the Class F championship because he's going to pull back another couple of points on Stuart Plotnick. That's going to take that class down to the last race of the season. It'll be Andy Priest over the line in fourth, Plotnick in fifth. As we watch David Amflit. Alan Forster brings the Montego home in sixth. Adrian Olsen just holds off Jimmy Work and Lewis Saunders wins Class A. That's not what Will Sharp would have wanted, but he's going to get second in the class. There's Robinson and Price. And Will Sharp at the tail of the field along with David Amflit. Final finisher will be Nigel Wolcott. Let's have a look at the uh, results then. Win going to Steve McDermott by 0.8 of a second over Scott Budner, and they were over 20 seconds clear of Mark Baker, who wins Class F. Andrew Priest in fourth, it's Plotnick. Alan Forster wins the Invitation Class. And Simon Kendrick, Adrian Olsen, Jimmy Work. Lewis Saunders wins Class A. And Andy Robinson and Riley Price in their ZRs behind him. Will Sharp, David Amflit and Nigel Wolcott completing the 15 finishers, all 15 starters go the distance. Scott Bugner gets the fastest lap in Class Z. Fastest lap in Class A. Not surprisingly, goes to Lewis Saunders, so he gets a maximum score there. In class F, the fastest lap went to Mark Baker. So we'll let uh, the calculators go to work on that, and hopefully we'll find out uh, over the course of the day what needs to be done in our last race at quarter to three decide the destiny of the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship for 2023. Ewan Dunlop will be down in Park Fermi. I can see the uh, top two pulling in down there. And Ewan will be there to greet them in a second.
three here in the uh, women's circle. Stage two out of two. And that one perhaps not quite the end of yesterday afternoon because the clock may be a little bit longer. But, uh, from our MG Owners Championship. But in third place overall, that's a great result, first of all. And class win, Mark Baker, well done. I'll take that, thank yeah. you very much. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, I just got in the lead and just got my head down and got a nice gap. So that was that was good. Uh, it was, wasn't quite as exciting as yesterday's race, Yeah, but I'll take it. <laughs> Can't be all exciting. Now, third place, brilliant, class win. It looks like, I've not done the maths. I, I, you're the mathematician, not me, okay? It looks like that's enough for Stuart to take the title. Do you think that way as well? Um, if I'm honest, I've stayed away from doing the points okay. in my head. I've done it on the Excel spreadsheet, as you well know. So uh, I will do that next, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be tough, right, yeah. for, for him to not win. Because it, it was a 10 point. You guys were half points, were you? Yeah. A third race is going to be half points again, it looks like? Yes. Yeah, so I will have got, what, hopefully six out of that with faster yeah. slap. And Stuart came second, I think. Yeah, so yeah. that would have been three. Yeah. So, yeah, so he's still he's still pulling well, away. You, you kind of need to just uh, maybe, it's something with his tyres in the next hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give me a little <laughs> assist. <laughs> um, this is always a brilliant championship, isn't it? It, it is, right? And, and, you know, Pembrey, there's something about, I, I love this place. Uh, it's the scene of my first ever podium like many many years ago when I got third place he was overjoyed and it just I just like it and uh, it's the, a great championship. The sun always shines doesn't it? It does yeah and it's surprising for Wales because it does tend to rain here a bit a and bit. but we always bring it with us so right. it's great. Mate well done one more race to come. Thank you very Cheers, much. Mate. Thanks Mark. Uh, let's speak to our second place finisher Scott. Yeah. Scott he, he's a hard man to catch isn't he? It's too hard. <laughs> too hard. Um, no I've got to thank him though because last night he spent the time to the tracking, you know, did the tracking on the car, wow. and we were like five mil towing before that. It was all over the place. It's made a big difference. Um, but yeah, I just I got a good start, but I couldn't get the traction out the first corner, and he went. And I just, it was so hard to. I mean, to he doesn't pull away. It's just that annoying sort of twenty-yard gap the entire race, isn't it? Yeah, he doesn't make mistakes, and the problem is if you don't get him on the first lap, once his tyres warm up, he's very consistent. A couple of times I could see where I was quicker and I was catching, but it wasn't quite enough but third time lucky third race one more race come on good luck last one of the year let's go for it exactly uh, and let's speak to um our race winner class winner and it looks like class overall champion as well i, I don't know because um i think there was four starters for will so he probably got four points he um but he finished second oh did he yeah, yeah so i've probably nibbled a couple of points on him but um we'll go back now and have a little look and see uh get the abacus out yeah but um I think it's still hard for me to do the overall. Um, brilliant racing again. Well done. I mean, it looked like Scott said himself, it was almost like perfect. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, 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 was, it just played into my hands. But uh, Scott obviously struggled really badly yesterday. Come and asked me to set the car up last night. So I did it for him. Um, it was obviously a lot quicker. Uh, got fastest lap. So um, it worked. But it's got a push you, that extra inch you don't pull away from him but you just maintain this sort of like 20 25 yard gap and no mistakes yeah, that's it uh, that's the key being consistent and trying not to make any mistakes and there's a couple of bits where he's faster than me and i'm faster than him so i try and make hay on the faster bits and then i i i, I manage it on the slower bit so he catches up again but i'm playing safe it's a long game it's um, one more race to come. It all comes down to this. Good luck. Yeah, I Cheers, think he'll be a bit more eager for the last one. <laughs> Good luck, mate. Cheers. Cheers mate. Thank you. Um, and that is MG Owners Club. One more race to come for them. And one more race coming up next for our Welsh Sport and Glucon Championship. They've got two today, one in the championship, one sort of celebration race. We did speak to Derry and we spoke to our championship leader. Um, we'll throw to those now. Finish. Now, as we saw in race number one, Derry Davies in the Derry and didn't finish a bit of a misfire on lap number one. Now, we are on our way to speak to Wayne Spiller, who has won the overall championship, but I just got an update. They don't actually know what the problem is yet. They've got about an hour or so to fix it. So Derry and uh, his dad working on it very, very closely. We will keep you updated if we can, but we wanted to jump in on our way past, give you that little update. But uh, fingers crossed, it would be great to see Derry in race number two. They are working very hard right now. 
and I am delighted to say we are with our Welsh Sportman's Lucar Championships overall winner, Wayne Spiller. We spoke yesterday. Um, looked quite easy in the end. Yeah, it's a breeze, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't quite woken up yet. Um, yeah, nine o'clock start was a bit of a push, but <laughs> yes, really, really slippery conditions. Yeah. Horrible, yeah, but yeah. A little, little, little bit of damp out there from the morning dew. Um, so you've won in this car here, the 96. Yeah. You're done with this car now. We're now gonna have a little bit of fun in the Seat. Indeed we are, yeah. I think this is being rented out to number 88, Andrew. He's just blown his engine, so. Did I hear you say 20 quid? 20 quid, 10 <laughs> Benson and Hedges, yeah. I'll give you 30 quid for it, but I'll take it out. Um, this is a beautiful, we said beautiful looking car, but a different class to that one. Yeah. So is this going to be like drifting around all the corners? What are you going to play with him? Uh, possibly, yeah. <laughs> we'll be pulling around. It's a turbo diesel injection, 1.9, so yeah, it should go okay, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a celebration victory race, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. Without beer. Mate, well done and Thank good luck in race two. Yeah, cheers. cheers thanks, really, thanks a lot. Thanks. Uh, championship winner overall, done and dusted. A couple of class results to come through. So race number two, well Sporting Saloons. Um, Dave, over to you. Look out for this car, having a little bit of fun. Okay, so thanks uh, for the updates, Ewan. We'll hopefully see Derry Davies on the grid if he's cured that misfire on the Millington engine in the Darien. And as we say, a little bit of a change at the back. Andrew Williams taking over at the wheel of the RX-8 that's just won the championship. And uh, Wayne Spiller moving into his Cupra TCR. So let's have a look at the grid then for this one. It's based on the results of race one. So Chris Everill and Damien Longatano will take the front row of the grid. Ruben Taylor starts at the back for race one because he missed qualifying yesterday because he was up at Castle Coombe. He's on row two alongside Fabio Lafarelli. Gareth John on row three alongside Aaron Edmonds. Then Roger Dowden up there on row four alongside Robert Rees in the BMW Mini. Mike Cook and Alan Smith completing the top town. Alan Smith in the NMR Kawasaki. Then on row six, we've got Verity Banks in her Ford Fiesta. We'll start alongside Craig Attard. Hopefully he's there, spun out of race one and had to be towed away while the safety car was out. Row seven of the grid hopefully Derry Davies. Uh, we won't see John Morris in his Tira. He blew his engine in qualifying yesterday. Wayne Spiller will start at the back in the Leon Cupra TCR and Andrew Williams, not in his Clio, will switch into the Mazda RX-8 owned by Wayne Spiller, as you just heard. Just a few pounds exchanged hands and the loan of the car was secured. The Clio suffering engine failure at the end of race one. They're about to come out of the assembly area, so we will see if Wales's fastest butcher, Derry Davies, has made it back out in his uh, green Darien. We know John Morris won't be there. And the change of car at the back. I'm interested to see how that Cupra TCR goes here. We know how quick TCR touring cars can be. We see them regularly in the British Endurance Championship. And in various other saloon events as well. Lots of uh, TCR cars now in various forms of UK motorsports. Out they come. There's uh, Aaron Edmonds in his invitation class Mazda. Robert Rees in the BMW Mini. Pace car leading up to the grid. It will, of course, be a rolling start. Interesting to see if Ruben Taylor can keep up with the two leaders this time. We saw him rip through the field from the back of the grid in race one. And if Derry Davies is out there, which we haven't seen as yet, whether he can uh, come through. Fabio Forelli's little mini. Now, Gareth John, I think, has lined up in the wrong place. He should be in P5. Yeah, he should be on the inside of row three, the Ginetta. Yeah, the marshal just telling him there, you should be on the other side of row three, Gareth. So a little bit of uh, manoeuvring needed here. How good's the steering lock on your, on your Ginetta G40? Roger Dowden behind him in the Davrian, alongside uh, Robert Rees in the Mini. 
And um, where's the rest of them? We've got the first four rows. Where's the rest of the grid? That's only half it. Oh, what's happened here? Alan Smith, I can only assume, was warming his tyres up, and he's spun coming out of the assembly area on cold tyres. What a mistake at a maker. Uh, Derry Davies is not there. So the Darian uh, still suffering problems, unfortunately. That's a great shame. Craig Attard's there, though, in his Mazda. That's, dis that's a disappointment because it would have been interesting to see Derry fight his way through after he qualified fastest yesterday. We will see how well Wayne Spiller comes through in his new acquisition, the Cupra TCR. Chris Everill in pole position then in the Ginetta G55, the GT4 car with its uh, rumbling V8 engine. I think that may have a Chevrolet engine, if I remember rightly. Taking on uh, the lightweight Westfield of Damien Longotano. Can Ruben Taylor prove interloper here in his Peugeot-based hot rod? Waiting for um, marshals to complete uh, at the back of the grid there. Not sure what's going on. We've got a couple of officials down there checking out something possibly on the Cupra. Maybe the scrutineer just checking something. Now, I'm not sure what class the Cupra is going to be running in. Because it wasn't on the original entry list with the Wayne Spiller changing car. Oh, hang on. It looks like Wayne Spiller's being ordered off the grid. What's going on? Hopefully Ewan's down there and can find out. But it looked like the official's not happy with something there at the back of the grid. Wayne Spiller's been uh, sent into the pit lane. Area. Maybe the scrutineer's not happy with something. Yeah. Is he going back to the paddock? Yeah. Yes, it looks like he is. Yeah. Or is he? Yeah. Hmm. What's uh, happening here then? The official's calling for somebody as the uh, rolling lap gets underway. Or does it? Yes, the green flag waves. Well, hopefully we'll be able to see Wayne Spiller join in from the pit lane, but I'm not sure why he was uh, ordered off the grid there by the officials, by the look of it. Whether some uh, paperwork hasn't been completed or what, we do not know. The rest of the cars will get this 15-minute race underway for the Welsh Racing Drivers Association Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. Andrew Williams now in the uh, red Mazda at the back, replacing his Clio. It looks like this is going to be a straight fight then between Everill and Longatano once again for the race win overall. The class battles to be had back in the field as well. The rumble of the Ginetta, the scream of the Westfield and that bike engine Mini. 
Ah, Wayne Spiller is going to start from the pit lane. That's good news. Let's see him uh, chase the field down then. It is Cupra TCR. Weaving to warm their tyres for this rolling start. Alan Smith's already been caught out by cold tyres coming out of the assembly area. Ruben Taylor, the man from Devon, on the second row of the grid. Can the Peugeot keep pace with the two front row? Here we go. Second of three races this weekend for the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. The red Ginetta, the blue and yellow Westfield lead them off. Pace car is in pit lane, waiting for the red lights to go out. And here we go. Down towards the hairpin they go. Longatano's got the drop from the outside of the front row. He takes the lead in the Westfield into the hairpin for the first time. Everall goes with him. They're already clear of the rest of the field. Ruben Taylor in third ahead of Lafarelli and Gareth John. Robert Rees got away well in the BMW Mini. They're all round. Hatchet's hairpin okay for the first time. Verity Banks up there with the Mazdas. It's Everill who has taken the lead. The grunt of the Ginetta taking him into the lead and through into second has got Ruben Taylor as well in the Peugeot. He said he'd be one to watch here. Wayne Spiller has joined him from the pit lane in the TCR car. Watch for him catching the field. You can hear the rumble of that uh, Ginetta G55 as they come through from Senna towards Brooklands. And Lombatano's dropped behind uh, Fabio Lufarelli as well. He'll get him back on speedway straight. So maybe just getting some heat into the tyres of the Westfield. He said his tyres were going off a bit towards the end of uh, race one. Charges back ahead of Lafaretti there, coming down speedway straight now, going after Ruben Taylor for second place. Gareth John is fifth. Those five already starting to break away from the uh, rest of the field. Sixth position is Robert Rees in the BMW Mini. Next through Roger Dowd, and he's running well in the Davry, and then Alan Smith, Mike Cook. Two Mazdas are next. That's uh, Edmonds ahead of Attard. Andrew Williams in uh, Wayne Spiller's Mazda is next. And Verity Banks, Wayne Spiller at the back at the moment in the Cupra. Through on the inside goes the 56 of Attar, the Rocket Dog racing car, ahead of Aaron Edmonds. That's an Invitation Class car, of course, not registered for the full championship. Invitation Class being led by Ruben Taylor in second place. Longatano needs Class 4, he's going for Ruben Taylor through into second place coming out of Brooklyn's now down to the business of trying to catch Chris Everill in the Ginetto G55 termed as a supercar in this championship certainly putting in a super performance so far he leads as they cross the line looking for his second win lead gap is already three and a half seconds for Chris Everill over Lombatano and Taylor Taylor three and a half in turn clear of Lafarelli around the outside Mike Cook in the BMW attacking Aaron Edmonds in the Mazda. Rotary engine car holds the place. That's for ninth position. Tenth position, I should say, as uh, Craig Attard's got ahead of them there in the 56. Andrew Williams next in the order, having swapped Clio for RX-8. But Wayne Spiller's made it one place. He's got a Ver Verity Banks in the Fiesta. Rees battling with Gareth John in the Ginetta. This is for fifth position. Gareth John has a look up the inside. Close there as they come out of Brooklyn's very close indeed. Robert Rees in the turbocharged Mini R56 holds him off. Through Speedway straight towards Honda. First four have broken away. Longatano's done the fastest lap, 1 minute 0.109. This is the main fight at the moment. They cross the line together. Gareth Rees' uh, last lap was slightly slower than Bradley John. 108.7, 108.5. A 
very evenly matched these two cars the low slung little sports car and the BMW mini hatchback swing their way onto the crossing once again it's uh, Everill still leads from Longatano and the gap is 2.3 seconds to Westfield now into its stride it takes a couple of laps to get the tyres up to temperature as we've seen Taylor still third, leads the invitation class ahead of Lufferelli. They're separated by just under four seconds. Then we've got these two, Rees and John. Roger Dowden is seventh. Then uh, the 56 of, I keep going to say Marco Attard, the ex-British uh, GT racer. He's competing Ferraris. Craig Attard is in eighth place in the Mazda, leads class two. Then Edmonds ninth, Cook tenth, Smith eleventh. Williams in twelfth in the... Wayne Spiller Mazda. Spiller is 13th as he just gets acclimatised to his new car and Verity Banks rounds out the field. There's our leader, Chris Everill. It's just the rumble of that V8 in the Jetta. I think that's a Chevrolet Corvette engine he's got in there. And in fact, the two leaders have both done the fastest lap of the race. Their last laps are identical, 59.848. 88.84 miles an hour. They were exactly the same. Let's see what happens this time around. That's Everill's fastest lap of the weekend so far. As Gareth John makes the move on the mini of Robert Rees, goes through, up into fifth position. Rees leading class three. Gareth John second in class four. Damien Longatano leads his class in the Westfield. That's Verity Banks. She's already been lapped. Being caught by Lufferelli in fourth place. Verity Banks has competed in the Castle Coombe Saloon Car Series as well, the Wiltshire circuit going its own way with the, its championships for many years. Here's a battle between Roger Dowd and the little Davrian, Aaron Edmonds Mazda, and behind them Wayne Spiller, who's now getting into his stride in the Cupra. There he is, he's got ahead of Mike Cook and Alan Smith. So two places gained on that last lap, here comes the new champion. Edmonds pulls out to take Roger Dowden. Little Davrian uh, used to be seen regularly in the Mod Sports series in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> it's virtually a single seater with a, a sports car body over the top, isn't it? That little thing. Must be a bit intimidating racing with these big saloons and GT cars around you. But Roger takes it all in his stride. The man from Clanetley, not far from Pembury. Edmonds, Dowden, there's Spiller behind them. Got ahead of Mike Cook. Well, there's Alan Smith, and they're being lapped by the race leader, Chris Everill. Through the Ginetta Thunders, and now Longatano is right with him. He's been delayed slightly there by the back markers. And now Longatano can sense a chance to uh, make his move. Spiller's got past Dowden. Is that one of the Mazdas going slowly there, possibly in the background behind Mike Cook? He's lost out to Alan Smith's uh, little sports car. Yes, there's uh, Andrew Williams as well. A little slower than he was earlier, that car, anyway, because Andrew Williams is getting used to the car. The gap is down to half a second as they lap Spiller and Edmonds. Spiller will go through on the hairpin, takes Edmonds. That's for eighth position. Next target for the leader is Craig Attard's Mazda. Tano laps the rocket dog car. Now, can he get onto level terms? He's done the fastest lap of the race, Longatano, last time around. 59.829 for the Westfield. As they thunder their way towards Honda Curve. Getting closer all the time. Still what the gap is this time through. It's uh, just under a second that time through, so uh, Everill's pulled away a little bit. Verity Banks moves out of the way as the Janetta dives through at the hairpin. Followed by the Westfield. Ruben Taylor still third. See how far behind he is when he crosses the line. Nearly 18 seconds down on these two, so not able to keep pace with the leaders. The Ferelli is fourth. He's about 10 seconds down on Ruben Taylor. 
It's John Rees. Spiller up to seventh. He's got ahead of Attard and Edmonds now. Then Dowden, Smith, Cook, Williams and Banks. There's Dowden and Smith, 10th and 11th. Alan Smith's new NMR Kawasaki. Could be a challenger for a class honours if uh, he contests the full season next year. Of course, we have seen sports racers in action on a regular basis. Several radicals have raced in this series over the years. Terry Brown, several years ago, took one to the championship. Two Mazdas together. Aaron Edmonds on the outside of Craig Attard. Rotary engine beasts corner together through the hairpin. This is the fight for eighth place. They're in different classes. Attard leading class two. Edmonds third in the invitation division. These two in the midfield. The two leaders are 22 seconds clear now. Everill laps the battling John and Rees. It's the lead gap as they came to that time. Looks like Everill's pulled away a little bit. Yes, he has. Nearly 1.4 seconds now. Seems to be having the better time of dealing with the backmarker traffic at the moment. You can see there, as Longatano couldn't quite get past both of them in one move, he had to wait to pass Gareth John, the 2021 champion. Last year's champion was Colin Dunn in his Renault Clio, not out this weekend. Fabiola Ferrelli laps the BMW of Mike Cook, his E46 330 Club Sport. Race BMW is this championship for many years. Mike used to have an E36 M3. The Mini, the uh, Space Frame Mini. It's one litre bike engine. Oh, and off goes the 18. Aaron Edmonds walloped straight into the tyre wall. What happened there? That's going to be a safety car at the very least. That was a big impact for the uh, Mazda. Let's hope he's OK. What on earth happened there for Aaron Edmonds? I don't know whether he just got a wheel onto the grass or... In fact, the red flag is coming out. We're only three minutes of the race to go, so I suspect that will be uh, a result declared. We'll try and see again what's uh, happened there. Big impact for Aaron Edmonds. I think that was coming out of Brooklands. Let's hope Aaron's all right, the uh, man from Cumbran. Yes, so the field being brought to a halt. So there were three minutes, 14 seconds left on the clock. I would imagine that will be a result declared in our second race of the weekend for the Welsh Racing Drivers Association, Welsh Sports and Saloon Cars. Seemed to go off uh, very suddenly there. Took me uh, by surprise a little there. Checkered flag showing on the timing screen. So if that's end of race, then it will be a win for Chris Everill ahead of Damian Longatano and Ruben Taylor. Just awaiting uh, confirmation of that. Yes, checkered flag showing on the timing screen. So. Uh, that will be almost certainly result declared. Cars heading back into the pit lane. So, yes, that's race over. It will be a win for Chris Everill ahead of Damien Longatano. Result declared at the end of lap 10. Ruben Taylor in third place. Fabio Lafarelli in fourth. Gareth John rounds out the top five in the Ginetta. We'll confirm all that in uh, a second. Yes, here's the uh, provisional results. Everill wins and takes class five ahead of Longatano. 1.38 seconds, the gap at the end of lap 10. Longatano wins class four. Confirmation the race will not be restarted. 
has just come through. Ruben Taylor wins the Invitation Class in third. It's Lufferelli, John, Robert Rees wins Class 3 in sixth position. Craig Attard in P8 wins Class 2. Wayne Spiller making it up to seventh from the back. Alan Smith and Roger Dowd in complete the top ten. The other finishers, Cook, Williams and Verity Banks. We lost uh, Aaron Edmonds. And we hope he's all right. Big impact with the tyre wall there. That's uh, finished off the Mazda RX-8. Fastest lap of the race went to Damien Longatano. 59.829 seconds. Well, one race to go before our lunch break here at Pembrey. It'll be the uh, fourth race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. But obviously a bit of clear-up needed, first of all, here with that incident for Aaron Edmonds. We'll uh, hope he's OK. Bring you uh, news on Aaron as soon as we can. Just had um, a mention in our YouTube stream comments. Uh, the reason that uh, the Cupra had to start from the pit lane there, he hadn't uh, been noise tested that car. So uh, the scrutineer wanted to uh, check the noise level was satisfactory. That's why he was pulled back into pit lane. Thanks to Nick for uh, updating us there. We're told that Aaron Edmonds is OK, which is good news. After his impact with the tyre wall, it was coming out of Brooklands towards uh, Speedway Straight. He uh, just got offline, slid off onto the grass, no grip there, and into the tyre wall. There we see the recovery vehicle, and there we see Aaron Edmonds' car. The driver is out and appears to be OK, which is great to see. But uh, the Mazda, very second hand. Let's see it again. He was battling with Craig Attard, coming up towards Brooklands. He just suddenly seemed to lose it on the uh, exit. Attard went up the inside. Was there contact between the two of them? I don't think there was. Yeah, he just loses the back end. Car slides onto the grass. No grip there. Wallop straight into the wall. That tyre wall's going to need a bit of rebuilding as well. See it again. Yep, no contact. Just lost the back end. No grip on the grass. And in he goes. End of game for Aaron Edmonds. Thankfully, Aaron appears to be OK. And once the uh, clear-up has been complete and the tyre wall has been repaired, we'll be back underway with the British Truck Racing Championship. Race number four of the weekend. But while we wait for the trucks to head out onto track, while we have this little break, uh, we mentioned uh, that uh, yesterday after racing was concluded, we had some two-wheeled action on the Pembrey circuit. Uh, a cycle ride to raise money for the My Name's Doddy campaign for motor neurone disease. We mentioned earlier, we know that uh, Holly Brownsell, our uh, young truck racing fan, has been cycling pretty much all of the UK's circuits in the aid of the MND campaign. And she was joined by... Uh, a number of uh, friends and colleagues. Paul Rivette got uh, lots of the truck racing teams involved. And we had the Tour de Pembrey taking place pretty much uh, yesterday evening. And there were a couple of other events took place uh, around the circuit as well. Pointy was there to uh, bring us the highlights, of course. So while the uh, recovery team rescue, well, the rescue team recover Aaron Edmonds Mazda RX-8, let's have a look at those goings on from yesterday.
keep going full speed, believe me, we won't lose you. In fact, if anything, it'll be easier to paddle a bit faster, won't it? Paul, how you doing? Yeah, good. Bringing some uh, memories back from old BMX here. <laughs> Are either of us going to crash during this interview? I hope not. Yeah, like if we were put another hundred pound of coins in that in that bucket there, it'd be quite good to unbalance you a little bit. Put it this way, if you crash into me, you've got double the money in here, all right? Oh, you're not getting anything out of me. I'm going to speak to the dinosaur. Paul, off you go. I'll speak to you soon. Right, driver, slow down a little bit. We're waiting for the dinosaur. We're going to try and have a chat to the dinosaur, and then uh, I think I think we'll be done because we've lost everyone else. Dinosaur, hi. Hello there. <laughs> what made you want to ride a bike with like zero visibility? I'm um, very easily influenced. Very easily. You look like you've been influenced. Uh, is it? Tell us what it's like in there. Uh, it's quite difficult. I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> I'm all steamed up. And, uh, someone keeps ringing the phone every two seconds. Oh, they're just they're just they're just being horrible, aren't they? Ringing your phone. Yeah. Wow, I think it's fantastic what you've done. Many thanks for doing it. Uh, uh, and uh, in true Top Gear fashion, I'm going to leave you here now. All right. Bye then. Gordon, whilst I've got you, mate. There we go, swap hands. So there's quite a few people, obviously, from the paddock here today doing this uh, cycle challenge. How does it make you feel being uh, responsible for a championship that, that does this kind of thing just because you've asked them to? Oh, it's great, isn't it? It's all part of a team. They're all here pulling for Holly and for Jock's charities great to see it. It's a great team and it really does bring attention to the team effort. Oh dear, we've got issues with the circuit manager. Doesn't look like this is going down well ladies and gentlemen. Right then, well with a short... Who put a van here like no one crashed into the van? Well, with a short um, circuit manager stop play here at Pembury, we are back underway to complete our charity lap here at Pembury Race Circuit. It was touch and go for a moment, wasn't it? So it was, it was. So it, was it was touch and go. I don't know how close we can get without crashing. <laughs> yeah, obviously uh, they thought they were going to flip the golf buggy, but it's actually a recovery company that's driving it, so no problems there. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, we're, we're all right. Recovery's driving the buggy. In fact, if any of us break down, we can get a lift home with the buggy. And uh, we've got someone uh, under power here. Are you at full speed? Yeah. I can't hear you from over there. <laughs> He's gone. We've lost him. Here we go. Check and flag. We've all made it. Pull up on the right so you can see the victorious <laughs> players. That's it. Oh, victorious. Yes, we've made it. It's all right. We can edit it together. It's okay. They'll make me. They'll make me look like I'm first anyway. Don't forget. My name's Doddy Foundation. Make sure you give what you can, and I'll see you all later. Someone take the microphone. Yes, he's got it. Just hang around. Just hang around. Make yourselves look present. Gather around. Look pretty. Right. Um, I have got someone in the audience, uh, goes by the name of Mark Hughes. Have we got a Mark Hughes here, ladies and gentlemen? Come on over, Mark Hughes. Uh, and um, we've also got, typical that my battery started dying, of all occasions. Now, uh, Mark, if you take a position over here, so we'll just stay, stay stood up there. Um, do, do you want me to cut you? Um, and, and I do believe there's a lady friend of yours here called, uh, called Lauren. Have we got a Lauren here with Mark Hughes? Here comes Lauren. Right now, I don't know whether you guys know what's about to happen, uh, but I think Mark has got something to uh, something to, to ask. So if you want to just take a... Is it, is it a yes? Yes. It's a yes, it's a yes, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. Oh, fantastic. Must be my first proposal. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Oh, well, with that Saturday race into a fantastic end, I don't know what will. Good luck. You'll need it. Right. <laughs>Hi guys, how the devil are we? So, as you just saw, we got up to some great stuff yesterday. A lot of firsts, a lot of things going on. Uh, yeah, we, we had a great evening. We had cycling, I'm sure you all enjoyed that. Just a quick reminder as well, if you do want to donate to the My Name's Duddy Foundation, then head over to the Facebook page. Of course, you can go over to Jock Borthwick or Paul Rivette, who are also collecting for the charity. And of course, our friend Holly, who's been cycling round all of the circuits this year uh, for the British Truck Racing Championship at 
the end of our Saturday. Her and her dad will head out onto the circuit and do a couple of laps, of course, because it's a sponsored challenge for her. Um, and of course, a proposal. Have you ever seen a marriage proposal on the podium at British Truck Racing Championship? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have, but you have now. So it's a, it's a world of first. It really was nice to get everybody out on the circuit yesterday, though. Um, but uh, before we start the next race, of course, this is what it looks like. This is uh, what we call assembly area. Uh, not quite as much as an area here at Pembury as just a, well, a, a car park, a bit of a queue. Uh, but they're all raring to go. We've got a couple of minutes before the next race. Um, so let's just have a chat to some uh, teammates slash back office for Neil Yates. Uh, what are your names and where would you come from? Uh, Matt and... Vicky. So Matt and Vicky now, uh, Matt obviously you drive for Neil don't you? Yeah I do. In the recovery world? Yep. Now I believe you're uh, a bit of a famous TikToker as well aren't you? <laughs> no I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a time lapse of him driving through, uh, sort of deliver was it, dragging a bus through London wasn't it or something? Yeah through Liverpool Street. Yeah. Um, yeah, put a time lapse on and just show everyone how hard it is to have an American truck towing a truck uh, or a bus around London. I mean, it's it's really bad. It's silly for Neil to keep buying these American trucks because they're not designed for central London, are they? Uh, no, no, they're not. But you, you, if you love it, you'll drive it. So yeah, <laughs> you do love it, don't you? I love it. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> love it. So yeah, I'll drive it. I'd I'd, I'd be happy if he got another one. Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> It takes please, a, Neil, can yeah, I have please, a Neil, please, yeah, please, Neil, can I have another American trap, please? Uh, now, Vicky, uh, we've been actually speaking to a couple of partners uh, this weekend, and a lot of people are actually very uh, grateful for the support they receive from their better halves. Um, tell us quickly, if you can, what some of the most stressful things are about, um, well, trying to get Neil out on circuit each weekend. <laughs> um, I'm just nervous as hell as soon as he goes out there. It's, it's, it's quite concerning for you still. Is this more to do with what happened at Thruxton or just because racing's no, racing? I was like that before Thruxton, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm even worse now. I was going to say, it's really helped it out there. <laughs> um, shaking yeah. mess. Yeah. Yeah. Shaking I'm mess. Like that. Well, be before we get into the nerves then, what, what kind of processes uh, are going to actually getting the team out to a weekend like this? And, you know, how much, have you, how much do you have to do with that? Well, because we're with Steve, like for our pals. Um, he 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 kind of takes charge, doesn't he? He's like the the team leader. Oh, team leader! Team I like that. Don't tell him that, it's will a you? Big no. team. It's one big one big <laughs> truck racing family. family. family yeah. Yeah. One, big, one family. big family. One big family. And uh, of course, this is a, a bit of a distance for you guys over from London. Is it? it was about three hours to get here, was it? No, about I think five, it was really? about five five and a half hours. Yeah, we travelled through the night Friday and uh, Thursday night, and got here about half twelve at night. Had a few hours sleep and then on the circuit for. Seven half seven in the morning. Five hours. That's crazy. That's we've insane. Got five hours home as well. So yeah, I don't. I don't envy the five hours home. I thought Birmingham in three and a half hours was hard work, but I just like going over the Seven Bridge. You like going over Seven Bridge? Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I, I, I do like going over yeah. the Seven Bridges, <laughs> but it's always at night. Yeah. It's always at night. It's, oh, it's you don't nice see anything. Day. You don't get to yeah, see anything yeah. at night. You don't get to see none of the lovely hills and. The, the scenery, all you get to see is pitch black and lampposts. Pitch black and lampposts. It sounds romantic, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly does. It certainly does. Right, Vicky, Matt, thanks for talking to us. They're never going to talk to me again. In fact, they're probably going to fall out with me forever now. Like, point eight, why did you talk to us, that camera? Never come anywhere near us again. Uh, and of course, yeah, Neil Yates uh, being the number 33 truck driving Steve Thomas's previous uh, rig uh, named Eleanor. I uh, say so people that follow the championship very closely will probably know little tidbits like that. Uh, let's head over to uh, one of the Reed Brothers trucks here and have a chat to them as well pre race. God, he's not in here. So I. It's okay, so I want to talk to you guys, it's oh, fine. No, come on in, come on in. Well, Here we go. Now, mate. Yeah, yeah, talk to you now. <laughs> we don't know much. No, we don't know much. No, we don't know much. Is that why you keep showing up? Yeah, it? we just get told what to do. You haven't learnt your lesson no. yet. What's your name? Turn Anthony. Anthony, Anthony. Anthony. And your name is? I'm Taylor. Tyler and Anthony now. Anthony, uh, what's your what's your role in the team? Bit of everything really. If there's something needs fetching, I'll get it. If anything needs picking up, I'll pick it up. So he's a gopher. Yeah, yeah, oh right, yeah. we're off, we're off. <laughs> We're off out, right, well, seeing us there, making that tight, yeah, seeing a bit. Tyler, oh. well, what do you do? I'm just a photographer. 
No, but <laughs> just a photographer. Just a photographer. So you're you're uh, in charge of recording uh, history in the making, no? Exactly. Just think one day you could be behind that camera. Eh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just stick to photographs for now then. Hey, right. <laughs> well, as we can hear, the trucks are all starting up. It looks like we're heading out of the assembly area to get on with the next race of the day. So let's go and get some cool B-roll as they all drive out. I'm going to hand back to Dave in the studio. Quick word from our sponsors and then we'll get underway with a second race of Sunday here at Pembury Circuit. Back to you. Yes, cheers, Pointy. We'll see the trucks uh, released from assembly in uh, a few moments' time. This is uh, race three of the weekend well, Pembrey race three, fourth race held because of the Thruxton one confusing things. <laughs> That's uh, the grid for this race based on the uh, results of race one, which was the second race that we saw yesterday, the one won by Stuart Oliver. I, I hope you're following this because I'm losing track of it. Anyway, the grid is as follows. Jock Borthwick, who finished eighth in that race yesterday, the second one held the first Pembrey race. Well, uh, never mind. Jock Borthwick is on pole. That's the main thing. Starting alongside uh, Ricky Collins. They were 8th and 7th yesterday. Row 2 is Craig Reed and David Jenkins. Then Stephen Powell and Simon Reed on the third row. Then it's the big two in their bonneted trucks flying Ryan Smith alongside Stuart Oliver. Row 5 is Bradley Smith and Simon Faulkner. In the 6th row, John Bowler and Michael Oliver after that off in yesterday's race. Tom O'Rourke failed to start the race yesterday. He starts on row 7, Neil Yates has uh, requested to start from the back of Division 1 in all races this weekend as he is uh, only in his third truck race meeting. Then a gap and we go back to Division 2. Jim Bennett's heading up Division 2. We'll start alongside Simon Cole. Adam Bint and John Powell on their second row. Paul Rivette and Craig Evans on row 3. Craig Evans failed to finish in yesterday's race, pulled into the pits. Trucks are on their way then. We can hear them in the background there. 1,000 horsepower turbo diesel engines. This is the last race before the lunch break. Then we'll have the pickups on track, and after that we will have the classic car parade as well. So here they come then up to the grid. We're on board with David Jenkins in his MAN, starting alongside Craig Reed. That's Ricky Collett ahead of us. Now Jock Borthwick had a win here at Pembrey early this season. His first Division 1 win. Can he hold on in front again? Similar circumstances, similar weather as well. This will be another 15 minute race. Trucks will stop on the grid first of all. Perfect conditions here at Pembrey. Great to see such a large crowd up on the uh, spectator banks as well. I think those tyre tracks on the left is where uh, Jim Bennett went off earlier on, as described by Stuart Oliver, as he was lapping him. See how uh, deep the ruts are there as well. That's how uh, wet and muddy the grass is. You're lucky not to get your truck bogged down in there. Saw so Michael Oliver get stuck after he went off yesterday and the red flag came out. So he's starting further back on the grid on row six for this one. Up to the grid we come then board with the 2011 champion David Jenkins looking for win number three this season and we're on board once again with Adam Bint as well looking down the bonnet of his Volvo he is desperate for a good result here after only fourth in division two earlier on couldn't get past Neil Yates in the division one truck there's Jim Bennett and Simon Cole ahead and uh, John Powell is that a practice start there from John Jim Bennett turned 74 years young a few weeks ago. Still going strong in that classic set and Atkinson, although it's not the oldest truck on the grid, that's John Powell's DAF. Paul Rivette going for another win in Division 2. Simon Cole in his Iveco and switched from Division 1 earlier this season.
Ryan Smith on uh, by my calculation 375 points in Division 1 ahead of 320 for Stuart Oliver 315 for David Jenkins that's just my own calculations on my spreadsheet in Division 2 Adam Bint on 373 Paul Rivette on 366 so the gap is down to seven points with three more races to go this weekend John Powell is 30 points off the championship lead So another 15 minutes to come then. Jock Borthwick on pole, the man from near Glasgow. He deserves another win here on his uh, return from injury in the uh, white truck with the tartan of My Name's Doddy. Looks a bit like the old Stuart Grand Prix car livery, doesn't it? From the uh, end of the 90s, Jackie St Sir Jackie Stewart's uh, team, which later became Jaguar and subsequently became Red Bull. And we all know what they've gone on to achieve. Ricky Collett alongside the veteran in his uh, MAN, the HGV Direct Collett's haulage truck, also sponsored by Saltire. Craig Reed on the second row, the Reed Freight Evico. Based in Stoke, Craig Reed also uh, Craig Evans, sorry, also from Stoke, back in Division Two. David Jenkins, a Staffordshire man as well. TRP uh, Truck and Trailer Parts, Daff will lead them away. Awaiting the all clear from around the circuit. Away goes the pace truck then. Once the green flag is waved, we'll be under one. Somebody hasn't got away at the back of Division 1 there. We can see it from um, Adam Bint's camera. It's Tom O'Rourke who had a few problems yesterday. He hasn't got away from the back of Division 1, so there might be a delay here. And uh, the Scotsman can't get his MAN running. There's Neil Yates, so Rourke should have been alongside him. Oh, there he is, he's got going. Jim Bennett leads Division 2 ahead of Simon Cole. He used to run uh, the Mercedes Benz or the Mercedes Beast, as they tape called it. What's happened there? <laughs> Haven't started racing yet, Adam Bintz and John Powell. But that hasn't caused any damage. That was quite a thump there <laughs> between those two trucks. Yeah, you can see it's uh, dislodged a bumper on uh, Adam Bintz's truck. That wasn't in the script. Borthwick and Collitz lead them round. This is going to be interesting into the hairpin for the first time with the uh, reverse grid being used the first time this weekend. Mind you, in uh, the Thruxton race they used the reverse grid because the grid had to be as it was at Thruxton and Ryan Smith won from six on the grid on that occasion. with David Jenkins. Note uh, Buzz Lightyear there on the dashboard. Is it going to be to infinity and beyond for David Jenkins in this race? Can Ryan Smith win from seventh on the grid? Can he fight his way through? Can Jock Borthwick take his second win here at Pembroke? We'll find out over the next 15 minutes. Here we go. Fourth race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship here at Pembrey. 
Pace truck is in pit lane. Revs begin to rise. Waiting for the red lights to go out. Power about to come on, and here we go. David Jenkins gets away well. I thought he might have a go down the outside here. Borthwick a little slower away. You can't go three wide into the hairpin, surely. David Jenkins wisely ducks back in behind Ricky Collett. Are they all going to make it around? Collett's gone wide. And are they all going to make it in? They are trying to go three wide. Michael Oliver pushes his way through the middle of Bradley Smith and uh, Simon Faulkner. They've just about stayed on the black stuff there. Somebody's gone wide. That's Borthwick who's dropped back down to fourth place. There has been some contact there. And it's one of the uh, reeds that's come out at the head of this group. Borthwick's all over the place. He's on the grass. He's going backwards. Now, who's got the lead? It's Craig Reed, I think, that's got the lead. Hard to tell those two Evicos apart without seeing them. But yeah, Craig Reed leads. Stephen Powell second. And uh, where's Ricky Collick gone? There he is. He's all the way down. So the front row men got shuffled out on the hairpin for the first time. Stuart Oliver at the inside attacks. Jock Borthwick's being bashed from pillar to post here. Craig Reed leads it. Stephen Powell second, Jenkins third, Simon Reed fourth, and Ryan Smith in fifth position as they come round to complete the opening lap. What a frantic start here at Pembrey. I knew it would be with the reverse grid being used. Ron Board with David Jenkins as he chases second placed Stephen Powell, who's had just one win in his Division One career at Thruxton last season. Jenkins on the grass. Uh, track limits penalties may apply later on in the race, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. Away go the uh, Division 2 leaders. It's John Powell with the early lead in Division 2 in the number 6 in the DAF. None the worse for his collision with Adam Bint on the green flag lap. Bradley Smith having a go at Michael Oliver. They almost came together off the line. John Borthwick's got damage, I think. Yeah, he's, he's all over the place. He's tangled with Michael Oliver. Onto the grass they go. Oliver's going to spin out. Round goes number 12. I hope he hasn't got bumped down in the grass again. Looks like he has. And that could well be another red flag. Oliver stuck there at uh, Spitfires. Well, he brought out a red flag in the second race held yesterday when he got stuck at Brooklands, and uh, I think we're going to see a red flag again here because uh, Michael Oliver, I don't think he's going to get out of the mud there. Race continues for the time being with Craig Reed in the lead. He had an off yesterday as well in the Thruxton race when he was running second, went off at the hairpin. Stephen Powell in second position. David Jenkins is third. Then Simon Reed, Ryan Smith. Then Stuart Oliver in sixth position. Ricky Collitz is uh, next to in seventh, I think. Yes, there's the yellow MAM, but as expected, the red flag is coming out. It's not been a happy weekend for Michael Oliver. Off at Brooklands yesterday and stuck in the mud again today. Stuck up to his axles. Tangling with Jock Borthwick, who was going backwards down the order after getting uh, clobbered on the first corner. See it again here, there's the tangle. It was uh, Borthwick out on the grass and there wasn't quite room for uh, Michael Oliver to get through. Contact sent him spinning and then stuck in the mud. So how do you get a truck out of there? Well, we're about to see. There's our leader, Craig Reed. Great shame for Craig, because he'd uh, made a great start and uh, made the break. And Michael Oliver just left to sit and await the heavy artillery. Look at the mess he's made of the grass. Golfers get told to replace their divots in uh, the fairways. But that's more than a few divots that um, Michael Oliver has made there with his MAN. I don't know what you call that. Crevasses, I think.
Michael Oliver's out of the truck. He's okay. Quick replay of the start there from Adam Bint's point of view. Simon Cole a bit slow away ahead of him. Here comes the uh, heavy recovery vehicle. Stuck there in the grass. Michael Oliver just waiting patiently. You think those spectators in the background could at least offer him a drink? While the uh, recovery vehicle makes its way round, you see it there in the foreground, the tractor's coming in to drag him out of the mud as well. Let's see what point he's got for us. Well, here we are again, and uh, not the start to the second race of Sunday that uh, Michael Oliver was hoping for, I believe. Uh, it's unbelievable. So he's obviously over there now getting recovered. Fingers crossed by the tractor because that is the quicker way of doing things, getting dragged out of that mud. But of course, the recovery wrecker is over there as well. Um, and we'll hopefully get things underway very quickly. But as you can see, we're all standing around again now, waiting to see what's going on. We've got Tom O'Rourke in the pits, which is a real shame. Of course, we heard the story off him earlier on about the turbo coming down from Sheffield which is uh, an almighty journey. He struggled to get off that start line when they were on the outlap and then seemed to have quite a lot of smoke coming from the truck. But it does appear that he's back underway, so it's good to see him heading his way back out now. Whether or not he waits there or goes back onto the circuit, he'll now tootle round gently to join the back of the pack which I'm not sure is going to get regridded or whether they'll go back because we didn't really get many laps in before that race got red flagged so whether they reorganize them with the marshals or not we will see it was a fly I was being attacked by a fly um, right let's have a little wander over to uh, the guys at the medical because we see them out, they always rush out very quickly whenever there's an incident on circuit. If a driver or a spectator or a marshal is, of course, in need of medical attention, they're always on hand. And, of course, a lot of them also are volunteers too. And I believe there's also a, a relative of someone that works with the BTRC uh, that works with them as well. So let's head on over uh, and see if we can't find some interesting souls from the medical team. Everybody come out. Everybody out. That's right. So, well, your name's Steve Handley, isn't it? That's right. I like how easy you see. I learned this mistake the hard way. We were at, I think, believe it was, it was Snetterton. We spoke to some drivers at Snetterton, at uh, Marshall, sorry. Yeah. And uh, I asked their names as we went along. And then someone pointed out, look at the names on them. And then I was like, <laughs> great. Cool, thanks for that, yeah. It was Alex, yeah, rescue. So that's what you do. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, and what's your name, Emma? Emma. Emma. Snell. Oh, where else do we have a Snell? That's right. It's the uh, championship manager, Gordon Snell, and uh, uh, you are his daughter, of course. I am. Now, so uh, you and Steve, and of course, lots of other guys that work on the circuit here. That are that are hiding, well, no, no, primed. Okay. So you're not hiding, you're ready. You can't be out in the open if, you're, if you need to be close to the ambulance, right? That's right. Now, what, what kind of circumstances would you be getting called out and, and how soon do you know when a truck goes off if you're needed? When we get the call through the radio. Basically, the, the <laughs> race control will give a red flag and then we'll be scrambled if there's an entrapment. And our role is to do the extrication with a medic. To get them out as yeah, quickly as possible, quickly as possible, basically. Ambulance straight back to med centre and treatment. Where is the med centre here? There. Oh, that's hand oh, the, the actual ambulance? Uh, no, it's actually next door where the kettle is. Ah, uh, right, <laughs> yes. Well, it's important. You know, it's true what they say. There's a lot of things that can be fixed with a good cup of tea. Yeah. 
damn right. <laughs> and, and, and this works for probably for concussions, you know, minor minor flesh wounds. Yeah, just I mean, just a brew if, is all you need. If it's really serious, we do have air ambulance we can call on, etc. And they bring coffee instead of tea. A donut, hopefully. Donuts, ah, got you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have is cake, basically, coffee and No, donut. there's a helicopter station just at the end, by the entrance. Is that just police or have they got air ambulance there as well, do you know? Uh, we wouldn't know, obviously. No, no idea. Completely different. No uh, idea. It's covert, it's covert, that is. You're not allowed to know what that is. How long have you been doing this for now? Uh, six years. Six years. And what about yourself? Twenty. 20 years. Wow, so I bet you've seen some, I mean, not that we want to glorify <laughs> injury, of course, but I bet you've seen some uh, pretty gnarly stuff, right? You can still come across some that you've never dealt with before. That's, that's the thing with rescue. Everyone is different, um, different circumstances. Uh, Are you allowed to tell us probably no, what the worst no, one probably, it was? Probably best not it's probably to. best not yeah. to. In uh, detail, definitely don't not. don't put people off joining rescue or any of the marshals that are here because that's very important. We are all volunteers. I've, I did say yeah. that, yes. So, um, without volunteers, you know, we don't recruit so, know, people so into... So we know how people got into, like, actual marshalling. And yeah. Obviously, with, with a medical kind of caveat to that, what would be the, the entryway to get into volunteering? Uh, it's always best to do a couple of years on the bank, but that can change depending on what your background is. If you're a first aider or you work for the NHS or the ambulance service, then actually we look at you and to recruit you into rescue via our training because obviously our training is going to be totally different from the NHS. Right, right. So we're sort of a cross between an ambulance service and the fire brigade. Oh, so, right, yeah. so extinguishers and bandages. Everything, yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like an American um, uh, ME, is it yeah. emergency um, vehicle? We are the first people on scene, apart from the marshals on the bank, who are very important to us as well. So uh, working together as a team with the marshals, that's how we work we roll basically so you've been doing this six years what where were you six years ago that that enabled you to get involved with the medical side of the rescue team on circuit um i joined rescue and got race license all at the same time oh so you're a bit of a kind of double-edged sword a multi-talented yeah. one i say <laughs> yeah and uh, have you got uh, dreams of, of moving up do you is, is there a kind of schedule in mind for the, your future no, I just enjoy being behind the wheel and doing this, of course. So racing and rescuing racing. Yeah, basically. And uh, obviously to get involved with any kind of uh, volunteer work around the racing world, uh, where, where would we be looking to, to find that at the Marshall's website? Onto the BARC website, BARC. Just go on to type in BARC on the website and search and it'll come up with the Marshall's programme. You can read all about us and how to get involved. We do taste the days as well. We've already had some people here looking around. Um, the more people that come along, the more important it is because obviously the age generation with people that have been marshalling and doing rescue is progressing and the youngsters aren't coming through. There is a cost involved as well. So we do need a lot of support from the general. And uh, so what is the age limit to become uh, a banksman? Or per uh, person. You have to be over, <laughs> over 18. I, I think you can actually be as long as you're accompanied with a, a senior member. But you can do cadet yeah, marshalling cadet from marshaling, 16. So. Oh, wow, that's yeah. quite interesting. The website will help you if you want to join us. It's very important that we get support from other people as well. So so now on to something more of a, of a bias. Uh, what would be the your favourite series that you support with, uh, with regards to your job role? Definitely trucks. Definitely 100%. trucks. 100% trucks. 100%. <laughs> We've only just started coming to Prembury. I think last year we came yeah. for the first time to see the trucks. This circuit is fantastic. It's really old fashioned racing. There's plenty of turns on it. It's not all about pure speed, just brilliant. Uh, and what about you? I mean, should I even bother asking? I love the trucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be the trucks all the way. It's got to be the trucks. We've got two lots of trucks. And uh, who are these other guys we've got here? Because obviously everyone's just as important. Who, who's this chap? Go and speak to Colin. Go and speak to Colin. Colin. Greetings, sir. How are you? I'm excellent, I'm excellent. How, how long have you been doing this for? Uh, do you want the history? Uh, not the full history, because we All probably right. are going to go racing again soon. 40, uh, 40 years. 40 years. Oh, we right, definitely yeah. didn't need that whole story. <laughs> that would have been, we, that, maybe that would be like a whole segment. Yeah. Sit down. Cup of tea, bacon sandwich. Uh, yeah. You into bacon sandwiches? Oh yeah, definitely. That's all right. No, you're my I, kind I, of reti guy. I retired off rescue on in February. Right. And circuit manager asked me to drive the fire car, and that's, nice. what, I, that's what I do what's, now. What's in the? Oh, there's a lot of fire extinguishers in the yeah. fire car. Let's have a look at this. Oh, Come shot. and have a look at this, John. Oh, you can see through that. Yeah. Oh, so you get a helmet. Yeah, that's there's fine. A, there's a there's a, a very large tank. Is that compressed water or is no, that that's chemical? A, that's foam. Ah. That's foam. So. If there's an incident, 
and we cannot get it down with the dry powder and the foam which we get the marshals carrying and I also carry on here we hit it with the big one the big it's a separate canister of compressed air uh, well not air probably yeah. co2 and, CO2, yeah. and yeah because you wouldn't want to add air to no. a fire really a, would a, you? a triple f it is a triple f yeah Do it, what even aqueous film foaming foam Wow, film Sorry. forming foam, <laughs> film forming foam. I'd like to see you say that three times in a row. Yeah, I got my teeth in today. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, need to glue mine back in by the sounds of it. That was hard work. And uh, ho hopefully, you know, no major issues this weekend so far. Nothing, nothing, ma nothing major. Thank goodness. Oh, that's good news. Anything goes. I gotta go out just in case. As it goes, yeah, and talking about going out, it sounds like we are heading back out yeah, onto good. the circuit. So I'm gonna throw back to Dave now. We'll get back onto that racetrack for some racing action at last. Yes, thanks very much, uh, Pointy. Great little insight there from some of our marshals and uh, rescue crews down there. Last time I saw. Uh, Emma Snell was in the Donington pit lane at British GT when she was uh, first starting out in marshalling a few years ago. Good to see uh, Emma still uh, going strong with the rescue team. So the truck's back on track. Then we've got a couple of trucks in pit lane. Michael Oliver has uh, brushed the mud off and he's ready to go again. So is Jock Borthwick's battered and bruised machine and also um, Tom O'Rourke, I think, is down there as well. So front of the field, Ricky Collett starts there alone. This will be a 12-minute restart. So a slightly reduced race distance. Craig Reed, who was leading at the time of the stoppage, alongside David Jenkins. The trucks gridded in the uh, original starting order, but a couple of them in the pit lane. They'll join at the back. Jim Bennett leads Division 2 ahead of Simon Cole. Division 2 still with their full complement on track. Can Paul Rivette's come through yet again as he looks to close that gap? He's only seven points behind Adam Bint now. You can call it, you can see some uh, tyre marks on the side of his truck. Shows how tight it is into that hairpin. Fair play to uh, the marshals and recovery teams for a quick uh, rescue of Michael Oliver. Been his weekend at all. It's not really been Adam Wh Adam Bint's weekend either. He hasn't had much luck. Ricky Collett on his own on the front row. Then the TRP DAF leading them round. That'll pull into the pit lane at Honda Curve. Then the revs will begin to rise. What's going to happen into that hairpin this time? Collett with a clearer run this time because Jock Borthwick is in the pit lane after pulling in to repair a bit of damage. Craig Reed could have a clean run down the inside. Let's see what David Jenkins does as well. He's always a quick starter. Here we go then, we're underway. Second attempt at our fourth truck race of the weekend. Down towards Hatchet's hairpin they go for the first time. Ricky Collett's just about got the inside. David Jenkins around the outside of Craig Reed will take second place. Running wide is Simon Fock. A big cloud of steam there from Simon Cole. And a bit of a traffic jam in Division 2. Paul Rivette had to slow up there. Trucks from the pit lane join in at the back. It's Ricky Collett who leads from Jenkins. The Reed brothers third and fourth. Craig ahead of Simon. Recognise them now because Simon's got a bit of damage on the right-hand side of the truck. Stephen Powell is in fifth position but uh, not for much longer he's gone wide there onto the grass Ryan Smith goes through Stuart Oliver will try and come through as well but it's Ricky Collitz who has got the lead David Jenkins in second place through the back of the circuit they go turning back towards the paddock down speedway straight at Brooklands the Reeds third and fourth Ryan Smith lurking in that fifth position it's a good first lap by Ricky Collitz he got exactly the start he wanted and the Yorkshireman leads the way as they come through to complete lap at number one this slightly reduced restart over 12 minutes 
There's the reads. They were nose to tail earlier on as well. Smith fifth, Oliver sixth, Powell seventh, Bradley Smith is eighth, then John Bowler, Simon Faulkner going rounds out the top ten. He's running well. John Powell leads Division Two in eleventh place overall in the number six. Ahead of Adam Bint and Simon Coles up there in third. Paul Rivette got delayed on the first hairpin. He's in fourth in the class. On the outside comes David Jenkins. He's got a good run out of the hairpin. He takes the lead. Jenkins leads it. The Reed's side by side as well. Craig Reed's been shuffled back. It's Simon up to third. Ryan Smith is through into fourth place, but it's David Jenkins who has taken the lead. He got the run through Spitfire and Debeni there was able to pull alongside and take the lead over the crossing. We're driving by David Jenkins, the 2011 champion. Ricky Collins, the 95 and 97 champion. Ryan Smith. Seven titles in a row coming into this year. Simon Reed, a couple of wins in Division One, but yet to make a championship challenge. Craig Reed, a former Division Two champion, is in fifth position. Then Stuart Oliver, the ten-time champion, sixth. Stephen Powell has a couple of Division Two titles. As Ricky Collett under fire, right towards the pit wall. There goes Simon Reed, trying to position themselves for the hairpin. Still David Jenkins who has the lead, looking for win number three this season. He won twice last time out at Snetterton. Here comes Ryan Smith up onto the tail of Simon Reed, trying to take P3. This is all allowing David Jenkins to start to get away. They're going to start to bottle up, I reckon, behind Ricky Collett here. Here's MAN, uh, not quite as quick as uh, some of the championship challenging trucks behind him. With all due respect to uh, Ricky, a vastly experienced truck racer. On board with Adam Bintz as he chases John Powell. This is the battle for the lead in Division 2. They're 11th and 12th overall. The DAF leads the Volvo. Saw them clash on the green flag lap before the first start of the race. Out on the back of the circuit. Simon Faulkner ahead of them. There's Michael Oliver. He's coming through. Trying to catch up with Division 1. Where are the other trucks that started from the pits? Well, Jock Borthwick is 16th, Tom O'Rourke in 18th. To see all 20 trucks able to take this restart. Jenkins still leads from Collins. Stuart Oliver all over the back of Craig Reed. That's for fifth position. The lead gap is 1.9 seconds, near enough. And Ricky Collett now under fire from Simon Reed for second place. Can he get alongside here coming out of Spitfires? Not quite. Ryan Smith's all over him. One false move by Simon and Ryan will be through like a shot. Ryan just choosing to bide his time there in that fourth place. I don't think he re really is going all out to seal the title this weekend. He knows there's another five races to come at Brands Hatch after this weekend. Simon Reid could have a look here at Brooklands for second. No, there isn't room on the inside of the yellow Number 95, the Collins MAN. You can see now they are starting to queue up behind Ricky Collins. I uh, thought this may happen. Ricky defending that second place. He uh, got his first podium of the year at uh, Snetterton last summer. He wants to go one better with a second place. But all this is allowing David Jenkins to build his lead. Jenkins leads them over the line. He's nearly three seconds clear now. Simon Reed shadows Ricky Collin, Ryan Smith in fourth, Craig Reed fifth, Stuart Oliver sixth, Stephen Powell seventh, and Bradley Smith is in eighth place. This race will set the grid for the final race of the weekend. So at uh, present, Bradley Smith would be on pole in eighth place with the top eight reversed. Through to the crossing. Let's see how uh, much of a lead David Jenkins has built up here. They're all trying to get past Ricky Collins and Simon Reid has a look. He nearly got his nose down the inside there. I thought there was going to be a bit of contact there at centre. He won't get through. Oh, we've got a tangle at the hairpin. I heard a shout from the crowd there. It's Tom O'Rourke and Neil Yates. Are they stuck together? If so, that could be a red flag. Yeah, they can't get them apart, look. They're stuck perfectly facing one way and one the other. Simon Reid going for the lead, he forces Ricky Collins to go wide, he's on the grass. Ryan Smith will go through as well, up into second and third, but I'm wondering if oh, Craig Reid into... Uh, uh, these two need to get out of the way at the hairpin. Neil Yates is right there on the apex, this is going to be interesting. Can the leaders get through? Neil Yates needs to get out of the way here and quickly. Oh, goodness me. 
just gets his foot down in time. I thought he was going to be hit. <laughs> David Jenkins bore down on him. You would have been able to see the whites of uh, Neil Yates' eyes there. I think Ricky Collins been battered back out of the way. There's two trucks on the grass. Uh, that was Craig Reed as well. Collett was the other. So what's that done to the lead of the race? It's uh, Simon Reed who's got the lead now in the 89. David Jenkins has got going again. He, uh, now is he, is he still in the lead? In fact, yes, he is. My apologies. I thought Jenkins had slowed up there to avoid Neil Yates, but he did get through. Okay. Things calm down again. Let's have a look back at Division 2. It's still John Powell leading Division 2. Ahead of Adam Bintz. Paul Rivette is up to third in the class now. So it's Jenkins from Reed. Ryan Smith in third place. And then Stuart Oliver looks like he's up to fourth. Ricky Collin got uh, pushed back down the order. There's Neil Yates, he's still going after that tangle with Tom O'Rourke. They did well to move out of the way just in time there. There's Collett, he's behind Bradley Smith, so he's down to P8 now. Behind them, John Bowler. Collett fighting back up the outside into the hairpin. This is where most of the action's been today, here in at Brooklands. Collett goes wide again. Jenkins leads by six and a half seconds now, so that bottleneck behind has let him get well and truly away. He's heading for win number three this season. There's four minutes of the race to go. Through the crossing, Ryan Smith on the back of Simon Reid. There's Stuart Oliver in fourth. Behind them, Stephen Powell. Craig Reid is down to sixth. And Bradley Smith, Ricky Collins. John Bowler and Simon Fulton around out the top ten. That is Simon Cole. Is that contact or a mechanical problem for the 41? It's on the outside of the hairpin. We can see some bodywork there. That might be from uh, the O'Rourke Yates tangle, though. There's O'Rourke about to be lapped. Neil Yates has already been lapped. Simon Cole will be stranded on the outside of the hairpin. There'll be yellow flags now since uh, hatchets, I would think. And in fact, the red's coming out. Just coming up on the screen there, the red is coming out. There's the reason. Simon Cole has pulled up on the outside of the hairpin, just on the edge of the circuit. So a dangerous position. There's just over three minutes left on the clock. The trucks slow down. I would imagine that will be race over. Same length of time left as we saw in the Welsh Sports and Saloon race earlier on. So that will almost certainly be race called. And David Jenkins will take the win. He got his lead up to eight seconds when the red flags came out. So that will be uh, Jenkins ahead of Simon Reid. Ryan Smith in third. Now, who got fastest lap? It was Ryan Smith. Let's have a look again, see what happened to Simon Cole. There's that piece of debris. No, it was a mechanical problem, was it? No, a spin for Simon Cole. He got his wheels onto the grass and then just stopped. I don't know whether he was uh, already in mechanical trouble there. Maybe his brakes failed and he had to stop the truck by sliding it onto the grass. Whatever the problem is, the race has been stopped and uh, will not be restarted. That's just been confirmed, so we can... Uh, Start adding the points up in a moment. David Jenkins will take the 15 points for a race victory. That's just what he needed, especially with Stuart Oliver down in fourth. They're battling for second in the championship. Ryan Smith third and gets fastest slap. Simon Reid in second. And Powell, Craig Reid, Bradley Smith, Collins, Bowler and Faulkner around out the top ten. John Powell wins Division 2 ahead of Adam Bint with Paul Rivette down in third after he was delayed on the first corner, finishing behind the recovering Michael Oliver. Near the finishers, Jock Borthwick in 15th, then Craig Evans, Jim Bennett, Tom O'Rourke and Neil Yates after their tangle. And of course we lost Simon Cole. We'll await for Pointy then to uh, move forward to do his uh, post-race interviews. There'll be recovery needed on the truck of Simon Cole. That gives me a bit of time to do some more maths and uh, see what the championship situation is. So Ryan Smith will score 
points for third and for fastest lap. David Jenkins gets 15, Stuart Oliver gets 12. So uh, my reckoning is the gap is now 57 points in Division 1. David Jenkins just two points behind Stuart Oliver. Let's head down to pointing. Wow, I tell you what, it might have been a red flag, but what a sterling effort we've got. Mr. Dave Jenkins, come on round, John. We're just waiting for the chequered flag still. No, it's gone on TSL. It's gone on TSL. Yeah, yeah, we've got the chequered flag. I've taken the screenshot. It's as official as I need it to be. So congratulations, Dave. What a fantastic start to the race. You absolutely hammered those first few laps. We saw Ricky Collett snarling up the, uh, the next couple of positions, but you held it and you just got further and further ahead every lap that went by. So, well done, fantastic result. Thank you, no, Ricky did a good job, obviously. Um, you know, once I got past and uh, he was obviously putting a good fight up, so uh, that was brilliant, just what we needed. It's, it's going to be a great boost for the team. We spoke to you earlier on, you said the team have got your back. You know that they know what they're doing. It's still going to be hard work. But at the same time, you know, a first place trophy. I believe Dave saying it's your third first place for the season as well. Yeah, it is. That's the third one for this year, yeah. And uh, the first Jenkins one of the day, if Will's watching at Brands Hatch. So let's see what he can do. <laughs> oh, is it like that, is it? Well, you heard it here first. The challenge is set. Yeah, no, Will's had a fantastic morning with a podium this morning. So he lines up P3 for the, rash, for the last uh, Porsche Sprint Cup of the season. So, oh, nice, uh, nice. Yeah, so he's got some work to do now. We'll have a trophy measuring competition tomorrow. Oh, yeah, well, I hope yours is tallest. Dave, well done. I'll leave you to speak to John. Congratulations. Fantastic effort there. Uh, I don't think they've let any Anybody else in the paddock to be honest but they've got to be happy with that a fantastic result so as you can see now we're still under red flag essentially they're holding them whilst we get this truck underway uh, because of course they need to get that corner cleared before we can let any trucks back into the paddock so the marshals will be opening the gate ever so shortly but we spoke to Dave earlier on didn't we uh, leading up the truck there this morning uh, how you know he, he wanted to get that result for the team and what a great push they've obviously made so it's just phenomenal to see him coming home with that first place. Uh, we are seeing some movement with the trucks behind us. They are taking them back round now. The, the pace truck is on his way in, so we're going to get in the queue over into the uh, Park Ferme, where we'll hopefully catch up with a few more drivers. So I'm going to sling you back to the studio now, whilst we queue up to get over to see some more truck racing drivers. Yeah, and there's the truck sending back to the paddock then, thanks Pointy. Ryan Smith, uh, by my calculation, now leads Division 1 by 57 points, with David Jenkins just a couple of points further back. And uh, Stephen Powell threatening Bradley Smith for P4, he's only four, uh, three points behind him now. The gap in Division 2 is between Adam Bintz and Paul Rivette is now eight points. John Powell closing a little as well with the win and faster slap. Well, we're now going into our lunch break, we'll get uh, back underway in just over half an hour's time here at uh, Pembrey, next race schedule for five past one. So we're going to take a look back to our previous truck racing weekend in the meantime at Snetterton. So here we are down at Snetterton Circuit. We're getting very close to the end of the season now. And you join me today outside the GD Plus fuel tanker, which of course is our championship fuel sponsor this year, putting the power in all of our racing trucks for the 2023 season. We've got some fantastic racing action to show you today. So let's have a look at some of the highlights from here at Snetterton. Let's take a look at the grid then for the first of our five truck races this weekend here at Snetterton. And it is Ryan Smith who keeps up his unbeaten run of pole positions this year. Stuart Oliver alongside him. Bradley Smith with another good qualifying effort starts alongside David Jenkins on the second row. Simon Reid and Michael Oliver on row three. Stephen Powell and Craig Reid, Tom O'Rourke and John Bowler. 
completing the top ten with Ricky Collins rounding out at the uh, Division One field. There's a gap, and we've got Division Two. Paul Rivette, four-time winner at Donington, has qualified fastest alongside Adam Bint, Craig Evans, alongside title contender John Powell on their second row, and then Simon Cole alongside Jim Bennett, and rounding out the grid, Neil Yates, a Division One runner, electing to start from the back. Pace truck about to head into pit lane then, ready for our first British Truck Racing Championship race of the weekend. Ryan Smith on pole position, the man going for an eighth consecutive Division One title this year. Ten times British champion Stuart Oliver alongside him, Paul Rivette and Adam Bintz. The title contenders lead the Division Two field away a little bit further back. This will be a 15-minute race up towards the red lights they come in the sunshine of Snetterton. Ryan Smith has won the first race from pole position at every event so far this year. Can he do so again? Let's find out. We're underway. Decent start by the two front row men. Bradley Smith and David Jenkins on the second row of the grid. Good start by Bradley, the young gun in the number 46 MAN. They're all away well into Riches for the first time. Ryan Smith slots into the lead. Well bunched up behind. Paul Rivet takes the lead of Division 2, four-time winner at uh, Donington Park last time out down towards the Wilson head here Ryan Smith's got the advantage over Stuart Oliver in second place side by side for third Bradley Smith and David Jenkins and the Reeds in their Ivicos and uh, Michael Oliver goes a little bit wide onto the grass there kicks up some dust as they head down to Palmer it is Ryan Smith who uh, leads the way ahead of Stuart Oliver in the two uh, bonneted trucks out in front Bradley Smith defending from David Jenkins for third as they go up towards Agostini for the first time. Meeting the top five is uh, one of the Reeds in there in two Evicos. The uh, already been some contact there, looks like some damage to the front of Stephen Powell's uh, MAN. There's the lead battle in Division 2, the Napa MAN of uh, Paul Rivette has the lead ahead of Adam Bintz, John Powell and Craig Evans battling for third position. There's John Bowler, the number 14, had his uh, only win of the season, his first Division 1 win at Thruxton earlier in the year. But there you can see the front bumper hanging off Stephen Powell's MAN, the man from Kent, and he's going to lose a place there. I think Powell's slowing down, in fact. John Bowler going through there at Oggies. Yeah, Stephen Powell's in trouble, he's definitely slowing down. Ryan Smith uh, dominating, he's taken pole position in every qualifying session this year. Looking uncatchable yet again. He had three wins at Brands Hatch at season opener, three wins at Pembrey, two wins at Fruxton, three at Donington. Battle on for third place, Bradley Smith being reeled in, that slightly smoky MAN by David Jenkins, he's desperate for a win this year. And there is Gentleman Jim Bennett, recently celebrated his 74th birthday and still going strong at the win of that classic Seddon Atkinson. Not the oldest chassis in the championship though, that's the DAF you can see there, number six John Powell is the oldest truck out there. Craig Evans up the outside, not going to get a truck round the outside of the Wilson's head. Brown recycling MAN on the back of the uh, Dutch built DAF. And towards Palmer, these two fighting for third in Division 2. Looks like Stephen Powell has retired from the race. Now this race decides the grid for race 3 of the weekend, with the top 8 reversed in each division. So who's in 8th place at the moment? It's Tom O'Rourke, this will give him pole for race 3. But in Division 2, well, there's uh, only 6 entries, so they'd be flipped around, it'd be Jim Bennett who starts on pole. There's Neil Yates in the number 33 MAN. Beated in uh, Division 2 earlier this season. Coming around to start his final lap though is Ryan Smith. Surely heading towards that eighth title. He's made no secret of the fact he wants to better Stuart Oliver's record of ten titles. Stuart Oliver's been European champion as well. Ryan, budget allowing, would love to compete in the European Championship, which sadly doesn't visit the UK anymore. Let's see Ryan in there, given the chance. 
that from Nottinghamshire. Over the line he goes, and uh, Tom O'Rourke's had a moment down at Nelson. We saw the Dutch dust kicked up on the outside there, and uh, Ricky Collett has gone past him in the 95. John Bowler's gone through as well, so O'Rourke's lost two places, and dropping out of eighth place has provisionally lost pole position for race three tomorrow as well. There's Jim Bennett in the Seven Atkinson. I don't know if Ryan Smith needs to pass him here. He can just take it easy on the runs of the line now. But you try telling that to a driver when he's leading a motor race. Through he goes. Keeping up his unbeaten run of pole positions this year. It's going to be his unbeaten run of wins in race one at every meeting this year as well. Second flag is in sight from the marshals on the pit wall. And here he comes, win number 12 in 2023 for Ryan Smith. Flying Ryan takes the flag. It's going to be Stuart Oliver home in second place. He crosses the line 8.2 seconds behind. And side by side, almost the third. Bradley Smith hangs on ahead of David Jenkins. Simon Reid will be fifth in the Avico. Meantime, in Division 2, it's going to be Paul Rivette in his MAN. Division 2 for the slightly less modified, slightly less powerful trucks. Meanwhile, Michael Oliver, sixth ahead of Craig Reid. He held off the Avico. Eighth place, it's going to be John Bowler, I think, just ahead of Ricky Collett. John Bowler, eighth, and he gets pole for race three. Paul Rivette in 10th place overall will win Division 2 by a clear margin over Adam Bint. Binty comes home in 2nd place. And the battle for 3rd is going to go to the line. Craig Evans and John, Bowl, John Powell rather side by side. Who's going to be 3rd in Division 2? John Powell just gets there. Brian Smith wins by just over eight seconds ahead of Stuart Oliver. Bradley Smith holding off David Jenkins for a podium in third. Then Simon Reid fifth. Michael Oliver held off Craig Reid for sixth. John Bowler just beat Ricky Collett home for eighth place and pole for Division One for race three tomorrow. Paul Rivette wins Division Two, completing the top ten overall. Let's head down to Park Ferme. Paul Rivette continuing his first place reign of the Division Two. We had four first places that I could that I recorded at least at uh, Donington and of course you've come straight into Snetterton and yet another first place. Yes, that's uh, five in a row now and we were so unlucky at Donington with the turbo pipe coming off in the first race. Uh, otherwise, we, otherwise we would have had that clean sweep of all five. We were in the lead when it happened. So, you know, I'm on a mission to try and do that this weekend. Of course, these guys won't make it easy. You know, Bint is, you know, he's chasing on our heels really hard behind, but uh, I'm going to do my best to uh, to bring this Napa truck home first for all of them this weekend. I, I was going to say, I mean, we, we do this. We're looking at Formula One records now, aren't we? If we can make it 10 in a row, we will have to take it to Pembury for the decider, but it could happen, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take just the five in the one weekend. That'll do me. <laughs> five in a weekend. That is impressive. I would like to see that. And I think it would be great for the fans as well, but still quite a tussle. I mean, the results ending up were still very, very close in Division Two. For the rest of the season now, we've only got Pembury and Brands Hatch left. You've really got to make it count. Yeah, we were 23 points behind in the championship coming into here behind Adam Bint. So we've just gained two there. And this is what we need is to keep chipping away. If we can get two every race this weekend from him, then, uh, you know, that's uh, that's them within striking distance when we get to Pembury. This is the start for race one. Now on to race two at Snetterton. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wonder what I've done though, that. He could have done a good job though, didn't he? Eh? Yeah, do all right, all right. Cheers, mate. Carter, ladies and gentlemen, watch this space. Race two, yeah? Race two. Second fastest time for each driver in qualifying sets the grid for this race. And it is, once again, no surprise, Ryan Smith on pole for our second track race of the weekend alongside number seven, Stuart Oliver. Second row, David Jenkins, number 69, ahead of 46, Bradley Smith. We saw them glued together for third in race one. Row three, number 12, Michael Oliver ahead of 89, Simon Reid. And on the fourth row, number 14, John Bowler, and 86, uh, Tom O'Rourke in their MANs. Hopefully Tom O'Rourke uh, fix whatever the issue was in race one. Likewise, Stephen Powell, he's on row five alongside Ricky Collett. And completing the division one field, it is number 68, Sir uh, Craig Reid. He only got one uh, time lapping in qualifying. Unfortunately, all his other times were disallowed for exceeding track limits, so he has to start at the back in division one for this one. 
We have got one other Division 1 entry here, of course, Neil Yates uh, electing to start at the back. Division 2, meanwhile, Paul Rivette on pole in his MAN alongside the number 5, Adam Bintz. Second row, Craig Evans and Simon Cole, a decent effort from him. Then onto the second row in Division 2, John Powell and Jim Bennett on row 3. Neil Yates in the Division 1 truck completes the grid for this one. Five ton, 1,000 horsepower race trucks. Up towards the red lights, the pace truck is in pit lane. Tension mounts. Race two of five this weekend here at Snetterton for the British Truck Racing Championship. Right's about to go out, here we go, the power comes on, and away they go. Decent getaway by Stuart Oliver, watch for Michael Oliver as well, trying to get through the middle. Paul Rivette leads off in Division 2, something flew off. I don't know who that came from at the uh, back of the Division 1 pack there, but Ryan Smith has the lead ahead of Oliver, Jenkins in third. Michael Oliver's flown through into fourth, there's contact between Tom O'Rourke and one of the reeds there going into Riches, I think. As Ryan Smith leads up towards the hairpin for the first time. David Jenkins trying to get up the outside, so is Michael Oliver. We uh, look back in the pack. There was some contact there in the early stages. Michael Oliver's been shuffled wide by Bradley Smith. One of the reeds involved, it was Tom O'Rourke who got hit on the uh, first corner by either Simon or Craig Reed. Couldn't tell which. Uh, back of his truck are looking a bit uh, second hand, but the race continues. David Jenkins all over the back of Stuart Oliver. It's Ryan Smith who leads down to Agostini for the first time. Side by side for second, but Oliver's got the inside line. Here comes Bradley Smith up the inside on 89 of uh, Simon Reed. Division 2 battle heads uh, into Agostini as well. Clouds of dust being kicked up on the outside there. Well, Ryan Smith's already escaping. Stuart Oliver in second place. Third is Jenkins. 89 of Simon Reed under fire from John Bowler. He's got away well in the uh, number 14. Then it's O'Rourke. Michael Oliver got forced wide on the hairpin. Made a good start, was up into fourth place, but three into one didn't go at the hairpin, unfortunately. Behind him, Stephen Powell in the number three. We've lost somebody up there, I notice, at uh, the uh, entry to uh, Oggies. It's one of the Reeds, it's Craig Reed. I think he's got away without hitting anything, spraying water out there as. Uh, the uh, truck rejoins. We're on board with the number 12 of Michael Oliver, chasing the uh, remnants of Tom O'Rourke's truck briefly there. As they start to uh, sort themselves out around the completion of the first lap. Stephen Powell trying to close up on Michael Oliver. Paul Rivet, meanwhile, is leading Division 2. Bradley Smith goes a bit wide through Hamilton there in the Scrapco and Ferns are sponsored 46, the 89 Reed Freight Vico behind him. And behind them, John Bowler running well. One win for him in Division 1 so far, it was at Thruxton. John Powell has indeed pulled into the pits problems for the DAF. That could harm his championship challenge. He needs every point he can get. Well, Ryan Smith is in a different league out in front. Over eight seconds clear now. Here's the battle in Division 2. This is for second place. Paul Rivette's got ahead of uh, Ricky Collett, of course. There's a buffer between uh, Rivette and his championship rival, Adam Bint. David Jenkins still harrying Stuart Oliver. As Simon Reid up the inside at Corum goes through. Good move, Simon Reid up into fourth place past Bradley Smith. Well, there's Tom O'Rourke. Running a bit wide there, the truck fortunately not shedding any more body panels, and Bradley Smith's in trouble. He's lost places, he's uh, dropping down the order. Stephen Powell's gone through, so has Michael Oliver. I think we might see Bradley Smith heading for the pits here, that's a great shame. Still, Craig Evans throwing everything he's got at Adam Bitt for second in Division 2. They're not going to catch this man, Paul Rivet, the multiple Renault Clio champion. He's done a few BTCC races as well. Now in his new calling of truck racing, and he's chasing Ricky Collett. Ryan Smith has just gone onto his last lap. There were a few seconds left when he crossed the line. A bit of smoke there from uh, Ricky Collett, I think, or is that steam from the brakes? It looked like uh, more like smoke to me. Yes, there's definitely some smoke there. Daimler, 
Volvo, MAN, Iveco. Four different makes in the top four places. In Division 2, it's MAN, Volvo, MAN, and Iveco in fourth place. Oliver goes a little bit wide there through Oggies. There's gentleman Jim Bennett, the good old Seven Atkinson, the Asian Gravels truck man from Suffolk. Still going strong at 74. And he's about to be lapped by Flying Ryan. He's going to take one of the most dominant wins I've seen in the British Truck Racing Championship in some time. Through the bomb hole, up towards Corum. Disappearing into the sunset. There's Bennett. There is Smith. Is Jim going to let him through here or is he going to finish side by side? No, he's going to briefly bulk him there coming out of the corner. Excuse me, says Ryan Smith. I've got a race to win here. Bennett lets him through. Ryan Smith wins by a country mile. Jim Bennett crosses the line a lap down. We await second place to come through. Is Stuart Oliver going to hang on? It looks like it. Oh, Simon Reid's gone wide onto the grass. That's uh, Kai Bosch, his chance of a podium. Stuart Oliver comes over in second place, just ahead of David Jenkins. Reid in fourth. Division two is going to be won by Paul Rivette, but who's going to be second? Is Craig Evans going to make a late move? Been trying all race long to get past Adam Bint. Fourth has gone to Simon Reid. Fifth is John Bowler, good run by him. Tom O'Rourke, six, just ahead of Stephen Powell. Michael Oliver, eighth, that'll give him pole for race four tomorrow. It'll be Ricky Collett in ninth place. Paul Rivette will complete the top ten and win Division Two. Had a bit, look at that, sideways into uh, Murray's for the last time, coming out of Corum. That's bamboozled Craig Evans a bit there. Paul Rivette's come across the line, won Division Two. And Adam Bint in a superb defensive race takes second in class ahead of Craig Evans. Provisional result then, Ryan Smith the winner by 20.88 seconds, an enormous margin of victory. Stuart Oliver holding off David Jenkins for second with Simon Reid just behind them. John Bowler a good fifth ahead of Tom O'Rourke. Then Stephen Powell and Michael Oliver complete the all-important top eight. Ricky Collett, after a moment on the first lap, finishes ninth. Paul Rivette, another Division Two win for him. That's six in the last two events. And Adam Bint, who somehow held Craig Evans off all the way. Simon Cole, Neil Yates and Jim Bennett completing the finishers. We lost Bradley Smith, John Powell and Craig Reid into the pits. Let's go and find Pointy in Park Fermi. The lead you had very early on in that was absolutely insane. Well, do you know what? We've my mechanic did something different to engine. I can tell that when he put nitrous uh, in it. <laughs> no, we've been we've been in a power mode all year. Right. Where when we come to a corner, the oil pressure drops and the engine goes in safety mode, so it reduces the power. Well, he said I'm going to override it and try it, and we overrid it and uh, got me power back in the middle of the corner. It so it's just insane. I mean, seven seconds ahead after the first lap. No, sorry, five and a half seconds ahead after the first lap. Eight and a half seconds after the second lap. And because you know Stuart was battling with Dave Jenkins, it was just getting further and further ahead. We was doing 23, uh, two 23 point sixes in the race after three corners. It was showing to two 23 point two. So the time were there, and you know, full credit to my team honestly they work hard you know for us we're a small smaller team than some of the teams out there that's not taking anything away but we work within a budget and we do the best we can and we've got great sponsors I've got the best mechanic and the best team Definitely. in my opinion in the paddock and uh, we, we put a show on the young Carter telling us about the clean start to the day into race two earlier on let's see if race three of the weekend is a little bit more straightforward here at Snetterton have a confirmation of the grid then. John Bowler in pole position alongside Craig Reid in front of Division 1. Second row, Michael Oliver, number 12, and number 89, Simon Reid. MAN and Divico on the first two rows. Row 3, a pair of MANs, David Jenkins, number 69, and Bradley Smith in 46. Got on row 4, the two bonneted trucks. Stuart Oliver, number 7, Ryan Smith in number 1, the Dame Freight Liner going for the hat trick and uh, his uh, 14th win of the season already. Row five, Ricky Collett in the MAN and Neil Yates in his new MAN alongside him from uh, the Stephen Powell stable. Then on the sixth row of the grid, the two trucks that failed to finish race one. That's Tom O'Rourke and Stephen Powell. 
Division 2 headed up by uh, Jim Bennett in the Seddon Atkinson alongside Simon Cole, then Craig Evans and John Powell, Adam Bint and Paul Rivet. So the leading Division 2 runners having to fight their way through. It looks like Neil Yates, yes, the white truck there, is uh, starting from the very back of the grid as he did yesterday. Waiting for the pace truck to pull into pit lane. Five ton beasts, almost 1,000 horsepower apiece under the driver's right feet. Here we go, beasts in the east of England here at Snetterton. The red lights are on, we're on board with flying Ryan Smith up towards the red lights. This first corner is not going to be for the faint of heart. Here we go. We're underway down towards Richie's corner for the first time. Stuart Oliver trying to get up the inside. There's uh, Ricky Collins. He's got a good start in the 95 up the inside of Ryan Smith. And is that rain on the camera lens? Looks like, oh, Collins gone. He's tangled with Ryan Smith. Smith's going off. Well, there go his hopes for hat-trick. Simon Cole's gone spinning as well in the 41 into the gravel. Now, if he can't get out of there, that's going to be a race stoppage. Oh, dear. So who's leading? It's John Bowler. Michael Oliver up into second place. Third with this position, we've got uh, Craig Reed, then David Jenkins. Ryan Smith's got going in at the back, but I saw a red light flashing there. Yeah, Ricky Collins stuck there, so it looks like the race is uh, going to be stopped by possibly two trucks off. Simon Cole uh, still there as well. I suspect that's going to be a red flag. I saw lights flashing there. Whether they were yellow or red lights, I couldn't quite tell. Yes, red flags now out. Let's have a look at the replay of the start from outside of Riches. It was John Bowler who led off. Michael Oliver with a great getaway up the inside. Cracking start on the inside by Ricky Collins as well. But look what happened. He just lost the back end. I don't think there was any contact in there. Simon Cole just went spinning around all on his own. Maybe hit the brakes as uh, something's happened further back as well there. Look in the smoke. Somebody else has gone off. We'll see what happened again for Ricky Collins. He made a good start at the inside of Ryan Smith. Was chasing Stuart Oliver. Now, was the track damp? Had any fluid, had any rain come down already? We saw a couple of spots on the uh, camera on Ryan Smith's truck. No, he was just a bit too quick. He just missed his braking point. Was trying to avoid the back of Stuart Oliver. Round he went. Now, let's have a look again. Let's see if we can see what happened further back in Division 2. We couldn't see through the smoke from uh, down at Riches. Simon Cole set off into the lead. Now, watch to the outside. There's John Powell. Contact, oh goodness me, that's with uh, Craig Evans. I think he might have been being pushed by Adam Bint. Neil Yates locks his brakes up as he tries to slow down and avoid them. That was a code brown moment for Neil, I think. So here we go then, the revs begin to rise once again from these 1,000 horsepower engines. Here we go then, the power about to come on, the red light goes out, and here we go, John Bowler and Craig Reed lead them off down towards that first corner at Riches. Let's hope they all make it round this time. Bowler's got the lead, the Reeds tuck in behind them, Michael Oliver going for the inside there, Stuart Oliver up on the grass, almost on the inside is Tom O'Rourke, this time Division 1 have made it round, and look at Paul Rivette, what a start up into the lead of uh, Division 2 if he can get round the outside of Craig Evans. John Bowler has the uh, lead of the race in the Rochdale LGV number 14. Craig Reed in second. Look at David Jenkins at the outside. Oh, they lead on each other. Bradley Smith was the big loser there, along with Simon Reed. David Jenkins got through into third place. There's more pushing and shoving between uh, the 46 and the number three of Stephen Powell. We look back, there's Ryan Smith. Now he's got more damage. He's been held up behind uh, Tom O'Rourke in the early stages. More bodywork hanging off the number one. He's ahead of O'Rourke. Now he's got to get ahead of these two. They're still side by side down towards uh, Agostini. Look how close they are heading down to the left-hander as David Jenkins pushes his way up the inside of Craig Reed into second place. Then it's Michael Oliver, Simon Reed, Stuart Oliver, and those two still side by side. Ryan Smith is in ninth position, so he's lost a place off the line. Bradley Smith finally gets ahead of Stephen Powell. The 46 machine gets ahead. The two drivers from Kent. It's John Bowler with a clear lead. He's made a cracking start. A great first lap here from the number 14, the man from Stockport near Manchester. As Ryan Smith makes a move there at Murray's, goes through up into uh, P8 as they come across the stripe for the first time. See the rain on the camera lens at Palmer's. The rain is starting to come down now. Let's uh, hope the drivers uh, just take it carefully. Well, David Jenkins, oh, and Michael Oliver isn't. He's hit the back of Craig Reed. He's going to slide into him. Wallop. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. We saw that coming uh, as they slid down into the left-hander there. And Michael Oliver's going to be out of the race by the look of things. Just a little bit over-exuberant there as the uh, track started to 
dampen, and that's end of game for Michael Oliver. Well, that's given uh, Ryan Smith a couple of spots. He's got ahead of Bradley Smith as well. As John Bowler defends his leads a little bit sideways, it is a little slippy on the run into the hairpin. You can see there he got the uh, rear end slightly sideways. And here comes David Jenkins, the man from Stafford, all over the back of him in the digraph. Morris Lubricants MAF. Absolutely nose to tail. David Jenkins, can he finally take his first win of the 2023 British Truck Racing Championship? Bowler defending. Jenkins weaving about all over the place. Up the inside. He's got the inside line for Agostini. Can he get the truck stopped in time? He forces his way down the inside. He did this to Craig Reed earlier. Takes the lead. Coming out of Agostini for the first time this year, really, that uh, David Jenkins has established himself properly at the front of a race. See the conditions worsening, the wiper going on the 69 truck. Through Murray's, it's still Jenkins from John Bowler. What a great drive this is by John Bowler. His first season in Division One. He had a win in that short race at Thruxton. Oh, Craig Reed with some damage there. He's missing a tyre off the back axle. That'll be where uh, Michael Oliver hit him earlier on. And the chequered flag has come out early, in fact. So the chequered flag came out early. We didn't see it there because we were watching uh, Craig Reed, but the race has come to an early conclusion there. A couple of laps from home. The win has gone to David Jenkins, his first win of the season. I wonder why the rear horn's going off there. So David Jenkins has won it, and Paul Rivette wins Division 2, so uh, catching me a bit off guard there, apologies there. David Jenkins takes the win, so recovery in uh, attendance, you can see in the background for Michael Oliver's truck. But uh, the result confirmed, David Jenkins the winner by just over two seconds ahead of John Bowler, excellent drive by both of them. Simon Reid completes the podium, and then Stuart Oliver holding off Ryan Smith for fourth place. Bradley Smith in sixth ahead of Stephen Powell, and Ricky Collin got past Tom O'Rourke, Ricky will have pole position for race five later on. Tom O'Rourke in ninth, Paul Rivette in tenth, wins division two, and he finished ahead of uh, Craig Evans by just over one and a half seconds. Adam Bintz was next home in twelfth uh, overall. Neil Yates, a good result in thirteenth, ahead of Simon Cole, Craig Reed, Jim Bennett, John Powell completing the finishers. The only retirement, Michael Oliver, after that incident, and he tangled with Craig Reed. Mr Jenkins, sir, we spoke a couple of times yesterday, didn't we? And each time you said you were looking for something. Let's be honest, you can't get better than first place. I think you found it, sir. Yeah, no great start to the day. The boys worked hard with me overnight, just left me alone to do some thinking and they've done some spanner in and, uh, and we've done a great job this morning. Absolutely incredible. You did a great job out there as well. I mean, we saw the restart, obviously that mixed things up a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, luckily you didn't get tussled up in that early damage of Ricky Collett spinning off into Ryan Smith. I thought, I bet I thought he was race was over then. Yeah, no, I heard about it all going on behind. Fortunately, I didn't see it. So, um, <coughs> no, really, really pleased. And, um, you know, it's just great to be back here on the top step. We, you know, we've, we do deserve it. We work really hard. And thanks so much to my sponsors and my family, Morris Lubricants Digraph and, and my long suffering team and family. And a special thanks to the boys and girls at home watching. Well, well, not quite the uh, straightforward race we were hoping for. We loads. OK, good to catch up with the action from last time out uh, here at uh, Snetterton. We're back here in South Wales. Good afternoon, race fans, and welcome back to Pembroke here on BARC TV. Still plenty of races to come. We've got another six races coming up for you. Next up will be the... Uh, Pickup Truck Racing Championship. They had a rather crazy race earlier on today. Matt Simpson crossing the line in first place, but a track limits penalty dropping him back to third behind David, G behind uh, Dale Gent, I should say, and Chris Brockhurst. There'll be another 20 minute race coming up for them. Then we'll have our classic car parade following that. So uh, let's hear from some of the drivers in the uh, Pickup Truck Racing Championship. They were talking to you and Dunlop earlier on. So here we are ahead of race two this weekend in the pickups. Um, Reese, we knew race one was going to be exciting. We didn't anticipate that. Uh, your views on it? Yeah, no, none of us anticipated it. I think um, a few people are uh, needing to get to the front really quick for some reason. But yeah, so yeah, we'll see. Um, talk to us about, we can see damage here, damage at the front as well. But you carried on and you actually got at one point of the fastest lap too. So 
under all this superficial damage, car okay? Yeah, it seems all right. It's chassis damaged, but we've done the best we can with what we've got, and the boys have done a good job, so we'll have a go. And finished ninth place, so fought back from the back of the grid up to ninth, so still got points on the board. Still leading the championship, but it's incredibly tight now. Yeah, it is tight now. It's uh, unfortunate, and I just, yeah. We've done a tyre, I don't know, we'll see. The, the incident itself, can we ask, what was your opinions on that? Well, it looks like it's two potentials. Um, I've seen a few videos, but it looks like either Dale hit me or, or Paul Tonkin, so, yeah. Gonna come out fighting race two? Oh yeah, we'll be definitely fighting. Oh, we can't wait, good luck. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. I uh, appreciate his time there. Now let's go and speak to uh, one of the drivers on the grid, but this was the chat we wanted. It's going to be fiery in race two, I think. Now, one of the lovely stories we've heard this weekend is fantastic. Aaron Thompson um, has had a little boy, Lenny, him and his partner. And Dad Steve, fantastic racing driver in his own right, by the way. Not just here, just to pick up the car. Um, you're taking Steve's car for a ride this weekend. First of all, first race in pickups in 18 years. Yeah. First race for a couple of seasons. You look pretty good. Hey, it's, it's, they are a handful. <laughs> uh, Getting used to a rear wheel drive car again, especially this length with the drift in it, it takes some getting used to. So these lads have been at it all season yeah. for about five years. So, yeah. no, just as long as it's like a Wally and myself, I was happy to uh, just have a go this weekend. And uh, the most important thing, the whole weekend so far we've seen you, smile on your face. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's all good fun. Yeah. But yeah, on the first lap, I lost the clutch and I thought, <laughs> oh, that, that's not really a good start to it. But it, no, we mustered on through. It, that's not an excuse, by the way. I'm just a poor driver. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was yeah, it's good fun. Um, it really was. Can, can we expect to see you back more regularly? No. 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 I'd, <laughs> I'd, you react when you're getting older. Your reactions are slower, and it's yeah. I've done my time. I've raced for many, many years, and getting getting the enjoyment throughout the years with Aaron with his racing has been great, but. Unfortunately, this is our last season, okay. so we'll be doing brands. Uh, he's got two young kids now, so it's becoming more and more difficult. But never say never. I mean, when you're going around the track and you you are fighting Reese coming through at the end as well. There, is there a bit of a fire that says I've still got this? There always is. And anyone that's done racing, there's always a little fire in their belly that I'll get you back. I'll have yeah. you. <laughs> I'll just I'll just watch you make a mistake and I'll nip up the inside again. But no, it's, yeah, they, they, everyone who's ever raced has always got that little, yeah, little devil inside them. That... Uh, good luck for race two and congratulations as no, well. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Brilliant. Uh, right, let's go pick up track racing for the second time today. Championship is on the line. Thanks, Ewan. Good to hear from Grandad Thompson. Back out for the first time in 18 years this weekend. So six races still to come. The pickup trucks coming up in uh, a few minutes time. Just enjoying a slightly extended lunch break here at the moment. Give our marshals a chance to uh, have a break and our camera crews as well. After that, we've got the classic car parade and then our penultimate truck race of the weekend before we have a title decider, the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. We've uh, been through the points permutations over the lunch break. Will it be Steve McDermott or Will Sharp who take the overall title? We'll wait and see. The finale for the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship is up after that. Then the pickup trucks have their third race. It's the aggregate of the first two races that determine the grid for that one. But again, with the top six flipped around. And then a finale for the trucks to round off the programme before they head into their season finale, which is coming up at Brands Hatch on Bonfire weekend. We'll uh, await the pickups onto the grid fairly shortly. While we have this extended lunch break, um, we uh, did cut away for our interviews earlier on from the Snetterton action, but uh, we'll take a look at the last truck race from the Norfolk venue, just while we await the pickups. Live of the British Truck Racing Championship here at Snetterton, the grid reads like this. It's Ricky Collins in pole position in the number 95 MAN alongside Stephen Powell. Second row Bradley and Ryan Smith. Ryan will start as the favourite from there, I'm sure. 
Row three, Stuart Oliver and Simon Reid. Then on row four, John Bowler and earlier winner David Jenkins. The uh, reverse of race three, the top eight from race three results set the grid for this one. Completing the top ten, Tom O'Rourke and Neil Yates, although Neil will start from the back as a uh, newcomer. And then we've got Craig Reid and Michael Oliver. Hopefully Craig is there after his uh, problems earlier on. Then there's a gap and we've got Division 2. John Powell starts at the front of Division 2 in the DAF alongside Jim Bennett, Simon Cole and Adam Bintz, and then Craig Evans and Paul Rivette round out the grid. The revs are up. Red lights are on. Final truck action of the weekend here at Snetterton gets underway. Now. Power comes on and they're away. Good start by Stephen Powell from the outside of the front row. The number three, John Powell, leads away in Division 2. What's going to happen as they get into uh, the first corner? Out Riches, Bradley Smith still on the inside. John Bowler has a look up the inside. They're all just about going to make it round in Division 1. Division 2 behind them. Good start by John Powell. Good start by Simon Cole as well. Tom O'Rourke getting a bit sideways in the 86. We ride on board with Simon Cole. Away in second place in Division 2. Ricky Collins, I think, uh, no, Stephen Powell, sorry, has held his lead into the hairpin. The two yellow MANs. Ryan Smith is on their tail, snapping at the back of uh, Ricky Collett there for second place. Side by side for fourth. That's a brave move up the inside by Simon Reed on Stuart Oliver at Palmer. He gets through. Not the best of starts for Bradley Smith. He's lost a couple of places in the 46. Behind him is David Jenkins. As they charge their way down towards Agostini. Stuart Oliver's in behind uh, Simon Reed in fifth position. David Jenkins trying to make a move on Bradley Smith. John Bowler behind them. Then Michael Oliver, Tom O'Rourke. John Powell leads Division 2 ahead of Cole, Bintz, Rivette, Evans. There's Neil Yates and Jim Bennett at the back. Everybody round the first few corners OK then. This final race of the weekend here at Snetterton. Just being kicked up there by Simon Reed, among others. It is... Uh, Stephen Powell looking for the second Division 1 win of his career. Multiple Division 2 champion. Ryan Smith getting through on the inside. Collett went wide at Oggies and Ryan Smith threw into P2. Now, how long is it going to take him to catch the man from Kent? Will he get the move done before the turn into Riches? He won't get round the outside there, I don't think, on the turn. And the MAN will just about hold the lead on the inside. You really get the sensation of the speed there as they charge into that right-hander. But Ryan Smith's got the cut back on the exit there. He'll go for the inside into the Wilson hairpin. He's surely going to get through here. Onto the brakes they go for Wilsons. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Here's the battle in Division 2. It's John Powell currently leading the Division 2 pack. This is Adam Bintz ahead of his great rival Paul Rivette. We're on board with Simon Cole, who's behind these two, and uh, Rivette on the inside. This is coming through towards Oggies and then Williams. Bint holds him off through the infield loop and out towards the uh, Bentley straight where the speed mounts up to 100 miles an hour. Simon Cole in P4 in Division 2. Lost a couple of spots on the first lap. Down the straight they go towards the bridge. Can Paul Rivette pull ahead on the outside of Adam Bintz? Yes, he can. Big rivalry developing between these two this season. Paul Rivette, the new sensation of truck racing, moving across from saloon cars. It's Neil Yates' recovery, based uh, down in Kent. It was great to see some of his uh, huge American recovery vehicles on display at Convoy in the Park at Donington. John Newell, uh, the European truck racing driver, had some of his uh, vintage fleet of trucks on display there as well. see John racing back in the UK at Donington contesting the FIA European Truck Racing Championship this year as is Mark Taylor number 81. Mickey Collins still resisting the pressure as is John Powell for the lead of Division 2 looking for his second win of the weekend as he keeps up his championship challenge. Here comes Simon Reid. He knows he's quicker than Ricky Collett, he just can't get the line away from him. Collett wants his first podium of the year. The best he's had this year is a sixth place. Paul Rivets, he's never going to go around the outside as Agostini, for sure. He won't get the struggle to do that in a car, never mind a truck, but Paul Rivets going to have a go. Nope, goes out wide over the curb, he keeps his foot in. He keeps his foot in, he's going for it. Look at this. It's Hamilton though, John Powell gets the line, keeps the lead. We concentrate for now on the battle DAF against MAN. And there's contact as they go into uh, Agostini. See, that's damaged the uh, rear bodywork on John Powell's truck. 
certainly head out of Agostini. Still, Rivet keeps up the pressure. Division one leaders will shortly be taking the chequered flag. There is Ryan Smith up towards Corum. Nobody within sight of him. There's the battle for second. Still Ricky Collins soaking up the pressure from Simon Reed. Pick up Division 2 again in uh, just a moment. But it's going to be four out of five for Ryan Smith. Continuing his march towards an eighth consecutive British Truck Racing Division 1 title. Win number 15 of the season for Ryan Smith. Total dominance. Four out of five here at Snetterton. I'm sure if... Uh, the uh, third race this weekend had gone a little longer, he would have been on the podium there as well. Still the Division 2 battle goes on, I can tell you Stephen Powell has taken second. Ricky Collett gets his first podium of the year, holding off Simon Reid. But now it's all about Division 2. Can John Powell hang on? Paul Rivette's going for it, look at this, up towards Corum, he's got the inside line. Coming out of the bomb hole, Bam Powell got sideways, Rivette's going through. Right in the last couple of corners, Paul Rivette takes the lead from John Powell. Into Murray's, can John Powell get him back on the run to the line? I don't think he can. Oh, John Powell will be so frustrated. Paul Rivette bringing himself right into title contention this weekend. And he's going to snatch win number four of the weekend. Rivette wins it on the last corner virtually ahead of John Powell. And Adam Mint will take third in Division 2. We'll confirm the rest of the results in a moment. Great battle to right to the end there in Division 2 to round off the weekend. But there is one man in a different league here at Snetterton this weekend, lapping two seconds a lap quicker than everyone else in that last race, flying Ryan Smith. We'll check out the provisional result then of our final British truck race of the weekend. Ryan Smith, the winner by nearly 14 seconds in the end over Stephen Powell and getting the fastest lap of the race by uh, nearly two clear seconds as well. Powell second, well done Ricky Collett, a fine third place holding off Simon Reid all the way. Stuart Oliver in fifth, ahead of David Jenkins, Bradley Smith and Michael Oliver with John Bowler and Tom O'Rourke completing the top ten. Paul Rivette snatching the Division 2 win, just two corners from home from John Powell and Adam Bint, Craig Evans. Behind them was Neil Yates in the final Division 1 finisher. 16th place for Simon Cole and 17th for Jim Bennett. Craig Reed sadly a non-starter. Another fantastic, phenomenal result for Ricky Collin. Look at that, hey! Eh? Just in yeah. case you've forgotten, you just got a podium in that race. Race? Race, yeah. What, what race? <laughs> oh, I've been told by someone going by the name Lancashire Hot Pot to call you a Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, Do you know well, what I'm about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all I can say is 1-0. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky, honestly, we were on the edge of our seats the whole race. I'll tell you what, Simon was pushing and pushing. Well done, Rick. If you don't make a mistake, yeah, then there's nowhere to pass. That's you know, it, that's it. And, and Ricky so made it stiff. Well, my eyes was kicked in and everything, you know what I mean? Spot on, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, brilliant. 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 It really is a great way to finish the weekend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we know we've not had any serious incidents that last race. Everyone's come out with big smiles. I think it's been a really great way to, to finish uh, Snetterton, hasn't it? It has, yeah, yeah. Going home with a bit of silk, well, gold wear. Gold wear? Oh, that'll no, do it. Yeah. Come on. Gold, come on yes. Solid gold. So, uh, I don't know, I've not bitten it, but well, I'll, yeah, yeah, if you're telling me it is. Check the teeth. That's Check it. the teeth Check marks. Check the teeth marks, that's it. Are you, are you happy about that, Sean? Yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> go on, go and see her. Get in there, Ricky. Go on. Oh, that's, oh, this is what it's all about. The celebrations. Well, there we go. It's been an exciting weekend here at Snetterton with just two more race meetings left of the 2023 season. I've certainly enjoyed myself. We've seen some fantastic racing action, but that is unfortunately all we've got time for. So it's thank you very much to all of you that have viewed and of course all of our fantastic sponsors and of course the BTRC and Trucksport UK. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from him. And a goodbye from him. Goodbye.
Good to uh, see some more highlights from Snetterton, and uh, we're out ready to resume racing here at Pembrey in South Wales. The Pickup Truck Racing Championship out on track for their second race of the day. The pace car just leading them away for the rolling start. This will be a 20 minute race and in pole position is number five Dan Fisher for I believe the first time in his pickup truck racing career. This grid set by the second half of qualifying earlier on in the weekend but with the top six again flipped around. Alongside Dan Fisher is Paul Tompkins number 12. Second row 89 Chris Brockhurst and the 83 of Dale Gents our earlier winner. Row three, number 40, Rhys Jones, the front end of his truck patched up, alongside number 30, Matt Simpson. Row four, 24, Ryan Hadfield, and 72, Alan Cooper. Row five, 21, Dean Tompkins, and 29, of Tom Hutchins. Row six, 68, Eric Bolton, a retirement in race one, alongside number 13, Richard Ayling. The final row, 25, Russell Smith, and number four, Steve Thompson. We are missing a couple of trucks from earlier on, Mark Willis and uh, Simon Ward withdrawing after picking up some damage in that first lap tangle up at Brooklands with Rhys Jones. 14 trucks out there then for a 20 minute race. A couple of trucks we are missing, uh, we don't have James Goldstraw number 52 and also as Stephen Fishburn has noted in our YouTube comments, that's a name I remember from Brisker F2 a few years ago, we don't have 93 Michael Smith and Stephen tells us that it's the first pickup truck meeting that Michael has missed in 17 years. That is quite a remarkable run by Michael Smith, the man from the North East, but he's not here this weekend. We also don't have Neil Tressler, number 37, the Isuzu body truck. All the others, Ford and Vauxhall trucks, as you can see. And it's Dan Fisher, number five, the man from Botner Regis on the south coast, who's on pole. And alongside him, number 12, Paul Tompkins. He's had a few wins on the Rocky and Oval in the past. Let's see if he can win here in South Wales. 20 minutes of pickup truck racing championship action coming your way. Let's hope it's not as uh, crazy as it was in race number one earlier this morning. Dale Gent was the winner on that occasion, blowing the title race wide open. Here we go then, down towards Hatchet's Hairpin. Now remember they don't uh, fully start racing until they get to the exit of the hairpin section just to avoid any huge schmozzle as they go into the hairpin for the first time. They just keep things under control, keep their two by two formation. The race has officially started, but they don't properly unleash until they get towards the crossing. Now the power starts to come on. Here we go. And Paul Tompkins it is who goes into the lead. Trying to go through the middle is Chris Brockers. Dan Fisher's gone onto the grass, so the pole sit has gone backwards. And there's a spin there. Matt Simpson's lost it. Round goes the number 30. He's heading for the rallycross course. So is Dan Fisher. Uh, Ryan Hadfield has slowed up as well by the look of it in the 24 truck. So delaying the start of the race by a few corners didn't quite have the desired effect. It's Paul Tompkins who leads the way in the number 12 as they head down Speedway straight for the first time. Second place is the 83 of Dale Gents. Third place is Chris Brockhurst and Reese Jones. You can see the uh, sticking plasters applied to his truck after the earlier incidents at Brooklands in race one. He's up there in fourth. Eric Bolton trying to make a move there down the inside on Tom Hutchins and he goes through. That's up into seventh position. They cross the line for the first time. Let's have a look again at that uh, first incident. So Dan Fisher got out wide onto the grass, but Matt Simpson just ahead. Was there contact there with Reese Jones? Very slight, I think. And Simpson around. Now, let's see him fight his way back up the order. He's at the tail of the field at the moment. This is the battle at the sharp end. Paul Tompkins leads the way in truck number 12. He's getting away ahead of Dale Gents. He's got Reese Jones on his tail. Chris Brockhurst is in fourth position, then it's Alan Cooper in P5. Dean Tompkins up to P6, retired from the race earlier on. Up on the kerb there, Chris Brockhurst. We're seeing a fair bit of kerb hopping there at Brooklands over the course of this weekend. The lead gap was just under 0.7 of a second last time through. Let's see what Tompkins has uh, eaten it out to this time, because he looks like he's uh, going clear of Dale Jens here. Across the stripe they go to start lap three. Yes, nearly one and a half seconds now the lead for Paul Tompkins. Up to third is Rhys Jones. He's got ahead of Chris Brockhurst. Here comes Alan Cooper on the seven, in the 72. 
Slightly more calm start. Cooper just slips the back of Chris Brockhurst there, coming through towards Spitfires. Reese Jones all over the back of his arch rival, Dale Jett. Reese looking to retain his title this year. Through the left hander at the crossing. On towards Senna. Matt Simpson has done the fastest lap, 103.92 on his recovery. After that spin, he's down in 13th place. The race. He's got ahead of Russell Smith. One of the newcomers up the inside, Reese Jones takes second place into Brooklands. Good move there by the defending champion up into P2. Now here comes Dean Tompkins in the white truck attacking Alan Cooper further back. That's for fifth position. Has he made it through? No, he hasn't. Behind them, Eric Bolton in the grey, number 68. Then Hutchins, Fisher and Ailing round out the top ten. Don't forget the results of the first two races determine the grid for race three. Dan, Dan Fisher, I thought, was going to spin into the pit wall there. He nearly lost it. Thompson's up to 10th, then Hadfield ailing, Simpson 13th, and uh, Russell Smith the final runner, because, of course, Mark Willis and uh, Simon Ward didn't take the start. Dan Fisher is trying to keep it on the island after a very fraught opening couple of laps. There's Steve Thompson. First pickup races in 18 years, substituting for his son Aaron. He became a dad, as we heard uh, earlier this week, when son Lenny arrived. Alan Cooper up on the inside, trying to take fourth place away from Chris Brockhurst at Brooklands. Side by side, down the speedway straight, absolutely together. And he's done. Cooper goes through. Now here comes Dean Tompkins in the 21. He wants to make up for lost points after a retirement in the first race. Goes for the inside on Brockhurst. Is he going to make it through into the pit straight and the run down to the hairpin? This is going to be interesting on the brakes. I think Tompkins has got the overlap there. Depends who breaks latest. Can Brockhurst hang on around the outside? He's trying to. Eric Bolton tucked in behind them. They're still together, still side by side, through towards Spitfires. But Tompkins has got the inside there. But Brockhurst got the inside for the next corner. They bounce off each other. Brockhurst goes back ahead. Great fight here for that fifth position. And now Eric Bolton getting involved as well. He's going to try and go through. Well, Dean Tompkins thought he'd gained a place. And instead, he's lost two and he hits Bolton. They almost went off there at Senna. Tompkins making sure he kept the inside line. And he's back ahead of the 68s. Eric Bolton, the former saloon car racer, has raced Ford Fiestas, among other things, in his time. Behind them, Tom Hutchins in the 29, the ex-George Tariki truck is in P8. Fisher is ninth, Ryan Hadfield in the ex-Hunt family truck in 10th. Readers over the line, Paul Tompkins still leads, just ahead of Reese Jones, but the gap is coming down. The Dayglow Pink at number 40. On the back of the former World Banger Racing Champion now. earlier it was only last night that the 2023 edition of that event was held in Ipswich. Rhys Jones has a look on the inside going towards the crossing up towards Senna can he get the overlap here on the outside yes he can excellent move by Rhys Jones to take the lead and the outside on the entry to Senna that's not a move you see very often here at Pembroke and now Jones will try and put as much distance between himself and the rest of the pack because he knows Dale Gents is there in P3 his championship rival. First two going clear. Paul Tompkins ready to fight back. Sundin still there in sixth. Across the line they go. Jones from Tompkins, then Gents. Alan Cooper still there in fourth place. He's going well. Had a couple of wins on the Mallory Park. One mile oval in Leicestershire. The only oval raceway currently visited by the pickups with the closure of Rockingham sadly a few years ago the banked NASCAR star one and a half mile over the pickups were so so spectacular around there lapping at almost 150 miles an hour it was an honor to uh, be in the commentary box on many occasions for those it's Cooper fourth Brockers fifth Tompkins still under fire from Bolton there's Russell Smith the number 25 that's the ex Paul Jones number 82 truck Paul Jones, the uh, former two-litre hot rod racer. Russell Smith, a newcomer this year. Back of this group, Dan Fisher having a go at Tom Hutchins. 
Matt Simpson is back up into P10 now. He's got ahead of Ryan Hadfield. Fighting back from that first lap spin. The other brothers behind them, Thompson, Ailing, and Russell Smith. Speaking of Ailing, is that Dale Gent slowing down? I think it is. He's had a few mechanical problems this year. The 83 is out of him. Disaster for Dale Gents. Good fortune in race one to inherit the win, but he's out of this race. He said he had a half shaft snap at the uh, last round. I wonder if that's happened again. Pulls over on the grass on the outside of the pit straight. His race is done. So that's given Alan Cooper third place. Brockhurst is up to fourth. Dean Tompkins fifth. And Zerig Bolton behind him. He's in sixth position. This is the battle for P7, Hutchins and Fisher. That's given Matt Simpson ninth place. And that is certainly going to be mu music to Rhys Jones' ears because uh, it's going to redress the balance again. Rhys Jones was spun down the order at the start of race one, had to fight his way back into the midfield as Dale Gent got the win. This time it's uh, Gent out of the race and Jones is leading. Three quarters of a second clear of Paul Tompkins. A yellow flag. I thought there was going to be a yellow flag out at uh, the start finish line. I can't see one at the Marshals post in the background there. But maybe Gents got away. There is Dale Gents. He is gutted. Cannot believe it. There's Alan Cooper. He can believe it. After a wild ride in race one, he could be on for a podium here. Coming up towards half distance in this second of three races for the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. Chris Brockhurst, a good consistent run. He's there in fourth. Still Dan Fisher hounding Tom Hutchins in the 29. This is the fight for seventh position. There's Simpson, the white truck, in the background. Can he catch this group? Let's look at his lap times. Now he's lapping only a few tenths of a second quicker than the uh, men ahead of him, so he's closing, but very, very slowly. Very, very evenly matched these pickup trucks. The fastest lap of the race done by Reese Jones, 103.182. the crossing. Jones has got the lead up to nearly one and a half seconds now. They're three seconds clear of Alan Cooper in turn. Now we see the leader going through in the background. Out towards the back of the circuit in the sunshine of South Wales. A slightly more calm affair certainly than race one. So maybe pickups for to Sonny Howard gave the drivers a bit of a talking to, telling them just to calm things down a little. There's a fair amount of contact, it has to be said, in the first race. And bearing the scars of it is Rhys Jones. Now from Hearn Bay in Kent leads the way. Gap up to 1.8 seconds now, so he's pulling away slowly but surely from Paul Tompkins. Berkshire driver in second place. Alan Cooper in third. It's from Huntingdon near Peterborough. Rhys Jones, you can see he's pulling away from Paul Tompkins quite considerably now. Mentioned uh, Michael Smith absent today. He's uh, attending a family wedding, we've been told, so that's the reason for his first absence in 17 years. Best wishes to Michael Smith's daughter, who's uh, getting married today. Thanks to Stephen Fishburne. Certainly remember him rolling his Brisker F2 at Northampton uh, the European weekend a few years ago. I was in the box for that one. I wonder if we'll see Stephen Fishburne out in a pickup someday. Dan Fisher now pulling ahead of 
Tom Hutchins. He's taken P7, pulling away from Tom Hutchins in the X. George Tricky to Ricky truck. And Fisher switched to racing number 52 earlier this season in tribute to, I believe, his grandfather, Alan Fisher, who passed away earlier this year. And Cooper still ahead of Brockhurst. There's Dean Tompkins. There's Eric Bolton going well in P6, one of the leading newcomers this year. There's the number 13. That is Richard Ayling. He's down in P12 at the moment. About three seconds. About um, 16 seconds, sorry, off Steve Thompson. So he's dropped quite a way behind. A little bit of a twitch there for Chris Brocker as he tries to chase down Alan Cooper for P3. 13 trucks still running. Of course, we sadly lost Dale Gents earlier on with some mechanical maladies. The leader has lapped Russell Smith in the number 25. You can see the lead gap increasing all the time. Paul Tompkins losing nearly half a second a lap at the moment to our race leader, Rhys Jones. So whether he's got uh, some sort of a problem, I'm not sure. Here comes Brocker, still all over the back now of the 72. Honda curve, Tompkins Jr. catching up, Tompkins Sr. laps Russell Smith, and the lead gap is down to three seconds, he's lost another couple of tenths there, Paul Tompkins. Rhys Jones still with the quickest lap of the race, 103.182. Definitely closing on these two now. Because the harder they fight each other, the more time they'll lose. Cooper's last lap was a 105. That's maybe because he had to get past the back marker. Chris Brockers gets through as well. His last lap was a 104.7. Tompkins did a 104.3, so he's definitely closing up. He's up onto the tail of Brockhurst. Now he's got past the back marker. Liking the banter in the YouTube comments at the moment. You mentioned uh, Stephen Fishburne. <laughs> Someone else said Stephen's the only person I know who attempts to win F2 race, race crossing the line on his roof. Yes, I remember the big smash he had at Northampton. It was a pretty nasty one on the back straight. He says, I wouldn't have any panels left on the truck by the end of one of these races. <laughs> Meanwhile, our battle for third is intensifying. This is Cooper, Brockhurst and Dean Tompkins. And Brockhurst will get his uh, wheel onto the grass there. But he's got his nose down the inside. Has he missed his braking point, though? No, he gets the truck stopped. Oh, he slid wide on the exit, though, but he's got the move done. Good move by Brockhurst up into P3. Now, can Dean Tompkins in the white truck do the same thing? to Alan Cooper. Alan Cooper, who's uh, raced Brisker F2 as well. Also won a few titles in Reliant Robins, believe it or not, on the short ovals. Could he lose out here to Dean Tompkins? He's got his nose down the inside. No, he hasn't. Cooper's going for the outside. Is that a wise move? Because Tom Tompkins is trying to go underneath both of them. He's got the overlap on Cooper, who just went a bit too wide there. Tompkins now having a go for third place. Wants to make up for that retirement in race one and join his father on the podium. Great scrap between these three. Meanwhile, at the head of the field, Jones now leads by 2.7 seconds. These three, four and a half seconds back. Eric Bolton just behind them in P6. There's the grey truck behind, then Dan Fisher, Tom Hutchins. It's under three minutes of this race to go for the pickup truck racing championship. It's Rhys Jones setting the pace. Almost three seconds clear of Paul Tompkins. The 
pendulum will swing back the other way in terms of the championship here. Earlier on, we saw Gent take the win, and Jones down the order after that uh, incident at Brooklands. And now Gent's out of the race, and Jones, barring a disaster, is going to take the win. Again, Dean Tompkins all over the Everyman Garage truck of 89. Chris Brockhurst, the Dave Longhurst run machine. It's back in 2003. Was it really 20 years ago that Dave Longhurst was world hot rod champion? It is Mitsubishi Colt at Ipswich. That Mitsubishi Colt still racing in the uh, classic and modern motorsport club's uh, Super Silhouette series. Phil Young now owns it. On the inside, here comes Tompkins. Could he get a run here down Speedway straight on Chris Brockhurst? Not quite. Brockhurst holds the line. Cooper still there in P5 in the 72. Sideways there for Brockhurst going into Honda Kerr. Eric Bolton behind in sixth. League gap is coming down. Little two and a half seconds now. Between Tompkins and Jones. Tompkins Senior, that is. Up the outside comes Dean Tompkins. Cooper tries to cut to the inside. He's got to attack and defend at the same time here, the 21. Through the crossing. Brockhurst actually pulls away a little bit there in a straight line. But in the turns, it looks like Tompkins is the stronger and closes back up a bit. Further back, there's Steve Thompson. Where's he running? P11 in the number four. It's about six and a half seconds behind Ryan Hadfield. Clear in turn of Richard Ailing by a considerable margin. It's like we are now into the last lap. Lead gap has increased to 3.3 seconds. It's all about the battle for third place. Here comes Dean Tompkins. Can he attack on this final lap to take a podium place? He's got to be mindful that Cooper's trying to do the same thing. I don't think they're going to catch Reese Jones. He's heading for victory. A bit of bump drafting there. Dean Tompkins and Chris Brockhurst. It's going to allow Cooper in. Not quite. Through the crossing for the last time. Up front, it's going to be Reese Jones who takes the win ahead of Paul Tompkins. Chris Brockhurst defending that third position vigorously here. And Dean Tompkins go underneath him down into Brooklands for the final time. Meanwhile, here comes Reese Jones. Pick up the third place battle in a second, but it's going to be a win for Jones. Making up for that incident, which dropped him back in race one. No problem in race two for the pickup truck racing championship. For reigning champion, Reese Jones, he takes the win. Paul Tompkins, Winkle will come over in second. And who's going to be third? Four of them line astern now. It's going to be Chris Brockers, just ahead of Dean Tompkins. Fifth is Alan Cooper, sixth Eric Bolton, Dan Fisher will take seventh, then Hutchins, Matt Simpson only able to climb to ninth after his first lap spin. Ryan Hadfield will round out the top ten. And it'll be Steve Thompson further back in 11th, ahead of Richard Ailing and Russell Smith. Congratulations to uh, Reese Jones, the man from the Kent Coast, who takes the win. Increasing his lead on the final up to uh, nearly four and a half seconds over Paul Tompkins. Chris Brockhurst gets another podium in third ahead of Dean Tompkins, who just failed to slipstream him on the run to the line. Alan Cooper right behind them. Eric Bolton sixth ahead of Dan Fisher, then Tom Hutchins, Matt Simpson and Ryan Hadfield completing the top ten. Steve Thompson in 11th, then Richard Ayling and Russell Smith completing the finishers. And sadly, we lost... Dale Gents after seven laps. The title pendulum swings the other way. We await the drivers to come into Park Ferme. Reese Jones will be very pleased indeed that the aggregate results of the two races we've seen determines the grid for the what's effectively the grand final later on, which will be the penultimate race of the day. And again, the top six in that uh, aggregate result will be flipped around, just to make things a bit more interesting. Reese Jones is in part for mate. We'll hand down to you in, in a moment.
Follow down and win a circle just to try the chance to get out of the car. our top three. Cheers, Dave. Well, unpredictable once again in the pickup trucks. Uh, we will try and find Dale Jens. In fact, I know where he is. He's still right over there at the moment with his car against the fence, unfortunately. Um, what a first two races. Dale Jens coming right back into it in race one. And now, blown wide open again with uh, Rhys Jones. He's going to have a lovely lead at the top of the standings. Now, let's have a chat with Chris. I'm gonna, do you want to come out or should we come in? <laughs> Go on, jump out the car. Um, Eighth in the championship coming into this weekend. That's a great result for you third, isn't it? Yeah, it is good. It's got some good points for us. We've had, we've had a couple of bad meetings. Uh, Donington and Lydon, we lost some good points there, which we were sixth, dropped to eighth. So it's nice to reclaim, reclaim some back. What was the uh, key to today's third place? Well, <laughs> it was no key, really. I mean, I've been to Donington a few times now and other formulas, so, so we sort of know the track quite well. Mm -hmm. um, didn't think we were going to be this strong, but, it, we, you know, we'll take that. It's, Absolutely. Yeah. Take a report you can get, mate. Well done. One more race to come today. Any changes at all? Uh, yeah, we might do some tweaks, see what the tyres are like once we've cleaned them up. Um, it gets about halfway through the race, the tyres, you can definitely feel start going. Yeah, so it's yeah. all about tyre management and sort of trying to save them to the end. Um, so you've got something to fight with. Cool. One step better, maybe. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> well done, mate. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Uh, we're going to jump in with Reese Jones. We'll come all the way round. We try and synchronise with the on-course commentator here as well to make sure we get the interviews at the right time. Uh, Reese, I'm going to jump in. Actually, get, get your bubbly stuff first of all, and then we'll have a quick chat. Um, so it was 110 points to start the day. Got down to about 30, 40 after that first race. Um, that is going to be bumped right up now, so a sizeable lead. We will go to Brandsatch. Nothing is going to be absolutely decided today, so plenty to play for. So got your bubbles, mate. Um, race one didn't go to plan. That one absolutely did. Yeah, I think driving angry a little bit so you <laughs> got plenty to go in you but yeah um you you call it angry your mum called you um a sulky sid um <laughs> earlier on today that was the atmosphere but uh, yeah. smiles now yeah it smiles now but look the truck's battered and uh, <laughs> well we didn't have a lot of time so we've just but, done it the best we can i mean it's superficial didn't affect the performance at all did it uh well we had some bent axle bars and bits and pieces that changed last minute uh, that we spotted uh, getting them all the right length okay. and making sure it's there where it needs to be but is the thing. clearly happy with it now bit of uh, was that today as well the damage yeah, on the windscreen today. yeah today yeah 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 uh, one more race to come just keep it as it is now Hopefully. Cool. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Uh, second place. Oh, where's second position gone? Got the car. Ah, here we are. What did you got? No, you can keep the top down if you like. Um, great result for you. Yeah, like, oh, like, hesitation. Like, well, no, like I said, Reese caught us up and just drove away, and that yeah. was the end. He's, uh, he's quite good, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's too bloody good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, fair play to him. Fair but play uh, to him. you're having a good season as well. I'm having a better season than I've had for a long time, so um, just to be where we are at the minute, uh, yeah, yeah. a bonus, yeah. And uh, warm day, tiring in those cars, isn't it? Very hot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very hot. Cool. Look, if a car dries a little bit, uh, you'd want it to dry. This is a lot better for you, but if a car's hard work, then you get double hot. Mate, what well a one more race to come as well. One more step, maybe. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Cheers, mate. Well done. Cheers, buddy. Uh, right, on our schedule, we actually going into a vintage parade now. We've got some beautiful cars here on track. But at Pembrey, every time we come here, there is a lovely display of vintage and sports and classic cars. It's a great place to be. So if you can't come down today and you're not here watching from home, most definitely, we come here twice again next year with BARC TV. I can thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. So the vintage parade coming up, and then we go back to the MG Owners Club Racing, where We've got Group F is all done and dusted. However, plenty to play for in the overall championship. That will be decided um, in the next race. So for the time being, back to Dave and the crew upstairs. Yes, thanks very much, Ewan. And, uh, well, look what we've got out on track now. What a, an eclectic mix of classics we've got coming out for our parade. I can see Jaguars down there. We've got a nice Jaguar E-Type, the cream-coloured car, a Toyota Celica soft top. Looks like a Mark II Cortina there, the uh, third car in parade, the blue car. Another Jaguar, a red, uh, it's either a Mark I or Mark II. Rare sight these days, a Mark IV Escort as well. Lovely Mercedes Coupe. A couple of Mercedes uh, Coupe, a drop top there, that's an SLK, I think. MGB V8. 
Beige car is a Rover P6. Very nice indeed. A VW Beetle. Mark 1 Golf GTI. Yes, please. One of the top hot hatches of all time. And we've got a Ford 100E. Very popular with hot rodders, those cars. As is the car behind it, the 105E Anglia. A 7 type of some sort. Well, that's a Caterham. one we can't quite see. I think it is. And we've got a Morgan. I think that might be a Welsh-built Sir Gilburn next in line. TVR, then the classic Mini Cooper. Is that a Mark 1 Ford Granada I spy? It certainly is. Not many of those about now. Most of them have been banger raced. Peugeot 205 GTI. Then we've got a Vauxhall Viva. And a nice Mini Clubman 1275. A few more behind the... Uh, Rescue vehicle as well. Let's get a close-up look at some of these. The E-Type, classic British GT car. The uh, Mark II Jaguar behind as well. Seen plenty of those being hurled around Goodwood earlier this season in the uh, Mike Hawthorne Jaguar Challenge. There's an Austin A40 Farina. Number of local motoring clubs here this weekend. Behind them, we've got a Saab. They're getting rare now. Toyota MR2 Roadster. We see quite a few of them racing on the UK circuits. The Welsh Dragon on display. That's uh, a Gilbert. One of Wales's very few car makers. More modern Mercedes behind. That, I think, is a Riley. Sure, I'm not so hot on pre-war cars, I'll, uh, I will admit. There's the TVR, that's uh, a 350, I think. Built in Blackpool. Morris Minor. Every classic show has at least one Morris Minor. Followed by a Reliant Scimitar. And there's an MG RV8, intended as one of the successors to the uh, MGB. Not so many of those about. Mark 1 Ford Capri, very beautiful indeed. Classic Rover P4. Another Morris Miner behind that, the Rover P4. A rather staid looking car. Triumph Stag with the V8 engine. Another Mark II Cortina. Whole column of British classics. Another Stag. And another Morgan, a plus eight. Mark II Escorts. That's the majority of Mark II Escorts that have survived are used in rallying. Another drop-top Mercedes. Chevrolet Corvette. What a variety we've got here. You can tell the favourites for our cameramen, can't you? Our camera operators picking their cars to follow. Beetle, Carmen Gear. Is that a Renault 18? When was the last time you saw one of them? The estate as well, very rare. It's a Honda, either a Civic or a Cord. I have to look up the registration numbers of these pre-war cars. I'm fairly sure the one at the front is a Riley RM, Austin Maxi, more Gilburns. I think the Gilburn Owners Club might be here. VW uh, Campervan, and then a couple of modern Fords, confusingly thrown in there. Although well, the Mark One Focus Estate is quite rare these days. I think we've got a display from uh, a local Ford club. Yes, looking at the number plates there. Focus, a couple of Focus STs. Mark 1 Focus ST as well. Next up is the way for the Austin 840. Lovely 205 GTI, another of the classic greats of hot hatches along with the Mark 1 Golf. Oh, Morris Minor van. Another Ford 100E. VW bus, split window. 
complete with surfboard on the roof. That's an MGF. We need that. We need that uh, out racing in the MG Owners Club. Mark III Capri. Another MGB. That's a pre-73 model without the big uh, black bumpers. Another one behind it, the GT version. A Vauxhall Nova. When was the last time you saw one of those? Last time I saw one was in Rallycross earlier this year. The Focus ST. Quite a few uh, fast forwards. A couple of Beetles. California look Volkswagen Beetle with the lowered front. Yep, the Caterham 7 there. Interesting single headlight conversion. And that's a Gilburn GT, the light blue car there, the Welsh built car. Gilburn Owners Club is here, I think. We've even got a vintage tractor out there. Look at that, a couple of them actually. <laughs> Could do with them pulling our. Uh, race trucks out when they get stuck in the mud. Quite a few classic tractors. Something a bit different to say the least. Cheated and looked up the reg number of our pre-war car there, that's a Lagonda. Very nice indeed. There's our VW Surf bus. You'll be heading down to the beach at Burry Force. Nice Morgan plus eight. Of course, the Morgan uh, Sports Car Club does still run the Morgan Challenge on the circuits. I see some clacks and horns going off in the background as well. We had a few more cars on parade yesterday, including an extraordinary uh, conversion of a Ford Thames van. This looked very impressive indeed. I'm hoping to see that out here again today. Let's see a uh, pre-war car there, a Riley RME. And then the various tractors. Our emergency vehicles, our rescue vehicles getting in on the acts as well. That's another Gilburn, the saloon version. Lovely to look at, isn't it? Full credit to all these uh, proud owners who have brought their Vehicles here today to show off, including our tractor drivers. I wonder if there's a Best in Show award for all of these. There's a Mark II Cortina. Prime Stag. More modern uh, Chevy Corvette out there. Jaguar XK8 as well. Seen a few of them racing. We'll see a few of those racing next weekend on our next live stream at Donington with the Jaguar Challenge. Robinson family will have theirs. Chris Boone might be out as well. Stephen Dowell will have his martini liveried one out. A Leyland tractor in Ford blue. It's a bit unusual. Only current tractors in that colour are Fords. Volkswagen Carmen gear. I think my favourite has to be that Renault 18 estate. I cannot remember the last time I saw a standard Renault 18, never mind the estate version. Must be very, very few of those left now. There's the Honda. The car you see there behind the uh, ambulance, that is a quantum kit car. So next time it comes up in a pub quiz, name a car manufacturer beginning with Q, there's your answer. 
I believe that's a Ford Escort underneath. I know Quantum made some cars based on Metros as well. What's going on here? One of our Ford Fanatics members has lost uh, something. Ah, his numbers fell off his, fo his Focus ST. A little bit different to what we saw at Pembrey a couple of years ago when we had the bus rides around the circuit. We nearly ended up with one joining the grip and the two CVs were lining up. Remember that? Long-time viewers of uh, BARC TV may recall when the bus missed the pit lane entrance. We have seen bus racing at uh, Northampton Stock Car Stadium in the past. Tractors heading off track. A plate, that's 1963. I would say that tractor's a bit older than that, though. So, uh, well done again to all our exhibitors out there. Is that James Bond dropping in? I know drones are popular these days, but I can promise you that's not one of our cameras. <laughs> That'll have come from the airfield next door. That's a uh, little gyrocopter. Lovely looking Morris Minor van. Many of them ended up in uh, Royal Mail colours under British Telecom as well. TJ Owens and Sons, the owners of that one. Perfect weather for a, a drive with the top down on your MGB Roadster. That Vauxhall Nova looks like it's been doing a bit of rallying or rally cross, such a mother mud down the side of it. Well, the Vauxhall Nova was the boy racer's choice at one time before the course that took over. Marshall's getting back into their posts then, so we will be going racing again soon with the British Truck Racing Championship. Let's go and see who Pointy's been catching up with while this classic car display's been going on. Thanks again to all our exhibitors. So, here we are. First time really speaking to John Bowler down here at Pembrey. How are you doing, John? Very well, thank you. How are you, Pointy? Very, very well. Now, before we get on to the serious matter of racing, I hear there's a tradition for the team bowler to go to a local curry shop when you get down here for Pembrey. Certainly is. We're, uh, we're lifelong members, I think. Lifelong members. Now, what is it about this particular curry house that's slightly different to all the others? There's one item on the, on the, on the little bowl, isn't there? There's uh, two items, actually. There's, Ooh. there's lime pickle and right. uh, some uh, magical little green sauce. Green uh, coconut. That's pickle. it, yeah. Fantastic. It Daz is. was telling me about it the other day and I was like, that does actually look quite exciting. Though. Yeah, and it normally gives us extra power for the morning racing. Extra power. I don't know. Where, well, we already run on bio diesel, so God knows where the extra power is coming from. <laughs> now, back to the racing hand. We've got two races left this weekend. But obviously we've had four races so far, so it's been a busy old weekend, hasn't it? It has, yeah. We've had uh, a couple of things up against us, but it's been uh, it's been interesting. The weather's here. nice down in Pembrey as well. I know, I can't believe the sunshine. What's going on with that? I think you must have brought it down from the north, would you right? Definitely came from Manchester. It wasn't a southern thing, not, not now, at all. Now, whereabouts are you starting on the grid for this race? Because we're all reverse grids now this afternoon, aren't we? So where, do you know where you are? Yeah, we're on pole this race. Oh! Ah, my prediction, my prediction, hold on. 
top three. There we go. <laughs> we'll stick with that. We'll stick with that. That's keep... as that's as vague as you get in that. Is... <laughs> yeah, keep the pedaling. That's the main thing. Keep pedaling. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I believe you uh, promised your team last time. Have you promised your team this time? Well, every day. I, I don't always keep up to my promises right. best I can. Well, well, last time we had the, the combination at Snetterton of you promising your team a trophy, me telling you you better stick to it, and then you coming back with a trophy. That was right, wasn't it? Should we try again? Let's try it again. You heard it here first. Sunday afternoon, we're in. The bets are made. John Bowler coming back with a trophy. Top three, definitely. Top three, definitely. Here we go. Good luck, John. Thank Happy you. days. Good talking to you. See, we did it at Snetterton. Do it again. I reckon it's a first. Big elbows, see it through till the end. At least until someone else crashes and they red flag it. So here we are with Simon Faulkner, Division 1 now. Simon, you're starting back of the grid for this reverse grid and uh, it's going to be a lot of work for you this afternoon. But one thing I've got to say is, you always seem so chipper to me and it's, it's so refreshing to see. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, you've just got to go with it, really. If you can get through the pack and come out the other side in one piece after the first corner here, as we all know, it's a um, yeah. challenge. It is a it's challenge. A challenge yeah. And you just sort of, you've got to be very wary. I you mean, know, I've seen Division know. 1 drivers. It's been a situation where just because you've managed to make it round the first corner means you've ended up with a trophy, let alone the fact of being high up the pack. Yeah, I'd say that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I think everybody should get a trophy that gets around first corner <laughs> without even touch. A yeah. participation medal. Yeah, to be fair, it's been not too bad. I know we've had a few red flags this weekend, but turn one hasn't been too bad. I don't think, have we had a red flag? On... We've, had, we, we've had a red flag every race so far, including practice and qualifying. However, however, none of them have been serious. We've had all sorts of drivers going off on the grass. There is a lot of debris on the track at the moment. A lot of drivers are telling me. A lot of drivers that haven't gone off as well. So you know it's probably honest. Um, and so that's causing a little bit of grip issue, I believe, in some of the corners. Uh, yes, yeah, the grass on the track isn't helping at all, especially around the back there. I'll be honest, I went off in the grass qualifying. Oh, did you? But I had a broken spring. Ah, I'll excuse. give you that I'll one. I'll give you that one. It's a good excuse. The spring decided to let go at 100 miles an hour around the back. Now, we also had a mid-race collision that we thought was going to call the race earlier than it did. Um, and then, of course, we had Neil Yates uh, tied up with, uh, with uh, Tom, Tom O'Rourke. And they were literally sat on the end of the pit straight on the hairpin. And we thought, oh, God, here comes Dave Jenkins, full speed. What's going to happen? And they literally just got moving in time. I did wonder what happened. Of course, you, as a driver, you don't always see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, and then you, every, know, you just see it get snarled up. I just see a pile of water, maybe some oil and stuff, and going, oh, what now? Yeah. What now? <laughs> what next, more like? What, what next? <laughs> what, what's around the next corner? There's a body panel. There's a body panel. And you've just, you've just got to be visual. And, and uh, right. now we're at Brands Hatch next. Obviously, we've still got two races, so a little bit of a fast forward. Uh, that's more your local circuit, isn't it, Brands? A bit closer for you? Yeah, hour and a half up the road. So, oh, nice. Froxton's number one. Brands Hatch is number two, so Brands Hatch is a nice little finish to the end of the year as well, I think. You know, it's yeah, very family orientated there, isn't it? Yeah, so. it's a great circuit, plenty of space as well, and I think everybody knows where they're parking there, whereas this place seems to change every year, doesn't oh, it? Just wherever, really. Just, just show just, up just first. Just a big airfield, a field, just <laughs> abandon it and go. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like, where was I now? No, I think it was, it was it Alton Park? There's a bit like that, and there's a lot of lot of land, but yeah. the circuit's relatively small. Yeah. Well, the, the, the circuit area's rather small. The track itself's decent, but yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? It is, it is. You sort of, you drive in here with this ruddy great big long driveway, and then you get to this tiny little bit in the corner, don't you? <laughs> yeah, just, try and do your arctic into the corner or something. Yeah. Well, it. look, Simon, good luck for the uh, second to last race of the weekend. <laughs> I can see you getting some good moves here. I can see you moving up the pack. You just got to get in there early and make it stick. That's it. That's so says cool the professional racing yeah. driver. You just got to have a go, aren't you? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. Get the suit Tell on. you what, stop. No, I don't think I'll fit in your suit, to be well, honest. Somebody get him a suit. Please. One day, one day I will. One, you watch this space. One day, me in this truck, we're doing it. We're going to make it happen. I've got to get a race license first, yeah. I'll end up owing you a truck, won't I? That's right, it. Right, so I've lost the front end, but uh, I'll work it off. That's it. <laughs> Yep. Simon Fulton, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much, Pointy. And uh, I have to say, when he was talking to John Bowler there, I know exactly that curry house they were on about, and it is very good indeed. It's only a short distance away from Pembrey. I certainly recommend it. Anyway, the trucks are coming out onto track then for their fifth of six races this weekend. Five events to go here at uh, Pembrath. This will be one race each left for our four 
categories of racing this weekend. Grid for this one, we'll see John Bowler in pole position alongside 46 Bradley Smith. This uh, grid based on the results of the race we saw this morning. Second row of the grid, Michael Oliver, alongside him is Craig Reed. Row three, Simon Reed, alongside David Jenkins, and Stuart Oliver and Ryan Smith completing the lineup of the reversed grid. Then on five, row five, it's Stephen Powell and Jock Borthwick. Sixth row, Ricky Collett and Tom O'Rourke. Then completing Division One, Simon Faulkner and Neil Yates. There's a gap, and we have Division Two. Jim Bennett and Simon Cole will head them up ahead of Adam Bintz and John Powell, Craig Evans and Paul Rivette rounding out the 20 trucks. And forgets 15 points for a win, 14 for second and so on, plus a point for the fastest lap. We'll be adding up the points as we go. Ryan Smith, by my calculations, currently leads by 57 points in Division One. Stuart Oliver just two points ahead of David Jenkins for P2 and P3. A strong race for Stephen Powell here. Could he could see him overhaul Bradley Smith for fourth place in the championship. Looking back from Stuart Oliver's truck here. There's Ryan Smith and Stephen Powell behind us. Although looking at uh, the markers on the screen there, I don't think that camera's battery is going to last very long. Unfortunately, that needs a recharge. Hopefully it'll last for a few laps of the race and we can see some action from Stuart Oliver. There's Jock Borthwick as well, missing his front bumper. We're on board with Paul Rivette in the cab. Thanks again to Richard for the onboard cameras this weekend. Just needs to charge his batteries. Paul Rivette will start from the back in Division 2 this time. It's John Bowler on the pole. Of course, we know from his interview there, well, he'll be celebrating a victory tonight on his way home. Bradley Smith alongside in the Ferns and uh, Scrap Co sponsored MAN. It nearly was Scrap after that crash at uh, Donington Park. Team did an amazing job to rebuild it for the last race of the day. Michael Oliver on the second row. What a luckless weekend he's had so far. Hoping not not to get stuck in the mud this time. Needs sponsorship from one of our tractor companies. Craig Reed completes the second row. Then his brother Simon. And then the big three of Jenkins. Oliver and Smith. Ryan Smith going from the outside. Is that going to prove an advantage? Is he going to just go for broke and charge down the outside into the hairpin? If he gets it right, he could get the lead of the race. If he gets it wrong, he could end up in the sea. Behind them, Stephen Powell and Jock Borthwick. Then Ricky Collitz dropped back in the race this morning to finish P11. Tom O'Rourke alongside him. It's not been a happy weekend for the Scotsman either. It's a bit of last minute check taking place on uh, Bradley Smith there. Thumbs up from the team members. And we are almost ready to roll the uh, Martin Oliver Transport and GT Tyres MAN in position to lead the field away. I think I just heard John Ward on the circuit commentary say we haven't got Simon Cole. We saw him have problems at the end of the previous race. He stopped at the hairpin. So they may be missing one of our Division 2 trucks. We'll check as they come through. John Bowler and Bradley Smith lead them away. It's the green flag waves. There's Neil Yates at the back of Division 1, and yes, Simon Cole is not there. 
So just five trucks in Division 2. So we can add a zero score to the spreadsheet again for Simon. He's had no luck in Division 1 or 2, really, this season. Beautiful weather here in South Wales once again. Wouldn't believe we were into autumn, would you? It's Craig Evans at the back along with Paul Rivet. Watch for those two coming through the two MANs. Adam Bint ready to make a break from them as he looks to hold his title lead. It's just eight points clear of Paul Rivette's now. Well, it looks like the title fight in Division 1 is, as I expected, going to go down to the final weekend of the season at Brands Hatch in November. So the gap is only 57 points between Ryan Smith and Stuart Oliver, so it would need Oliver and uh, David Jenkins to hit some major misfortune on board with Rivette. There's his title rival Adam Bint. It's going to be a very exciting run into the season in Division 2. Jim Bennett heads them round. The East Coast Truckers Sed and Atkinson. We're out on the eighth truck. Here they come then round to get underway. Fifteen minutes then for the British Truck Racing Championship. Penultimate race of the weekend at Pembrey. John Bowler on pole. Bradley Smith alongside him. Ryan Smith back in eighth position. Can he come through from there? Second row of Michael Oliver and Craig Reed. Simon Reed and David Jenkins on row three. Stuart Oliver, Ryan Smith on row four. The men with 17 titles between them. Division two headed up by Jim Bennett and John Powell. Title contenders behind. The pace truck is in pit lane. The revs beginning to rise. 15 minutes of racing coming your way. Here we go. We're underway and down towards Hatchet's Epping. Good start by Bradley Smith. He's going to take the lead in the 46. Gets across the front of John Bowler. David Jenkins tucked in there on the outside. Ryan Smith is going to try and charge down that outside line. Are they all going to make it round this oh-so-tight hairpin? Looks like a bit of a slow getaway there for Simon Faulkner. He's in among the Division 2 trucks. They've all made it round Craig Evans out onto the grass in the number 10 MAN. He'll rejoin at the rear of the pack behind Jim Bennett, but they've all made it round, certainly in Division 1. Looks like it's Bradley Smith, who is the early leader in the 46, one of the Reeds in second place. Pick up who that's in a second, a spin there, that's Jock Borthwick. More bad luck for the, the Scotsman. He's left facing the wrong way, more bodywork falls off the number 32. Let's hope he can get that fired up and get underway again. Division 2 is led by John Powell in the number 6. He's having a decent weekend. He's up there ahead of Stephen Powell, so he must have been involved there in that tangle with uh, Jock Bordley. It's Bradley Smith who leads. Craig Reed in second. John Bowler third. Fourth is Michael Oliver. Fifth, David Jenkins. Sixth is Simon Reed. And in seventh position, it is Stuart Oliver. Ryan Smith only in eighth place. And the red flag, I think, is going to come out as they uh, come around and complete the first lap. Yes, the red flag is going to come out again because of Jock Borthwick's stranded truck. He's trying to get it off the track there. Well, typically, as the race stops, Jock gets the truck moving again. You can see the marshals stood well back off their posts for safety reasons. There's not a lot of bodywork left on Jock's number 32. It's not been a happy return to racing for him this weekend. The front bumper is bent. All the front and uh, left side bodywork has gone. Hopefully, though, he'll be able to line up for the uh, rerun. He's now lightweight MAN. Hopefully the steering isn't damaged. Let's have a look again and see what's happened there towards the uh, middle of the pack. A bit of bodywork off Ryan Smith there. So he's had some contact. Oh, and Stephen Powell tried to get down the inside. It didn't work, and wallop. Powell takes the rallycross course. Shreds a bit more bodywork off Jock Borthwick's truck, who's now trying to uh, get himself back in line. How to pull out of a junction properly. One of the lessons on your HGV test. Nobody's letting him out, look into the traffic.
he's going to have to join the back of the queue. Let's have a look again at the uh, start of the race. It was a great start by uh, Bradley Smith straight across to take the line for the hairpin. Now, what happened to Ryan Smith? Did he have some contact going in here? We saw a bit of bodywork damage on his truck. No, he was OK. Further back in the order, bit slow away, Ricky Collin there. John Powell climbed up on the kerb. The only uh, real casualty uh, before that incident that brought out the red flag was Craig Evans. He ran wide onto the grass. So now they've got to grip them up again. Wait to see if... Uh, we'll run over the full distance. OK, the grid reforming then. The timing screen at the moment still says 15 minutes. Out comes the pace truck. Looks like we could be going for a full restart. Now, what's Jock Borthwick going to do? Is he going to line up in his original place? Is he going to start from the back? Is he going to head into the pits? Well, he hasn't gone into the pits because there he is on the right. Maybe he's waiting to be directed where to line up. Well, yeah, we can hear the reversing bleeper as he makes his way into his grid slot there. It is now lightweight MAN. Where is Ryan Smith going? Has he got damage? It looks like he's pulling off. This, this is a rare sight. Ryan Smith pulling towards the paddock. Is he out of the race? He's not pulling into the uh, pit lane there. I thought Ryan was going a bit slowly before the race was stopped. There's damage to the right front corner. Where's he going? Yeah, his team member's heading across. He's heading into the paddock. Ryan Smith's got a problem. You can see the right front corner damage there. There's obviously something amiss, and I think Ryan Smith is out of the restarts. Now. Broken suspension spring, we've just been told. And he will not be in the restarts. That's a no score for Ryan Smith. He had a bit of bad luck at uh, Pembrey earlier this season with a couple of retirements as well. Now this is going to give Stuart Oliver and David Jenkins the chance to catch up. I think Jock Borthwick's heading into retirement as well. I can see him in the background there. Yeah, there he goes. So the team may have spotted a problem with the Scotsman's truck. Well, what's left of it? Good 
the state of it. It's a great shame for Jock on his return. He heads into the paddock. So we're a couple of trucks down, then we're down to 17 for our penultimate truck race of the weekend. So once again, John Bowler and Bradley Smith on the front of the grid. It's uh, scheduled to be a full 15 minute restart because we'd only just completed one lap when the red flag came out. But the big story of this race, no Ryan Smith. Damaged suspension putting him out of the race. So they'll work to change that spring, get him back out for the final race of the day. So Bowler and Smith lead them off, Bradley Smith that is, Michael Oliver and Craig Reed on row two. David Jenkins and Stuart Oliver will have seen, I think now's our chance to close the gap at the top of the championship. It's pointy just uh, confirming their broken rear spring on the number one truck. So this race suddenly much more wide open. John Bowler's had one win this season at Thruxton. Could Bradley Smith take his first ever win? Done a few podiums this year. It's going to be pretty open in Division 2 as well. Pembrey often uh, throws up an unusual result was here uh, a few years back that Paul McComsky got his first win in many years in Division 2 with his older Volvo. I believe Simon Cole now owns that truck. Tire going down, I've been told on Jock Borthwick's truck that forced him to retire. So the MAN pace truck leads them round. Second attempt then at British Truck Race 4 this weekend here at Pembrey. No Ryan Smith, broken rear suspension putting him into the paddock. No Jock Borthwick either. It's John Bowler and Bradley Smith who lead them up towards the red lights. Michael Oliver. Craig Reed on row two, Simon Reed and David Jenkins on row three, Stuart Oliver alone on row four. This race looking very wide open indeed. Revs begin to rise. Waiting for the red lights to go out, which they do now. And here we go, good start by David Jenkins, quick start by Michael Oliver, look at Oliver moving to the inside, he's not going to go three wide, surely into the hairpin! Oh, is he going to think better of it, is John Bowler going to move across him? No, Michael Oliver's going to go straight on, oh goodness me! That could have been chaos, Oliver's off, don't get stuck in the grass again, Michael, for goodness sake! John Bowler's off as well, Bradley Smith's caught up, so that's the front row removed. Bowler's hit the wall, look, look at the front of his truck. It's Craig Reed that leads, but I think they're going to have to stop the race again. David Jenkins in second, Simon Reed in third, Stuart Oliver's come through into fourth, and that was all caused by Michael Oliver going kamikaze down the inside into the hairpin. You can't do that into hatchets. Where is Michael? He's, uh, well, he hasn't come through. He's right back at the back of Division 1 as a result of that schmozzle. Leading the way, it is Craig Reed ahead of David Jenkins. Simon Reed is in third place. Down speedway straight they come. Fourth place is Stuart Oliver. There's Tom O'Rourke. He's up into fifth. He's the big winner out of that uh, chaos. Got up the inside. Coming through to complete the first lap then. It is Craig Reed who leads the way. But guess what? We have the red flags out again. 
That will be for John Bowler, stuck at the hairpin. Certainly quick in coming to a stop there, particularly Division 2. And back among Division 2 is uh, Bradley Smith as well. He's dropped right back. There's the reason. Poor old John Bowler. It seems like starting on the front row is a curse here, doesn't it? Let's have a look again. Michael Oliver just too eager. You can't go three wide into Hatchet's air, but he's on the grass already. There's no way he can stop. He's got no grip. Wallop into the side of John Bowler. They both go off. A couple of other trucks caught up behind as well. Bradley Smith was caught in all that. And John Bowler ends up stuck in the mud. Damaged the front of his truck as well, where he got... I don't think he hit the wall, actually. I think he just got smacked by Michael Oliver. There, we see it from the other angle. No way he could get the truck stopped. Smashes into the front of uh, Michael Oliver. Smashes the mirror. They both go off. Bowler does hit the tyre wall. You can see it from the other angle there. And now there's another truck to be recovered. There's the recovery vehicle. Three-axle death. Certainly been busy this weekend, hasn't it? So the DAF manoeuvres into position once again. I'm sure we'll have our tractor down there as well. We need those vintage tractors as backup, don't we? Michael Oliver back on the grid. And um, as to be said, he's probably not the most popular person on that grid right now. That was uh, a bit too rash down there into the first corner. There was no way he was going to get the truck stopped in time to make that hairpin. Look at the state of John Bowler's truck. They've recovered it out of the grass. The front of it is shredded. He's going into the pits. Hopefully the team can get him back out again. So now we wait for the uh, track to be made uh, all clear. Let's see what point he's up to while we have a moment, shall we? Right then, right then. Hello, how are we? Welcome back down to uh, the pits where, well, John Bowler is probably feeling a bit in the pits. Come round here, John, and have a look down here at the frantic work going on. Just get in there and I'll talk over. We have some serious damage. A lot of this probably caused by the grass as he went off. Look at the way, Tiny. God. <laughs> Huge amounts of damage to the uh, the bar there. The bumper's gone, but they're looking it over. Scrutineers here. Paul Garrett checking over the structure of the vehicle to make sure it's safe to go back out. A very quick presto changeo checking the steering the team here working with them very quickly to make sure we've not got any damage that's just a support beam that needs to be out of the way because that can't be sticking out forward surely 
Daz, one of the mechanics, making sure it's not going to cause any issues with the tyres on full lock, of course. Quite a bit of damage there, and of course they're, they're re-gridding a couple of mechanics out on the pits now, uh, sorry, out on the pit straight, on the grid waiting, removing some bits of plastic that we might have seen damaged on Michael Oliver. And still some last minute work, we can see the uh, old faithful four inch grinder coming out, but I'm not sure whether we need it or not. Question marks being asked, are we going to be able to get out in time? Watchful eyes. What are we waiting for? We need a grinder or a cable tie? No, we're just getting a 22 off. Oh, we're getting, a, we're getting a spanner off. There we go. Of course, we're looking to remove this now because if it is loose, we don't want it falling off halfway around the circuit. That's going to cause serious issues. So, John Bowler's mechanics now working with actual tools to remove it as quickly and safely as possible. Honestly, I'd have gone for the four inch myself. What would you have used? Grinder. Right, I'd have used a grinder. Would you use the grinder or the spanner? Grinder, safer. Right, it is so it's quicker. Goggles or no goggles? Uh, goggles. Goggles, good answer. Good, good, good answer. It's a safety squint, that's all we need. Right, we've got fluids, but I think it's just brake water coming out of the uh, injectors for the brakes. We hear some revs now from John Bowler. It does appear to just be water. And he's away again. Now, of course, because of that, we're probably going to see John Bowler starting from the uh, the pit exit uh, at the back of the pack, which is a shame, unless they're going to allow him on and reverse back up the grid, which I personally can't see happening. Michael Oliver moves forward now into that next position, or are they taking him off as well? Where's Michael Oliver going? Is he joining us? as a possible reason for the incident or is he retiring is he also going to go with john bowler as the cause of the red flag to start from the pit lane as well he's waiting there reversing his way back in so it appears that john bowler and michael oliver starting from the pit lane orders for john bowler to move back ever so slightly but two very large gaps now. We are dropping like flies here in Division 1 with uh, some uh, serious room on the grid now as we're awaiting. We see uh, our friend from Bark, Daisy, uh, partner of Adam Bint, of course, with the one-minute sign in hand as she uh, awaits to turn to show that. Not quite the one-minute mark just yet, but Michael Oliver actually starting behind John Bowler. So, uh, yeah, John Bowler having to let Michael Oliver in behind him. We're all poised here. I think we're all quite grateful that that didn't take longer than we thought it was going to because the size that we heard um, in the pits and on the pit wall when that incident occurred, uh, you could probably hear from space. A lot of upset mechanics. But uh, we are waiting for a nod. If we see now over here, we've got the, uh, the stewards... Uh, sorry, the uh, officials up in the uh, start-finish box. Waiting for something. We're obviously waiting to get a decision uh, from upstairs, as is the case with a lot of motor racing. Everything seems ready. As, uh, certainly, we're all ready. Uh, ah, the tractor out on circuit, probably having a little sweep-up uh, was to be... Uh, a delay so he's making his way back in now so fingers crossed safety car also coming back in uh, driven by our friend earlier on that we got to meet but i believe we should soon be back racing so i'm going to hand back to david the studio the action's all calmed down here now and uh, let's fingers crossed for a, at least you know five laps of green flag racing shall we back to the studio yeah thanks pointy Right, they're going. There's going to be nobody left in this race. It's been the most destructive truck racing we've seen for some time. John Bowler and Michael Oliver starting from the pit lane. No Ryan Smith. No Jock Borthwick. So we're not going to lose anybody else. No Simon Cole either. Bradley Smith starts there alone on the front row. Craig Reed on the second row. Oh, 
I was confused there for a second. Don't worry. That not, Mike Oliver's not in two places at once. I think our camera on the start finish line had frozen. Sorry about that. So Simon Reid, look, has got a free run from the third row of the grid Lucky. down the inside. There's nobody in front of him. On their flag lap once again. David Jenkins is there, Stuart Oliver. We could be in for a slightly unusual result here. I wonder if Bradley Smith can hang on for his first ever win. Craig Reid has just won Division 1 victory. That was at the uh, very last race of the year in Division 1 last season at Brands Hatch. Simon Reid's had a few wins. Stuart Oliver's been there, seen it, done it and won it in truck racing in Britain and Europe. In Division 2, five trucks still going strong. Stephen Powell, just the one Division 1 win for him so far as well. Tom O'Rourke, a single win at Donington a couple of years ago. Craig Evans still looking for his first win in Division 2. Could this be it for Bradley Smith? Could this be his breakthrough? Neil Yates at the back of Division 1. The reduced distance three stars, eight minutes due to the time lost. There's Adam Bint looking to increase his lead in Division 2. Paul Rivetti's main rival just behind him. Well, on a rather destructive day for the British Truck Racing Championship, we'll try again with our penultimate race of the day. Bradley Smith on his own on the front row. John Bowler starting from the pits. The Reed brothers behind him. Michael Oliver also in the pit lane. And David Jenkins and Stuart Oliver. Ryan Smith is out with broken rear suspension spring. No Jock Borthwick either with tyre problems. This will be a reduced eight-minute race after the stoppages. Let's see what's going to happen this time as we get underway. Third time lucky, hopefully, with the British Truck Racing Race 4 at Pembrey. Bradley Smith leads them off. David Jenkins trying to get through the middle in the 69 truck. Craig Reid is there on the outside. Jenkins tries to force his way down the inside for second place. He leans on Craig Reid. Are they all going to get through the hairpin? Adam Bint almost pushing John Powell. They've had a few clashes today, and somehow this time they've all got round. There's John Bowler and Mike Oliver joining in at the back from the pit lane. And it's Bradley Smith from David Jenkins, the Reed brothers in third and fourth. Craig ahead of his elder brother, Simon, the freight company owners from Stoke. Stuart Oliver up there in fifth position. A bit of dust and mud being kicked up as they come out of the crossing. Tom O'Rourke's well up there in the 86 in the MV Commercial, MAN. And towards the back of the circuit for the first time, Bradley Smith, the 23-year-old from Gravesend in Kent, the youngest man in the field, leads the way sideways there from Craig Reid in third. Here comes Stephen Powell having a look. Simon uh, um, Stewart Oliver on the inside as well, attacking Simon Reid. Stephen Powell's got ahead of Tom O'Rourke. Behind them, Ricky Collins. It looks like they've got round the first lap OK at the third time of asking in this penultimate race of the weekend. Fifth of six here at Pembroke. Stuart Oliver attacking the Reed Brothers. Pick up Division 2 in a moment. David Jenkins in P2, the Reed's third and fourth. There's Oliver. Had a win yesterday. To the hairpin they go. Here comes Stephen Powell. He's looking quick. Bradley Smith it is who leads, though, by one and a half seconds at the end of the first lap. Now, what he needs to do in the early stages here is get away and put as much clean air between himself and David Jenkins. We know David Jenkins will come on stronger as the race goes on. So Bradley Smith needs to pull out a gap, and that's exactly what the young gun is doing. He desperately wants his first ever British truck racing win. Running wide there was uh, Simon Reid in fourth position. Now, what about Division 2? Is that Paul Rivetti who's got through to the front already? It is a fantastic first lap by Paul Rivetti. He's ahead of uh, John Powell. Adam Bint's back to third. That's the last thing he wanted. 
because you'll see is the gap close further in the championship. Michael Oliver diving past the Division 2 runners. They'll uh, let him through. Probably the best option is a much quicker truck, the uh, Division 1 MAN. As the leaders come through to complete their second lap. Fastest lap of the race by Craig Reed, 111.594 as he chases David Jenkins. That's exactly what Bradley Smith wants. He wants Jenkins embroiled in the battle for second place so he can get away. Stuart Oliver up the outside, attacking Simon Reed. Stephen Powell might go for the inside. He has a sniff at Stuart Oliver there to try and take fifth position. Doesn't work. Out of the hairpin. Craig Reed with the fastest lap of the race. He's going after Jenkins. Simon Reed dropping back into the clutches of Stuart Oliver. 17 trucks still out there. John Bowler and Michael Oliver already made their way through some of the Division 2 field further back. Division 2 still led by Paul Rivet. Just see him there in the background. Only a short sprint this once they know they've got to go all out from the off. There's already less than five minutes to go. Here comes Oliver, has another look at Simon Reed. This is his best passing opportunity, coming down speedway straight. He doesn't manage to get alongside, but this is the fight for fourth. Good to see Neil Yates up there as well. He's in P9, he's ahead of Simon Faulkner. They thrash their way down towards the hairpin once again. It's Ricky Collins on the tail of Tom O'Rourke, and there's Neil Yates staying ahead of Faulkner and the Division 2 back. It's a good drive by Neil Yates. Much more on the pace here this weekend as he learns his craft. John Bowler taking John Powell. He's second in Division 2. John Bowler was battling with these drivers last season. He's uh, in his first season since moving up from Division 2. Craig Reed still has the fastest lap, 111.594. He'll get a bonus point if he holds on to it. Pick up the quickest lap in uh, Division 2 as well. I think that's with uh, Paul Rivets. We'll double check that. Yes, it is. To come towards the closing stages already in this short sprint for the line. There's Adam Bint ahead of Craig Evans. No, I think Craig Evans has got the fastest lap in Division 2, so he'll get the bonus points. But anyway, there go the leaders. Still Bradley Smith. So they make their way out of Honda Curve. Still Stuart Oliver unable to do anything about Simon Reed. Less than three minutes to go now. And Bradley Smith can sense his chance at a first ever British Truck Racing Championship win. He's clear of David Jenkins and Craig Reed. Here comes Oliver. He's determined to get past Simon Reed for that fourth place. David Jenkins in second. He can't shake off Craig Reed. Jenkins sideways. Coming over the crossing there. A big slide from the MAM. The Avico on his tail now of Craig Reed. Towards Brooklands. There's Smith ahead of them. He's leading by over two seconds now. This is looking great for Bradley Smith. It's looked likely all season. Is he finding again his first win? Jenkins having to hold back Craig Reed, just as Simon Reed is holding back Stuart Oliver. This is exactly what Bradley Smith wants here. Black and white flag goes out. That's to number 12, which is Michael Oliver. Oh, and off goes Neil Yates. Oh, what a shame. He was on for his first top 10 on for his best results so far I think that's down at Brooklands what a disappointment for Neil Yates he was going so well holding off Simon Faulkner but he's out now is that going to be another race stoppage there's only 90 seconds left so if it is the result will be declared race continues for the moment I can't remember a meeting with uh, more red flags than this already. There's another race to come yet later on. There is Bradley Smith, and the red flag is coming out with 1 minute 15 seconds on the clock. Yes, another red flag, and that surely means that Bradley Smith is going to take his first ever win. We'll await confirmation of that. It just, yes, this session will not be restarted. Bradley Smith, for the first time ever, is a winner in the British truck racing championship.
congratulations Bradley Smith I'm sure points you'll be down there to celebrate with him shortly David Jenkins in second is going to close the gap on Ryan Smith who didn't take the restarts in the championship his gap is down to 45 points now the championship is going down to the final round at Brands Hatch that's for definite but it is Bradley Smith who takes the victory he won't know it yet until he sees the chequered flag but it's come through on our timing screen this session will not be restarted as for that Marshall she's braver than me standing in front of the pack there Neil Yates out of his truck you have to feel for him he was going so well in ninth place holding off Simon Faulkner was on for his best ever results and then we'll uh, confirm the finishing order there's not going to be many finishes that one it has to be said Bradley Smith first ever win ahead of David Jenkins Craig Reed takes third and gets the fastest lap fourth place goes to Simon Reed Stuart Oliver in P5 he's just one point behind David Jenkins in the championship they continue to swap places for second in the points sixth for Stephen Powell seventh was Tom O'Rourke eighth place for Ricky Collins and at the top ten will be Simon Faulkner and John Bowler who started from the pit lane behind them Paul Rivette takes the win in Division 2 Michael Oliver behind him then John Powell and Adam Bint complete the Division 2 top three the other finishers were Craig Evans and Jim Bennett just looking through the timing screen who got fastest lap in Division 2 the extra point goes by my calculation to Adam Bint so he gets fastest lap so he gets the bonus point time to do a bit of maths as the uh, trucks head back into Park Fermi hopefully we'll hear from Bradley Smith later on I'm sure we'll uh, we all want to hear from him having just taken his first ever win well next up on track will be the uh, Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club season finale the championship still to be decided and let's head down to point C because I think he's about to uh, collar Bradley Smith our first time winner Wow, my goodness. We had a bit of a run to get over to Park Fermé there. Another red flag, four red flags, one race. The fact we got any laps in at all is a miracle. However, what an amazing result for Bradley Smith. Even though the result gets reversed one lap, he was still in first place with a pretty healthy gap the entire time. And here he is, the man of the hour. Are you hopping out? Do it. <laughs> let me shake your hand we've got Dave Jenkins here as well absolutely incredible Bradley <laughs> what a result oh god that was kind of three race starts I think wasn't it I and, it think, just, and um, you smashed every single one of them yeah three good starts and fair hats off to my mechanics honestly yesterday we had an absolute nightmare handling but it stayed up late and they've got it absolutely spot on. Half 12, I believe you were up yeah. till last night, rebuilding the yeah. steering and the back end as well, wasn't it? That's it, yeah. It's mental, just moving the spring hangers, one one whole difference what it makes. But, <laughs> wow. um, oh, it's brilliant. It's good good for the mechanics. They've had a hard weekend and amazing for my sponsors. Our first and, wins is good. And regardless of the start, which obviously was phenomenal all three times, um, the, the fact you were pulling away, you were making it stick. Craig, come on in, mate. Well done, mate. Well done. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, what a great effort. I mean, we enjoyed watching that, but yeah. what was going on with those starts? Oh, what, honestly, any ideas? I, I can't really say because it's, it's what happened. Like, it, it was the start of the season or last year or something. <laughs> my, I watched Michael go on the grass and I thought, this is going to end bad. Here, here we and go. Then <laughs> they, I was that reserved. They, they, to be fair, I'm glad I had a poor start when he did it and I'm glad I did because I just watched him do it and thought, freaking hell, Michael. I knew it was coming. <laughs> and I thought he'd wipe uh, Bradley out. Yeah. I knew it. it the, the hardest thing with the restart then is obviously our tyres flare up. Yeah. So we, we, we losing, we're just losing value. Valuable 
grip. Oh, we had two Division oh, Ones drop out before the race even know, restarted yeah. for the yeah. first I, time. I, I, had a, I had a nice gap for that last start, which is nice. I could touch yeah. that over. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then of course, Dave, you were you know playing defence a lot of that race as well, weren't you? Really? Cause so, so uh, how much pressure was on you then? Yeah, quite a lot. And Craig, there was just half a gap. Or yeah. I, I, I'm arguing there was a full gap. Craig thinks it might have been half a gap. We'll have a look in a minute yeah, in, in the start. And then, um, like Craig says, we'd sat there, we'd messed about that long. The tyres were so hot. Just got no front end yeah. and Bradley had just checked out and I was just managing the position behind so you know good yeah. racing and so pleased for Bradley and his team amazing job absolutely brilliant Bradley uh, just to quickly and say dad. yeah and his dad yeah <laughs> yeah, dad. yeah is it, did it, come on so come on in mate that's it come on give it come on give him a shake there he is oh look at that beautiful beautiful just that you know you're sorry you always say they're supposed to bring your kids up to be better than you are faster yeah yeah faster than definitely faster oh well congratulations to you guys that was a great race so there was some obviously very tricky conditions there with regards to all those restarts but you know we we feel like we nailed it down by the end yes we got there a few uh crashing a few cabs later on yeah so so another reverse grid from this morning's result now uh, for the last race of the day have, have we got another race left in you yeah of course we have now we'll yeah. up. if i've got some if i've got some tires that's yeah. the problem <laughs> yeah, definitely definitely and what about you how's your back gonna do i'm loving it <laughs> <laughs> loving it right well that's enough from us down here at uh, park firm and let's hear some noise for division one top three <laughs> fantastic right I suppose we better hand out some trophies. We're only running about an hour behind now, so uh, let's get this on the go. Here's a word from our sponsors. Well, uh, I'm pleased to say we're not running an hour behind. We're just a few minutes uh, behind schedule after those red flags. Our next race is the season finale for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Title still to be decided. Let's see who you and Dunlop caught up with earlier on. Now, elsewhere, anywhere in the paddock here at Pembrey, there's a lot of tension. However, in the F class, not the case at all. We've got board games, we've got the picnic mat, mat out. Um, we're having a great time in the sun, aren't we? And, and Stuart, you've won the championship and this is uh, in the recliner, just enjoying yourself now. The tension's over, you've done it. Um, first of all, congratulations, what a fantastic season. Yeah, it's been it's been surprisingly good. Um, my first championship in 14 years, wow. which is um, I think something to be proud of. Absolutely. Um, and I, frankly, I mean, we've been saying that I don't feel that I would want to be anywhere else. And racing with these guys over the last well 20 years has been fantastic. Um, I mean, I said to you yesterday, we we sort of we get on on and off the track there's a lot of respect and you know I, i've i've done lotus in the past and and enjoyed it but there's nothing really like the mgoc class f paddock now you guys get on like famously well every single year you guys are the guys we want to talk to it's a, it's a great almost like a family down here isn't it yeah it is i mean the wives and girlfriends and everybody come um and we just have a really good time. We stay in the same hotels, we go out to eat at night together, we come to the circuit together, um, and it's just, it's as much about off the track as it is on the track. Yeah? Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's the same every come year. On every, year. Come on every year we look forward to this, and particularly this meeting, I don't know why. I think the racing's always good here. The circuit's great, it's quite challenging quite a short lap and it always seems to bunch the cars up so we get great racing and we look forward to having the whole weekend here enjoying the beautiful Wales countryside and, and actually the beautiful Wales weather yeah. today it's yeah. been brilliant yeah it's been fabulous now Mark has been brilliant this weekend hasn't he yeah. but overall this season he was the reigning champion in the F class what was the difference for you this year because you always drive the same cars but there, there was something different this year um honestly I think it was just I got off to the most incredible start. I did brands and won both races. Uh, no, I did brands and won one and finished second in the in the second race. And then we went to Snare and I won both races. I mean, which is unheard of for me. I mean, I, I've when I came back from Lotus uh, in 2016, it was basically because Lotus was costing too much money, yeah. and I decided that. 
you know, I'd, I'd been to MGOC, I'd won the Class F in uh, 08, I won the overall in 09, and I thought, right, I just want to have a bit of fun now, you know, um, old dog, not many new tricks, so um, I, I'll just, I'll pick and choose the races that I do, and, um, and just enjoy it for what it is. And if I can keep up my tally of winning at least one race a season, I'm a happy oh, boy. Um, and so this year I did Brands, Snet, missed out Coombe and Thruxton, did Donington, which I wasn't going to do. Um, and mixed feelings about that, because obviously it helped me win the championship, but I smashed the car up down the Craner Curves in the second race, which wasn't the plan. Went to Silverstone, um, did the same thing, had a had a, a, a good first race, finished second to Mark? Yeah. yeah, finished second to Mark, who was flying there as well. Um, buzzed the car in the first race, so I didn't do the second race. And and then it, it all basically came down to this. So it's been a great season, but had it been maybe I don't, want to, I don't want to say a more serious championship because that denigrates the, the, the championship and the people in it. But within Class F, you know, we're all doing the same sort of thing. Simon's had work issues. I've had work issues. Mark's had work issues. We've had different things going on at different times. We've not, none of us have done all of the races. And as a result, um, Ironically, it's made it re as close as it yeah, was yeah. today. So it like, come right down to the wire because everybody was within what, nine points of it, or all three of us within. And if Martin had been here, then it would have been game on. Um, I mean, not that it wasn't already, but with full points, obviously, a, a nine point lead is going to be very easily assailable. Yeah. Last year it came down to the very last race as well, didn't it? So yeah. always fantastic, always a pleasure to talk to you guys. One more race to go today for the championship and the entire the entire year. Um, I'm sure you can have loads of fun. All right. So best of luck. We can't look forward to watching it. All right. Thank Cheers, you. guys. Thank you. Um, right. Let's go. Not just F class racing, but MG Owners Club racing for the final time today and this year. Enjoy it. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Ewan. So cars on the grid then, ready for their green flag lap. The final race of the season for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Congratulations to Stuart Plotnick. We just heard confirmed as the Class F champion. Grid lines up as follows then. Steve McDermott and Scott Bugner, the ZR protagonists on the front row. Andrew Priest and Mark Baker, first of the MGFs on row two. Plotnick on row three alongside Simon Kendrick. On the fourth row, Jimmy Work and Andy Robinson in there. ZRs. Adrian Olsen on row five alongside Will Sharp. Now, if Will Sharp finishes first or second in Class A, then he will be champion overall. So that's all he has to do, finish in the top two of Class A. The sixth row, Riley Price in the Class B ZR, alongside David Amflitz, MGB. Row seven, Alan Forster in the Montego, and John Diffie driving the number six car in this race, taking over from... Nigel Wilcox and Lewis Saunders, number 121 in his MGB, will start from the back. He missed qualifying yesterday, was busy with another event at Silverstone. So the last race of the season then, It'll be a 15 minute race for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Another great year for them of close, competitive and very friendly motorsports. We say motorsport should be fun with this championship, it certainly is. Steve McDermott will start as the favourites, has led all the way this weekend, looking for his eighth win of the season. Can Scott Bugner, the ex Ford racer, stop him? There's the Montego. Will Sharp will be the one to watch as well, the number 66 MG Midgets. All he needs to do is finish first or second in class. I suspect we'll see Lewis Saunders come through to the front of class A in the uh, Jim Boehner moment MGB. But uh, as long as Will finishes second to him, he will win the overall championship. Steve McDermott all set to take the class championship in class Z. 
Andy Priest looking for an overall podium, as is Mark Baker. But it's Stuart Plotnick in the white MGF who's taken the Class F title. We just heard his first title for 14 years. It's Andy Robinson, number 30, in uh, his ZR. Travelled here from Guildford in Surrey this weekend. Not many uh, local racers, so fair play to all of them who've uh, put in the miles to be here this weekend. Anthony Bate all the way from Cornwall in his Maestro, sadly broke down yesterday, so we haven't seen him out today. He's already confirmed as the champion in Class B. But who's going to take that overall title? If anything happens to uh, Will Sharp, if he has a mechanical failure and the wayside adhesives MG Midget, then that opens the door for Steve McDermott. He could overhaul him. And take his fourth overall title. Grid is formed, waiting for the green flag from the marshal at the back. He's satisfied over his in position. The five second board goes aloft. Final race of the season for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. The revs rise and we're underway. Down towards the head, and they go one car a little bit slow away in the middle of the pack. That was one of the MG midgets, I think. But Will Sharp's made a decent start. So has Steve McDermott. So has Mark Baker. It's McDermott who's just about got the lead. They're all away clearly. Four wide into the hairpin. Look at this further back. And David Amflit's got ahead of Sharp. So has Lewis Saunders. Now, this could change things. Oh, Will. Oh, and uh, Lewis Saunders has gone wide. He's on the grass. I thought that was Sharp for a second then. But no, Saunders drops back again. He ran too wide out of the hairpin. A little bit too eager off the line there. So that's helped Will Sharp. He's up to second in the category. There is the MG Midgets. Bit of a dent in the rear corner there, but he's behind David Amflit. Somebody running wide, that was Andy Robinson, I think, in his ZR. So maybe he's got a problem early on. Certainly shaken up the uh, order a little. Yes, Robinson slowing up at the back. He's out of the race. So David Amflit in the MGB leads Class A from Will Sharp. The Montego behind them. Slightly lower grid slot for him this time, but it's McDermott who leads overall from Buckner, Baker, Priest. Then Simon Kendrick, then Jimmy Work, a better start from him this time in the uh, black and gold number 82. Newcomer to racing this year, having switched from motorcycling and uh, certainly has acquitted himself very well indeed. Down the pit straight, Andy Priest trying to make a move on Mark Baker for third, can't get through on the inside. It's the brakes for the hairpin, four of them together for third place. The two dominators out in front as always, McDermott and Bugner. One man who did challenge them very strongly early this season was Maninda Golhar, particularly at Thruxton in his ZR. The Golhar family have raced MGs for many, many years. Andy Robinson is still going, but he's uh, a long way behind. So he's had a problem on the opening lap. Simon Kendrick holding off Jimmy Work. Next in the order is Stuart Plotnick. He uh, can take it easy here. He's already confirmed as the Class F champion. Class Z Championship is going to go to Steve McDermott. Class A has already been won by Will Sharp. But it's the overall title that he's concerned about. Jimmy Work going for the inside, looking for P5 overall. The leader's head over the line. Side by side, Work's got the inside line. Is he going to work his way through? into uh, P5, he certainly is the extra power of the ZR, but on the break side, Kendrick, the Tiger gets back around the outside. And he just about keeps the place. Sunbeam who made the Tiger, not, not MG. <laughs> Fair bit of change further back in the order. Adrian Olsen's up to P8. Alan Forster's Montego is ninth. Up to 10th is Lewis Saunders. He leads Class A, so he's fought his way back in the lead. Jimmy works off. Oh, he loses it there at the crossing, onto the grass. Now, if he's bogged down, that could lead to a safety car. Be careful, Jimmy, don't uh, get yourself bogged down in the mud. Yes, that's good driving. He's got it recovered, the Elixir Inc. Tattoo Studio car. And he's got it going again. Now, back in Class A, Lewis Saunders has fought his way back into the lead. Who's in second in class? Is it Amflit or is it Will Sharp? We'll have a look back in a moment. Over the line they go. 
McDermott from Buckner. Buckner's just done the fastest lap of the race. He's less than a second behind. There's Lewis Saunders leading the way. And Will Sharp is in second in class, so he's safe for the championship. There's the midget. He's got back ahead of David Amflitz in P10 overall. There's Lewis Saunders. Very much a star of historic racing future. Doesn't seem long since I was watching him in his junior mini at Standlake in Oxfordshire on the concrete quarter mile oval. There's Will Sharp, champion elect. A little bit of smoke there coming from the uh, left, the right rear of the uh, MGs. That, that, I think, is leaking a bit of fluid. Maybe a result of that ding gets taken on the right rear corner, so we'll keep an eye on that. If that gets any worse and he drops out, we could have an interesting conclusion for the championship. John Diffie up the inside there, passes David Amphlitz, who's had a quiet weekend with his MGB. Riley Price behind Will Sharp there. There's Jimmy Work recovering after his off. Less than 10 minutes to go now this season. We'll keep half an eye on Will Sharp because if that car is leaking fluid, I hope it doesn't give him uh, any problems. See, it's mainly going round left-handed corners, we see it, from that right rear corner. Here are the leaders. Fastest lap for Steve McDermott, 1 minute 10.346. Bit of a lock-up there for uh, Bugner. Keeps it together, though, in second place. Andy Priest is third. He's ahead of Mark Baker. He's just come through. ZRs then run one, two and three. Mark Baker still leads Class F. Alan Forster's come through to P7. That Montego with its ZR power plants. We've got one car pulled into the pits. It's Andy Robinson. He said he was having problems from the off, so looks like he's out of the race. There's the Montego. He's got ahead of Stuart Plotnick now. He's ahead of Adrian Olsen. There's Lewis Saunders. He's dominating Class A as expected. There is Will Sharp. He just needs to keep going in P2. He just needs to make sure that John Diffie and David Amphlett don't get ahead of him. And he's going to win the title. He has been racing in a ZR over the last couple of years. We have told us he prefers the classic MGs. Now you see that bit of smoke again, that's a little bit of fluid coming out as the car leans through left-handed corners. Third place, Andy Priest. There's Baker leading Class F ahead of Simon Kendrick. He's missed a couple of rounds this year, so that's hampered his chances of the title. There was one round, in particular, uh, Castle Coon, where there were no MGFs on the grid at all. three have gone through the lead gap is up to 1.3 seconds as our invitation class leader the Montego Estates in body shell it's a, a ZR in terms of running gear I'm not sure why we can constantly hear the pits entry alarm going off in the background because there's no other cars coming into the pits Stuart Plotnick has been called here by Adrian Olsen. Simon Kendrick has moved ahead of Mark Baker, so we've had a change for the lead in Class F. Well, the Class Championship may be decided, but they're still going at it for the Class Victory. Baker in the earlier shape MGF. We saw one of those in the Classic Parade earlier. Simon Kendrick pulling away slightly. Lead gap is up to one and a half seconds now. Andy Priest has just done the fastest lap of the race. One minute, 10.003. First full season of racing for him this year. So Kendrick up to fourth and has taken the lead of his class. 
Stuart Plotnick is third of the MGFs. He's already won the title, doesn't he, to worry about catching them. Lewis Saunders continues to set the pace in Class A. Here comes Baker going for the outside. Is that pit alarm going off every time a car goes past on the track? Because that is really confusing. I keep thinking somebody's retiring into the pits and they're not. Here's John Diffie in car number six, the 1500cc Triumph engined MG Midgets. He's on the tail of Riley Price, our Class B car. You can see a bit of smoke coming out of his car as well, so maybe it's just a, a trait of the MGFs. What's the gap to um, Will Sharp ahead of us? The gap is about um, nearly three seconds. You can see it there. Well, you can't see John Diffie because he's hidden behind Riley Price. 16-year-old at the wheel of his ZR, former junior saloon car racer, comes from Leicester. John Diffie from Chesham to the northwest of London. There goes Will Sharp. I have to say this uh, mechanic for uh, some of our ZR drivers, I think he's from Triad Motorsports, if I uh, remember rightly. Can't remember his name as John Diffie gets through there. <laughs> We've got semaphore signals going on in front of our camera on the pit wall. John Diffie's got ahead of Riley Price now, and he's going after Will Sharp now. If Will Sharp loses second in class, that could change things in terms of the overall championship. Whether Will has got a slight problem here, I'm not too sure. But John Diffie, let's have a look at his lap times. Yeah, his last lap was a 1.14.3, Sharps was a 1.15.1, so he's closing on him. But look, he's catching him. We'll have to go to the calculators if um, he does get, a, get ahead of him. There's uh, less than four minutes of the race to go now, though. Riley Price trying to fight back in the ZR. Up the inside, retakes the place through Honda Curve. That's what Will Sharp wants to see. ZR in between him and his class rival. McDermott still leads by nearly two seconds. There you can see a comparison in the lap times. Slower through lap seven, both of them, because they were battling Riley Price. There's our leader, Steve McDermott from Scott Bugner. The wonderful dueling season they've had right from the off at Brands Hatch. Andy Priest is closing on them as well. Priest has already put up the fastest lap of the race. He's only 2.3 seconds behind Scott Buckner now. Could we see him get his best ever result? Could he get up into second? Less than three minutes of the season to go. Is Will Sharp still second in class? There he is. Yes, still ahead of John Diffie. Riley Price between the two. Mark Baker's retaken Simon Kendrick for the lead of Class F. They're having their own little scrap to end the season with. And they're lapping. Is they lapping Alan Forster? No, he's caught them. I thought the uh, Montego was a lap down for a second there, but no, he has caught them up. That's a very potent car, that Montego. There's words you never thought you'd hear during a motor race. But fair play to Alan Forster. I hope he can test the full championship next year and can uh, compete for points. Look at him out dragging Simon Kendrick. He's gone round the outside. Brilliant. In the car that must win most unlikely race car of 2023. couple of laps to go now. Can he get the Montego up into fourth ahead of the MGFs? We'll see what the gap is to Andy Priest ahead of them as well. It's 14 seconds, so I don't think he'll make it any further up the order. Oh, John Diffie's had a spin. And David Amflick goes off in avoidance. 
Now that is exactly what Will Sharp wanted to see because it looks like he's now safe in second in class. We'll see in uh, replay hopefully what happened there for John Diffie. He's gone around at uh, Brooklands. There is Sharp and he knows he's just got to complete the last lap and he's going to be home free because the leader's going on to his last lap now. Steve McDermott, he's going to win the Class Z title once again. He's just gone through to start his final lap. Look at Alan Forster, he's up with Mark Baker now. Great drive through the field. Now Stuart Plott may be a confirmed Class F champion. There is Steve McDermott, about to be confirmed as Class Z champion. And as long as Will Sharp keeps it going around this final lap behind Lewis Saunders, then he's going to take the title overall. Through towards Brooklands for the final time, the clock about to count down to zero. Still Forster attacks Mark Baker. side-by-side side coming towards centre corner. But it's going to be a win for Steve McDermott. He'll be coming up to the chequered flag very shortly. To win the Class Z title as Forster gets through at Brooklands, up into fourth place. The team celebrators crossing the line. The win goes to Steve McDermott. He wins the Class Z title. Scott Budner holds off the closing Andy Priest to take second. Here's the fight for fourth. Alan Forster and Mark Baker, nose to tail. Great drive through the field by the Montego man. Forster comes through to win the invitation class in fourth. Mark Baker wins class F in fifth. Simon Kendrick in sixth. Stuart Plotnick, the class champion in seventh. But having already wrapped up the class A title, here comes Will Sharp. He's ahead of two of the ZRs there, Riley Price and Jimmy Work. He won't mind if they get past him on the run to the chequered flag. Class A has been won by Lewis Saunders. And after that spin for John Diffie, removed the threats. Here comes Will Sharp to finish second in the class, and he is going to be confirmed as the overall 2023 20, Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club champion. Will Sharp wins the title. He played it safe for second in class, and Will Sharp wins the title. Steve McDermott wins the race and wins the Class Z championship once again. Mark Baker wins Class F, but it's Stuart Plotnick who takes the title in Class F. The Class B championship had already been won by Anthony Bates, who was absent today after his MG Maestro broke down yesterday. Here's the results of the race confirmed. Then Steve McDermott, the winner by four seconds ahead of Scott Bugner, who was nearly caught by Andrew Priest. Great drive for him to take third place and get fastest lap. Fourth place for Alan Forster. Great drive through the field by him in the Montego to take fourth. And Mark Baker wins Class F ahead of Simon Kendrick and Stuart Plotnick. Adrian Olsen next home. Lewis Saunders wins Class A. Some 30 seconds clear of Will Sharp, who did enough to take second in class and wins the overall title. Jimmy Work next home ahead of Riley Price, who wins Class B. Anthony Bates takes their title. Then David Amflitt and John Diffie completing the finishers. We lost Andy Robinson into the pits. A wonderful season comes to an end for the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. Well done to them. Thank you for their entertainment this season. And we will see their reaction, I'm sure, with you and Dunlop shortly. Cheers, Dave. And that is MG season all done and completed. And you know what? It came down to the final couple of laps. John Diffie, just that spin off. If he had managed to get past Will Sharp, Steve McDermott would have been our overall champion winner. But he is winning in class, winning in the race. Three wins this weekend. It is the perfect trio of wins and uh, class Z champion. Mate, what a sensational weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, great. I didn't really know it was going to go down to the last race, but um, 
it did and uh, as well he's got the, he's got my number one but <laughs> hey ho it, uh, it is what it is it's, it's uh, been a great year though and it, I don't know if you know behind you but actually he was being chased by James Diffie who span with two laps to go he was almost going to catch him it was sensationally close uh, yeah I mean I heard that he had to get a second and, yeah. um, and Jake was pushing me on and through the wall saying go 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 yeah. and um, like uh, yeah obviously it did get very close uh, obviously I was I didn't really know, but um, it is. Hey, but mate, you did everything you could. A sensational weekend. Well done. Yeah, the Z class is the important bit, and um, yeah, the overall is just cherry on top. Right, well done. Perfect. Great stuff. Cheers, Cheers. buddy. Thank you. Uh, right, let's just run down. Oh, we'll jump in with Scott Bugner first of all. Uh, he's come second three times. Scott, uh, always the bridesmaid, mate. Unfortunately. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> no, it. you don't. Um, no, he's done well. His cars on rails. Yeah. Um, Tried hard. I mean, all weekend you were close, like you said in the race too. Though he didn't make a single mistake. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Um, I had a big vibration on the front left after about four or five laps, so I just thought, bring it back. We, I know we couldn't win it on this one, so I've had a good battle with him all, all year, yeah. and the racing's been really good, really clean. And uh, I've got to do one shout out. Go on, because my general manager at work, Ooh. his son, come and watch me two or three times and I was like if I win I'll do it I'll, I'll shake you out and I keep forgetting so this is to Harry and uh, Johnny at home and my son Harvey and everyone at home watching but uh, also my uncle died last week so this one was for him as well well done mate we can't wait the next season good luck then thank you very much go and enjoy this one though um, I'm going to jump to Will Sharp if that's okay got to speak to Will first we'll come back to uh, Mr Priest no, no cap on it oh look that's the we're just making a joke that was what the liquid was was it we saw something coming out was that it yeah Bo you know who had it off Bo, anyway. <laughs> so, Hello. Dave noticed that on the right-hand side, when you were turning left, there was some liquid coming out. And what was the liquid? Slippy. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, fuel. my eyes were streaming, and I just thought, these, <laughs> this is what tests people, that, that it was like stunk of petrol, my eyes were streaming, and I'm just thinking, it's all a bit slippy. Uh, but, like, man, it's just it, un unbelievable. I feel like yeah. a different person. F forget all of that. You are the overall MG Owner Clubs champion. <sighs> Only 20 years in the waiting. I think my first <laughs> race was in about 2003, so we're about 20 years. I said I'd try and do it before I was 50. I'm now 51. It all goes to Baby Red, my daughter. Uh, thanks for watching at home. All the people back home, Henry, uh, Mark Wright Motorsport, uh, Ralph Saunders for building. He said to me he'd build me a championship with an engine. Took us a couple of years to get it right, but we got there and it's won it. So big Great. thanks to him. Great for Lewis coming and making sure that we've got four points. All the guys as mates. <laughs> Shut up. Now, you've got a few MGs. What can we see you in next year? Let, go and celebrate this one, but can we see yeah. you next year? What are you going to be driving? Oh, something before we... I've got a mod sports <laughs> midget that I'd, I'd like to try and relax a bit, but I don't know, let's have a few weeks off and then I'll be itching to go again. Fantastic. Yeah. Mate, congratulations, great season, well-deserved, well done. Thank you very much, pleasure Cheers, talking please. to you. Thank you, Cheers, buddy. Buddy. well done. <laughs> um, we try and get our third place finish. I know we've got plenty more races to go, so I think we'll leave it there for the time being. Coming up next, we've got the third and final race of the day in the Welsh Sport and Saloons Car Championship. Then we've got the pickup truck racing, and to end off the weekend, it is the British Truck Racing Championship. Don't go anywhere. Loads more to come. Second place, we were taking three seconds this weekend, so uh, a nice little point pull for you. Yep, thanks very much, Ewan. Congratulations to uh, Will Sharp. And he mentioned there that uh, his engine was built by Ralph Saunders. Well, that's his class rival, Lewis Saunders, his father. So uh, good sportsmanship there in the Lancaster Insurance MG Owners Club Championship. So another finale coming up next, which is for the Welsh Sports and Saloons. That's our next race over 15 minutes. The pickup trucks then have their last race of the weekend and then our final truck race of the weekend so we've just got the grid through for our welsh sports and saloons cars there last race of the year i can see the cupra out on track for wayne spiller he'll line up on the third row of the grid it's chris everill in pole position with his ginetta going for a hat trick of wins damian longatano in the west field alongside him on the second row ruben taylor in the peugeot 206 cc alongside gareth johns ginetta Robert Rees on row three in the BMW Mini alongside Wayne Spiller's Coupe, certainly on Cupra. Row four, Craig Attard in his Mazda RX-8 alongside Alan Smith in the NMR Kawasaki sports car. 
Row five, Roger Dowden, Stavrian and Mike Cook's BMW. Then on row six, we'll have Andrew Williams. He'll be in the RX-8s, owned by Wayne Spiller. Verity Banks in the Fiesta alongside him. Then we've got... Um, well, it won't be Aaron Edmonds. He won't be there because he crashed out earlier on. Aaron's fine, though, thankfully. Derry Davies is back out. The Darian is there. That's good to see. Watch for him coming through the field. And number 70, Fabio Lafarelli, moving to the back of the grid because he's changed car. Remember I mentioned the VW Corrado with the bike engine? It's at the back of the grid. I didn't know he brought two cars with him as well. Seems to be a theme of this weekend, doesn't it? So watch for that Corrado. It's uh, another bike engine machine. He's got out of the Mini and into his Corrado for this final race of the season. This is going to be a good one. There's some quick cars at the back of the grid here. Wayne Spiller getting used to the uh, new Seat Leon Cupra TCR car. I think it is a Seat, that one. Actually, I can see a Seat badge on the grill. Some are Seats, some are Cupras. 30-second board is held aloft. I'm looking forward to this. Watch for Derry Davies coming through. We're finally, hopefully, going to see what his Darian can do with the uh, two-litre Vauxhall Millington-tuned engine. The car built in Wales would be quite fitting if he could take a win here. He's struggling with a misfire today. So Everill and Longotano on the front row. They'll be fighting for the overall victory. It's Reuben Taylor, Gareth John, Robert Rees, there's uh, Spiller at the wheel of the Cupra Seat Leon. And there's Fabio Lofarelli's Carano. What an awesome looking beast that is. Looks a bit like Matt Simpson's old National Hot Rod. He had a Carano for a time before switching to a Vauxhall Tigra. So let's see if this is any quicker for Fabio Lafarelli than his Mini. Looks great, doesn't it? At the back there, there is Derry Davies, the fastest butcher in Wales. It is Darian. There's Andrew Williams in the uh, Master RX-8, donated by Wayne Spiller after his engine blew in his Clio. So, so, season finale time for the Welsh sports and saloon cars, then. Will it be a hat-trick for... Chris Everill in pole position? Can Damien Longatano stop it? minutes of racing to come. Revs rise, ready for the rolling starts. And here we go. Now down to the first corner, Damien Longatano gets the lead over Chris Everill. Hang on a second. Showing at the top of the timing screen is Verity Banks. We hadn't been told this, this is being run as a handicap race. So drivers have been given, oh, and Derry Davies retires to the pits again. That didn't last long. Right, this race is being run by the look of the timing screen as a handicap race. Yes, the uh, drivers have been given credit maps, so this is a bit like the um, if you saw the classic touring car race at the end of last year when the Trabants from the grid with Guy Martin driving one. It's the same format as that. So drivers have been given credit laps as follows, and they have to make up the handicap. Verity Banks has been given four credit laps in the Fiesta, so she's effectively the leader on handicap now. Wayne Spiller's Cupra, Craig Attard's uh, Mazda, Alan Smith, Roger Dowden, Mike Cook and 
um, Andrew Williams have all been given two credit laps. One lap for Robert Rees, Fabio Lafarelli in the gear, Corrado and Ruben Taylor. Is, where's Chris Everall going? Then he went off at the hairpin there as uh, Damian Longatano gets past him. But uh, they, uh, they are uh, on one credit lap, those drivers, so they've all got to try and uh, make up their handicaps. So your leader, having been given extra laps, is Verity Banks. We've got a yellow flag uh, up there at the hairpin. Someone's gone off. It's uh, Mike Cook's BMW. So the only car that didn't have any credit laps was Derry Davies, and he's out. Because Taylor, Longatano and Everill all have one to uh, make up. Yeah. No, they started off scratch. They've completed one lap now. I hope you're following this. Banks had four credit laps. So she's completed one. So she's effectively completed five laps now, which is why she's leading the race technically by two laps on handicap. They've all got to catch her up. It's all based on the results of the previous race. The handicapper has worked this out. Fastest lap of the race recorded by Damien Lombatano. Let's concentrate on the battles for position because Fabio Lafarelli is flying through the field in that Corrado. I reckon he could be in with a chance of a win on handicap here. Slides through the hairpin, gets past Gareth John in the Ginetta. They're already catching Verity Banks up. I could hear John Ward on the circuit commentary reading out numbers and laps, and I wondered if they were going to change the format to a handicap race. This is their little end of season uh, entertainment here for the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. So apologies for the uh, confusion there. We weren't told in advance that was going to happen. There's Verity Banks. Now she's technically leading this race on corrected time. In second place, as you can see on the timing tower on the left, is Andrew Williams in the Mazda RX-8. And Wayne Spiller is third. So the quicker cars have got to catch up their way through the field. Chris Everill's just done the fastest lap, 1 minute 0.794. There's Williams in the Mazda. He's in second. Or is he? No, Spiller's got past him now. So he's second on corrected time. Williams third. And it'll all shuffle around. You can see it's shuffling around as I talk to you. Now, there's Roger down. Yeah, Wayne Spiller is third. Alan Smith fourth. It changes every time a car completes a lap. Craig Attard's Mazda is fifth. And Roger down at sixth. Longatano is twelfth. And Everill thirteenth. They're the quickest cars on track. 15 minutes. Not a lot of time for them to uh, catch up. So Longatano leads on track, but on corrected time he's 12th, if that makes sense. Chadowden chasing Alan Smith in his new acquisition, the NMR Kawasaki. Attractive little two-seater sports car, and then that tiny little Davrian. So can Verity Banks stay ahead then? She was given two more laps than everybody else, so she effectively started with four laps. And uh, a lot of uh, most others got two or one lap given to them, so Banks effectively started two laps ahead of the field. Here's Wayne Spiller catching up to the back of Fabio Lafarelli. Spiller could be in with a good chance in, in his new acquisition as Seat all over the back of the autocross built Corrado. Did Fabio Lafarelli have insider knowledge? Did he change cars to try and beat the handicap? I wonder. All a bit of fun. This uh, race is, as far as I know, not for points in the championship. Championship's already been won by this man, Wayne Spiller. Across the line goes Ruben Taylor showing on corrected time in 11th place and Spiller takes to the grass. Oh dear. Yeah, Fultz damaged the splitter on that Cupra. Running wide there trying to pass Fabio Lafarelli. Banks has completed eight laps. Still well ahead of the field. They haven't caught her up yet. Spiller is in second place. So he's leading the chase of that Ford Fiesta. It's a bit like a tortoise and hare situation or hare and hounds. Look at the grass he's collected in that splitter. Hope that doesn't cause him to overheat. 
Well, a shame he lost Derry Davies right at the start. There's Andrew Williams. He's in third place. Now, on the same lap as Spinner, about nine and a half seconds behind him. They've got to chase down Verity Banks in the Fiesta. There she is. Quicker cars. Yes, here comes Spinner. Now, he's still showing as a lap behind, so he's got still got quite a way to go. There's still eight and a half minutes of this race left. We're not at half distance yet in this Welsh Sports and Saloon handicap race. One of our YouTube commenters says, I love the formats these folks think of. It's highly entertaining to watch. Very confusing to commentate on that. So Banks being uh, passed by the quicker cars, but of course they're all laps behind them. So she's still leading. Meantime, these two are battling for the scratch lead. Longatano gets past Everill, but they're three laps down on the leader. Should be working together to catch up. Theory is they all finish together, of course. The handicaps make them all equal at the end. That's good fun, all the same. We always say motorsport should be fun. Longatano's now catching one of the Mazdas. There's Mike Cook in the BMW. He had a spin earlier on. He's got Ruben Taylor behind him. So that's the 11th place car catching the 7th place car for position. I think. <laughs> It's like a high-speed time trial, almost. Peugeot goes through. Oh, Wayne Spiller's pulled into the pits. He must be overheating after collecting that grass. So that's our nearest challenger gone. And so it's Craig Attard's Mazda now in second place behind Banks, but still a lap behind the Fiesta. Verity Banks could win this. Sometimes, uh, if it doesn't quite work out, you can have the slowest car on track win. There's Craig Attard, he's now second. He's removed his rear wing. Now he goes through there past the Fiesta. Now was that a pass for the lead? We're gonna to have to wait until they cross the timing lead to see if he's just taken the lead, whether he's caught the Fiesta up. I think he's still a lap behind. He's got another circuit to go round. There's Longatano and uh, Everill. So they're making up the time now as well. They're getting closer together. Six minutes to go. Let's have a look as we cross the timing line. Yes, Banks and Attard are now on the same lap, so he's unlapped himself, but he's still over a minute behind. I think uh, Banks goes, no, Banks goes through, yeah. So um, he's just over a minute behind, one minute, 15 seconds, he's got to make up. This is the Mazda, the Rocket Dog racing car. He's got to go round again and pass the Fiesta again to take the lead. It's Andy Williams in second in his Mazda. Well, in Wayne Spiller's Mazda, but you get the idea. Attard is now third. There's eight and a half seconds between those two, so the Mazda swapped around. Alan Smith is fourth on corrected time. There goes the Ginetta. Where's Fabio Lafarelli? He's seventh, so he's made up two places on that last lap. He's got ahead of Robert Rees, and... And then it changes again, you see, because now other cars have completed their laps. So you can't call places until everybody's completed a lap. By that time, the leaders come round again. Just let the timing screen do the work. Goodness knows how commentators called <laughs> handicap places in the days before there was live timing. Thank goodness for TSL Timing's computer system. There's Verity Bank. She's still leading this. So she's completed 11 laps, so has Craig Attard, and so has Andrew Williams. Alan Smith has as well, so they're all on the same lap now. But it, as Banks comes round again, just over four minutes of the race to go. Yeah, she's now completed 12, so she's nearly a lap ahead of everybody else. They haven't quite caught her up. There's uh, Wayne Spiller, who's been into the pits, so that's put him out of contention clear that grass out of the front splitter and stop the car overheating. He's ahead of Robert Rees. 
in the BMW Mini. It's fairly close for third place on corrected time because on the timing screen, Craig Attard is just behind Alan Smith. I think he's just gone through to take third in the uh, NMR. These two are still the uh, scratch race leaders. Everill and Longatano, they've been battling it out all race long, but they're 11th and 12th on corrected time because they were handicapped extra laps. flag being waved to warn the slower cars that uh, the rocket ship of Westfield is approaching. There's less than three minutes to go and I think Verity Banks has done enough. I think she's going to hang on and win this. There's Andrew Williams showing in second place at the moment, but things can change, of course. Robert Rees has made up a fair few places as well. There's a close fight in the midfield, so Rees showing up in sixth at the moment. It could all change again as people complete their laps. But I don't think they're going to catch the Fiesta here. There she is, and Verity Banks who's been at the tail end with no class rivals in class one after uh, Russell Haggerty's Ford KA was a no-show. Could win this. Look what's in her mirror, though. The Westfield and the Ginetta. This is going to be interesting. There goes the Westfield. Rockets through like it's standing still. But that's handicap racing. A couple of laps left now. Gareth John and Wayne Spiller coming through. Now they're starting to catch up. But it's Williams, Attard and Smith, the next ones in the order. As uh, Chris, uh, Chris Everill goes wide, a cloud of tyre smoke. That's an overshoot. What's going on? There's cars going everywhere at the hairpin. Is there fluid down? Because everybody's just gone straight on at the hairpin. This isn't a drifting competition, Mike Cook. Chris Everill went off wide as well, and Wayne Spiller went straight on. Right, Craig Attard showing in second, or is it Williams? No, Williams has now come through second and still 22 seconds down. He's not going to make that up in less than a minute. So Verity Pax is going to win this race. On scratch, it's still Longatano that's leading. Yeah, Longatano and Everill have cut through what are the midfielders, effectively. And they're up to sixth and seventh. But Banks has made use of the handicap, but she's slowed right down. She's trying to take the chequered flag, but she's going to be a few seconds too early. She's going to have to do another lap. No chequered flag, 12 seconds early. Now, let's see what the gap is. It was 22 seconds back to Andy Williams in the Mazda RX-8. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, fluid on the track, so uh, she's locked up this time. Nervous times for our race leader. Attard goes through. Watch for Williams. There's the Mazda. The gap is 18 seconds, so he's not going to do it. He's closing at the rates. Well, his last lap was um, a 109. Banks was a 121, but she was trying to delay him for the chequered flag. There's Longatano side by side with Everill. Now, it's when the um, scratch winner crosses the line that the chequered flag goes out. So the chequered flag has gone out. Mike Cook has stopped. And so we just need Verity Banks to complete this lap. And I think she's going to win on handicap. The uh, scratch win goes to Chris Everill by 0.15 of a second ahead of Damien Longatano. The chequered flag went out when they crossed the line, but Verity Banks is 10 seconds ahead of Andrew Williams as she started this lap, and she's going to hang on to take the win. Here she comes. 
There's the chequered flag, and there's our handicap winner. What a bizarre race. Just waiting to see uh, the uh, two Mazdas and the NMR Kawasaki come in now. Over the line they come. Just waiting for Andrew Alan Smith to see where he finishes. Is Smith going to get second? No. And Williams comes through. Has he made up the gap on that last lap? Because Banks did a 119. Williams has won it. Williams made up the handicap on the very last lap on corrected time. So it confused me as well. And handicap adjusted. It is Williams who snatches the win by 1.87 of a second. Banks was slower through those last two laps. And Williams, with his best lap of the race on the last lap, 1 minute 7.946, has snatched it. Banks will be gutted. Didn't quite catch the uh, Fiesta, but uh, on corrected time, Andrew Williams in Wayne Spiller's Mazda wins the most confusing race I've ever commentated on. So there's the uh, results on corrected time. Andrew Williams with that quicker last lap just did enough to close up the gap on Verity Banks. Third for Alan Smith, Fabio Lufarelli appears twice in the result for some reason. It should be Craig Attard in fourth and uh, Lufarelli fifth, I think. But then again, what do I know? <laughs> I couldn't follow that race at all. What we do know is that Williams has won it. <laughs> and FAO Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship, please don't do that again. <laughs> I jest, of course. It's a bit, all a bit of fun for the end of the season. And Williams wins it. One of several drivers to have raced two cars this weekend. Ahead of Verity Banks and Alan Smith. That was a great effort in the closing laps there by Andrew Williams to make up. He made up on that last lap 12 seconds to take that win. There's not many racing drivers who can say they've done that. Banks second, Smith third, then Attard, Lufferelli, John, Rees, Everill and Longatano made it up to eighth and ninth. Then Spiller after his pit stop, Ruben Taylor, Roger Dowden and Mike Cook, and of course we lost Derry Davies. Let's see what you and Dunlop made of that one. Uh, cheers, Dave. I fully concur. What a confusing race. However, it came down to 1.7 seconds in the end. Uh, Verity Banks just missing out on what would have been her first ever overall win. We'll speak to her shortly. Um, look at this machine right here, the number 13 of Alan Smith. I mean, it is quite ridiculous it's incredible well can we speak to you whilst you're in the car is that easier Pardon? can we well, we're going to speak to you whilst you're in the car uh, third place in the race congratulations first of all did you know uh, no i thought i'd done something wrong <laughs> third place congratulations um, it's an odd race isn't it uh, yeah it's first time i've done it and i've only been driving this since this morning so first, Pardon? nine o'clock was the first time i got in this car wow do you like it <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> mate, congratulations. Uh, good start to your career in it. Well done. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Uh, let's speak to Verity. First time in the car this morning. Um, he thought he'd been told off while you were pulling him in. Uh, Verity. So, first of all, well done. So, so close to number one up there as well. Yeah, it's, it was a good sort of race this morning. It's like I was really sort of pushing and just just letting it all go. Yeah. Um, did you know where you were in the standings? 
not at all. <laughs> I was just going around, just just doing my thing and hoping for the best. Really. And it was uh, it was 1.7 seconds off a first place as well. I mean, it was so like odd that the winner actually didn't know they'd won and they'd moved on, but pulled into second place. Must be thrilled with the end of your weekend here in Wales. Absolutely, you know, it's like it wasn't expected. Yeah. You know, it was so yeah, it's great fun. Go cool. go and enjoy yourself, Adam. Thank you. Thank you so much, Verity. Uh, there we go. That is handicap racing. Do you know what? Strange, but very, very enjoyable. Again, seeing cars like this, the Fiesta next to this orange beauty here um, on a finish line, is um, you'll never see things like this ever again, if very, very often at all. Um, two more races to come today. Let's get things the right way around. It is, of course, the oh, it's the pickup truck racing coming up next. Um, well. Oh, what a day that's been for them. One more race to come. We still go to Brands Hatch on the 4th, 5th of November, but that is going to be a thriller. One more time, and we finish the day with the Truck Racing Championship. For the time being, let's stick to pickups. Over to you, Dave. Yes, the pickups are ready and on the grid then. We'll give you the grid uh, in just a moment, but uh, just before we get the rolling start underway, we caught up with uh, one or two of the drivers earlier on ahead of this final race of the day. And ahead of our last race of the day in the pickups, uh, Dale, race number one went very well for you. Race two, different story. Uh, what happened? Um, diff. Diff decided he didn't want to play ball anymore, so that was uh, the end of our race, which was uh, very frustrating. All the hard work we've done through qualifying and into the first race to just claw the points back, and yeah, mechanical failure. I mean, talk about like a roller coaster day. It's like we right up there after race one. You came into the week at 110 points down, pulled that back to about 30, and now Reese has gone on and moved 200 points ahead again. It's, it's a sensational day, isn't it? I mean, for a spectator and a neutral, brilliant for you guys emotionally a bit of a, uh, a wreck yeah it is yeah spectator views uh, should be uh, hopefully putting on a good show for everyone watching here and on uh, obviously on tv and that but uh yeah it's i don't know what to say i just it just going to keep my head down i'm gonna, gonna have some fun now it's yeah we've got we everyone's saying it's not over anything could happen still but it's a tall order but i mean we'll, we'll keep going anything can happen we've seen in two races today anything can happen starting from fifth on the grid what are the tactics just get my head down and just go for it i'm just yeah just and uh, finally the problems from race two all sorted all good to go simple yeah, fix hopefully yeah we're all good we've got another axle in there so fingers crossed that one plays ball <laughs> race three who knows what happens good luck who knows thank you cheers, cheers. Buddy, thanks a lot uh, so two races so far two incredible stories Dale Gent still in second position, chasing, chasing Rhys Jones. Who knows? Over to you, Dave. Talk us through it. Thanks, Ewan. Well, they're already on their way round on their rolling start then. We'll quickly run you through the grid. Tom Hutchins and Matt Simpson on the front row. Second row, Rhys Jones and Alan Cooper. Paul Tompkins and Chris Brockhurst on the third row. Row four is Dan Fisher and Ryan Hadfield. Dale Gents and Steve Thompson, row five. On the sixth row, Richard Ayling and Dean Tompkins. And Russell Smith and Eric Bolton round out a 14 truck grid. No Simon Ward, no Mark Willis. They were drafted damage in race one. A shame for Mark Willis because he was right up at the sharp end, had a win here, if I remember right last year. The grid based on the aggregate results of the two races earlier with the top six flipped around. I reckon Matt Simpson will be the one to watch here from the outside of the front row. Tom Hutchins on pole in the ex-George Tariki truck. Also well up is Reese Jones and Alan Cooper on the second row. Chris Brockhurst had a good day from the outside of row three. Plenty of potential winners in this field of course. They don't uh, get unleashed until they get to Debeni, the left-hander, and towards the crossing. Dale Gents alongside Steve Thompson. Looks like Richard Ayling is missing as well, the number 13. Unlucky for him. Now the uh, revs begin to rise. The pack about to be unleashed. Here we go. And up towards the crossing we go. Matt Simpson is going to take the lead. It's uh, with uh, the start being the uh, section coming out of the left-hander. It's actually advantageous to start second on the grid. Alan Cooper getting sideways there, loses out to Reese Jones for third place. Paul Tompkins has been shuffled back to sixth, and Ryan Hadfield gets a knock there from Dale Gents. Further down the grid, of course, after his retirement in race two, a lock-up from Dean Tompkins. He's been all over the place all weekend, pretty much. It's Matt Simpson who leads. Hutchins in second. Something flew off. There was a bit of contact in there. I think that was Dean Tompkins got uh, a bit of a tap from somebody. 
was a piece of white bodywork. Anyway, yes, the uh, rear balance has come off the uh, number 21, I think. They're all going to get round the first lap, and it's Simpson from Hutchins, Jones, Cooper, Brockhurst and Paul Tompkins. Dan Fisher side by side with Dean Tompkins as they come over the line. Start to sort themselves out. Paul Tompkins up the inside, tries to take Chris Brockhurst, trying to take Alan Cooper. He leans on Cooper. That was my motocross through the hairpin there. They're still side by side as they come out of uh, Spitfires towards Debeni. Cooper's got the inside for the left-hander and will keep the place over the crossing. So Paul Tompkins slides back to the inside. Matt Simpson's escaping, as I expected, at the front of the field in the number 30 from the front row. Reese Jones is up to second ahead of Tom Hutchins, so he'll go after Matt Simpson. On key, he'll be avoiding track limits penalties. A lock up there from Paul Tompkins, but he gets it round Brooklands. No handicaps here, just a straight race to the flag over 20 minutes. Brilliant speed from these pickup truck races with their race tuned two litre engines built by Sonny Howard. Starting to, oh, somebody going off there, that's Dan Fisher running. Well, I've seen him do that a few times. These pickups built by Sonny Howard, long time uh, race promoter and innovator, and wallop! Paul Tompkins overshoots the hairpin, he takes out Tom Hutchins, that sent everybody scattering behind. Amazingly, Hutchins able to keep going. We look at the right rear of the car, that's just been harpooned, and Dale Gent's caught up in that as well. That looks, it looks to me as though Paul Tompkins has been struggling with his brakes because we saw him lock up at Brooklands last time through and then he just misses his braking point completely for the hairpin and bang into the side of Tom Hutchins. And there's damage to the number 12. I can see smoke there. Is he going to be able to keep going? He's got Alan Cooper up behind him. They've been battling all day, those two. Now you can see the damage on the front of uh, the Paul Tompkins number 12 truck. Have a look at that again. Watch Tompkins up the inside. Locks up the rear brakes. He's lost it. One. Luckily, uh, didn't hit uh, the door of Tom Hutchins' truck. And uh, luckily, Tom is uh, sitting on the other side. It's uh, a left-hand drive pickup truck. NASCAR style. Again, he's uh, struggling with the braking. Yeah, there's something wrong with that number 12 truck, not just the front-end damage. Up the inside, Eric Bolton going well. He's attacking... Chris Brockhurst, Brockhurst uh, very strong in the earlier races, but a little bit off the boil this time as Bolton gets it sideways. Got wide onto the grass there as well. Yes, uh, Bolton undoes all his good work. He's heading for the rallycross course. Back with Dean Tompkins now. So plenty of incidents again. I was uh, about to say, these pickups built by uh, Sonny Howard, long-time motorsports uh, promoter, started off in motorsports as a mechanic for the legendary Barry Lee in his days in rallycross. Barry Lee was one of the first drivers in Eurocar, which was uh, introduced by Sonny Howard, the V6 and subsequently the V8s. It's been long been Sonny's ambition to bring NASCAR racing to the UK. And so many attempts over the years. A great innovator, Sonny and uh, his wife Barbara so much for club-level motorsports on ovals and circuits. Steve Thompson, welcome returning, chasing down Dan Fisher. Paul Tompkins still going, still holding off Alan Cooper. This is the battle for third. Out in front, it's still Simpson. Leads by four seconds ahead of Reese Jones. Here are the leaders. Matt Simpson, fastest lap of the race. One minute, two point eight five two. That's a full second quicker than anyone else has managed. Over the line he goes. In the 103s this time through. Five seconds clear of Jones, he's pulled away by another second. Matt Simpson dominating this race. The rest of the pack strings over the line. Jones second, Tompkins third, then Cooper, Brockhurst and uh, Ryan Hadfield up into sixth place. He's running well, looking for his best finish of his pickup career so far. All 14, all 13 trucks rather still running, because of course the number 13, Richard Ayling, didn't start. A few teams with some repairs to do ahead of Brands Hatch in November. 
30 seconds covers the field. Russell Smith running at the uh, back of the pack. Matt Simpson continues to lead, runs uh, a race exhaust business based in his hometown Slough in Berkshire. Established that some 20 years ago. Supplies all facets of British motorsports. Inside Dale Jets on the recovery after that off on the uh, first corner goes past Steve Thompson. That's P9. But Gent is losing ground all the time in the championship standings. Reese Jones already looking good to retain his title. or so of this race to go. Dan Fisher on the back of uh, Ryan Hadfield. Dale Gents gets the tighter line there behind them. De desperate here to move up the order. Simpson leads, he's nearly six seconds clear of Reese Jones now, but Sir Jones in second place, knows that uh, Dale Gents is down the order, his pit crew will be telling him exactly where everything is, the pickup trucks have uh, spotters in their crews, so they'll be able to uh, relay him what's going on, as Matt Simpson continues to race clear. battered and bruised, taped together after that incident with Mark Willis and company in race one. Dropping back from Matt Simpson, but uh, he's in a safe second place. He's three seconds clear of Paul Tompkins and Alan Cooper. Is Tompkins still struggling with that battered... 12 truck after that contact earlier on. I know the brake issues seem to have uh, gone away. Here's a battle further back. Dean Tompkins now in P6. Chris Brockhurst behind him. No, he's P5 now, I, su I should say. So Tompkins has taken Chris Brockhurst. There's Ryan Hadfield with Dale Gent on his tail. There's Fisher and Bolton behind them. Then it's Thompson. Tom Hutchins is still going as well further back after he was taken out earlier on. And Russell Smith at the back. Chris Brockhurst. Excellent results in the uh, first two races. I nearly said the heat races today. They are all the same length, so not really two heats in a final. do here, the number 83, the Dale Earnhardt look-alike, well Dale Earnhardt was known as the intimidator in his incredible NASCAR career and uh, Dale Gent needs to do some intimidating to try and move up the order, he's on the tail of Ryan Hadfield, former F2 stock car racer, former Ginetta sports car racer,
little bit wide there, Paul Tompkins coming into the crossing. Alan Cooper could have a stab for third place here, but he needs to be mindful of what happened earlier on when he had that collision through there. Thinks better of it. Still all over the back of the number 12. Matt Simpson, barring any mechanical uh, maladies, has got this race in the bag. He's uh, nearly eight seconds clear now of Reese Jones. Paul Tompkins, or Dean Tompkins rather, sliding there in the background in fifth position. slide there as well that's from Jets he's not closing up let's have a look at the lap times compared to Brockhurst oh before we do that we seem to have lost uh, Brian Hadfield where's he gone he's come through in 12th place so Hadfield's had a moment somewhere and his last lap he lost about 10 seconds Find out what's happened there, whether he's uh, gone off somewhere as Alan Cooper continues to attack Paul Tompkins. He's having a look on the inside at uh, Brooklands. This could be the move finally made by Alan Cooper. But Paul Tompkins able to outdrag him. And he holds the place. Seven minutes to go. Simpson's already gone through to complete his 12th lap. What's the league gap going to be over Jones? This time through, it's nearly nine seconds now. Still the main feature is this battle for third. Cooper up the inside of the hairpin. Can he make it stick this time? Just gives him a little kiss on the way past. And Cooper's finally done it. Now he's got to hold it for the uh, next few laps. Still plenty of uh, distance to go in this final race of the day for the pickup truck racing championship here at Pembroke. Reese Jones in the second. Here's a scrap further back. This is Eric Bolton, Dan Fisher, and the number four of Steve Thompson. Number changed from 41 in an emergency. Number four always used to be uh, the late and great Pete Stevens in pickups, who sadly passed away in 2020. And it's a one off return for number four for Steve Thompson this weekend. An emergency change needed because he couldn't use his son's number. A bit of dust being kicked up there by Dan Fisher. He's been sliding him out all over the place this weekend. Chasing Eric Bolton. He's been a bit sideways as well. Not had a lot of luck in the uh, number 68. The ex Ford Fiesta racer, among other things. They loop their way through the hairpin. their way through the crossing. This is the battle for eighth position. Behind them we see uh, Tom Hutchins still going strong after that contact earlier on. Ryan Hatfield is down to 12th and Paul Tompkins at the inside retakes third place from Alan Cooper. So this battle is not done yet. There's our leader. Simpson nine and a half seconds clear. This is a dominant drive by the former BTCC race winner. Pushed so hard, I remember, in that BTCC race at Alston Park that he blew the engine up in the process on the last lap and uh, couldn't do the rest of the meeting. But a win's a win. And as Paul and Alan Cooper battle it out, here comes Dean Tompkins into the fray. He's got a second wind in this race and he's sideways there. He's throwing that machine round like it's a, a short oval hot rod. They're lapping Russell Smith. They've not met him in a great place there. They've got to go around the outside. Cooper over the kerb. Now, can Dean Tompkins get into the podium fights? Dale Gent is still P7 behind Chris Brockhurst. He's rather stuck there. 
So Reese Jones is going to extend his advantage in the championship with three races to go at Brands Hatch. He's a Brands Hatch local as well from Hearn Bay. Dale Jenkins from Burke Hampstead. Dean Tompkins ready to attack Alan Cooper. Now an attack, that's Gent! Oh, Dale Gent, if he didn't have bad luck, he'd have none at all. Contact with Chris Brockhurst, that's left um, the um, marker bale there in the middle of the road on the hairpin. So Recticel uh, block, I think. Neil Gent gets the uh, muck and grass out from underneath his pickup. He's going to be really fed up in that 83. Disastrous day for Dale Gent. And he caught the tail end of that. Be interested to see a replay of uh, what happened there. There's less than three minutes of the race to go now, though. And Matt Simpson's heading for victory. He's over 10 seconds clear of Reese Jones now. This is the main focus, the battle for the final podium place. Let's have a look again. As they came into the hairpin. We only caught the uh, tail end of it. In fact, the red flag, I can tell you, is coming out. Yes, there. There must have been contact with um, Chris Brockhurst, I think. Russell Smith was there as well. So may maybe uh, Dale missed his breaking point because he was distracted by the back marker. We didn't see. The red flag has come out because of debris on the hairpin as a result of that. We've got the rector cell block in the middle of the road. The last thing you want is a chicane in the middle of that tight hairpin. So with two and a half minutes to go, the red flag comes out, the race will not be restarted, and it will be a win for Matt Simpson. So Simpson the winner, Reese Jones second. We'll wait to see where Dale Gent is classified after that uh, late spin. I think it'll be P7. That's the last thing he needed. Okay, so Matt Simpson pulls up on the grid. He'll be directed into Park Ferme. We've been told the race will not be restarted. So provisionally, it is a win for Matt Simpson ahead of Reese Jones by 10.2 seconds. Result taken from the end of lap 15. Third place, we're going to Paul Tompkins ahead of Alan Cooper and Dean Tompkins. Great fight between those three. Chris Brockhurst in P6 ahead of Dale Gent, only seventh. Weekend to forget for him. Eric Bolton, eighth ahead of Dan Fisher, then Steve Thompson, Tom Hutchins, Ryan Hadfield, and Russell Smith, the final finisher, a lap down. A fraught weekend, then, to say the least, for our pickup truck racers. We've got one race to go here at Pembrey for our British Truck Racing Championship drivers. It looks like the pickups. Are they pulling up in uh, Park Ferme or are they heading straight back to the paddock? Uh, yes, I think they are in Park Ferme. So hopefully you and Dunlop will be down there to talk to them shortly. Cheers, Dave. Bit of confusion over the end of that race, but regardless, we've got our top three here. I'm going to try and grab Paul Tompkins first of all in third place. Paul, oh, look at the chest. I love this. <laughs> Had to work hard for that one. <laughs> Ah, oh, very hard. I'll, I'll proper mess up at the start. I need to go and apologise in a minute, but yeah, it was hard work. What happened? I don't think I saw it. I just outbreak myself going in the yeah. airpin and hit someone in the side. Okay. Not intentionally, but it happens. Um, yeah, other than that, another third. But happy with your weekend's work? Yeah, very happy. Looking Apart from what I've done there, but you know, um, a few weeks before Brands Hatch. Looking forward to that one. Yeah. 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 
mate. Always the best one, isn't it? <laughs> the last one. It's been a long day. Go and enjoy yourself. Yeah, thank Cheers, you. Buddy. Well done. Uh, Reese Jones here. Um, again, all fell in his favour once again. Um, Reese, um, it was like a, Matt was quite far right ahead. You were quite far ahead of third place. It was like a little walk in the park there for a second, wasn't it? Yeah, well, we just eased it off to bring it home, really. Yeah. Matt had checked out. Start procedure is not the best here. I, I, if you're on that front and the person don't go, you're stuck. Yeah, yeah. And if he goes, you know, you, when you've got someone experienced as Matt on the front row, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just going to check out if he can. Um, fell in your favour with Dale, unfortunately, having a bit of trouble for this. I think it was ninth or so. So Brands Hatch, um, a few races there, but it's looking quite tidy right now. Yeah, we've had a bit of luck go our way this weekend after the first race. Oh, which, yeah, Championship is made up of a bit of luck, unfortunately. Yeah, it's uh, been a, a swings and roundabouts weekend, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we've both, uh, every time we've been to a circuit that we've both gone bad at, you know, Donington, we both had bad runs and then we've come in, we've both had, after, you know, I've had a better run now, but yeah. the beginning was quite bad, so yeah, it yeah, swings and roundabouts, but it's unfortunate for him, I'd rather it be close and we'll be totally, racing. Yeah, so, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But um, turned into a great weekend of the end, well done. Yeah, thank you very Cheers, much. Thank yeah. you, mate. Have a safe journey home. Uh, let's speak to Matt over here too. Uh, Matt, two wins out of three at Lydon Hill, the last round out. We are going over to the truck shortly, but I'm going to jump in. Um, great way to uh, end the weekend, mate. Yeah, mega after the disappointment of race two being taken out. It, uh, we made a few alterations for that last one. and I've got, it's, it's the best the truck's ever felt since I've been in it, if I'm honest. It just I mean... felt so... I could just do what I like of it. I was going to ask, do you mind, what were the alterations? Because you were in a different class in that one. I don't ask that man over there, Dave Longhurst. <laughs> but I wouldn't have thought he'd tell you either. <laughs> no worries at all. But no, it just, it, the truck was just, I could just do what I wanted with it. Mm. Literally, I could go in as hard as I wanted to. It had just changed direction and it had just drive off the corner. It just, yeah, it's absolutely mega. It was, just, it was a pleasure to drive and I didn't want it to finish. <laughs> We've got um, a few uh, weeks before Brands Hatch. Looking forward to that one? Yeah, yeah I love Brands. Um, wet or dry, so... It's just we've worked so hard get, trying to get the truck faster and faster and it's never really shown our true potential until obviously the last meeting or two. Um, but it's just so nice to put it all together and just show in that last race what we've, had, you know, what we've actually got. Brilliant. Go and enjoy the bubbles, enjoy your trophy, see you at Brand Touch, mate. Look forward to Cheers, it. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Matt. Uh, there we go then, last race of the day that is not a British truck racing one. Our headliners are coming up once again next, so I'm going to throw to Pointy and Dave to run us through our last race of the weekend here in South Wales. Cheers, Ewan. Yes, uh, race five coming up for the British Truck Racing Championship. The last of six races this weekend, but uh, badged as race five. The results of race three determines the grid for this one, which was won by David Jenkins. So the uh, top eight will be reversed. It'll be Ricky Collett on pole. While we wait for the trucks to come out onto grid, let's see who, what point he's been up to, shall we? So here we are, just before the last race of the weekend. We've had finally got a chance to catch it with Ricky Collett. Uh, racing legend, really. Yeah, you know, it's, we've not had a chance to catch it with you, have we? So how's your weekend been so far? It's been OK. We've, we, we could have done better, I think, in the last race. We got, got held out to dry. So uh, I lost a few places on that one, but uh, hopefully we're starting up front and we'll keep there. Yeah, this is why we've come to talk to you. You're starting in pole position, reverse grid from earlier on this morning. Um, it's, it's obviously uh, quite a lot of pressure to, to make that, that first corner. Yeah, that's right. Get, uh, you know, last thing you want is all in me and you actually run up your... I oh, know, it's bad behind. enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so from your experience in racing, I bet you've had many a pole start. So what, what goes through your mind? What are you looking for? As soon as that light goes out, you know, what goes through your head preparing for that first bend? Just a clean getaway and then obviously making sure we don't beat us breaking point, don't outbreak yourself. Because there's no worse than skittering straight through the corner and looking like a wally. In, well, I was going to say, yeah, so something we saw uh, Michael Oliver do. I mean, he got pushed onto the grass somehow. When he got back on, locked up and went through the pack into the first hairpin, well, the first bend, and, yeah, everyone else just sailed past him after that. Yeah, well, I, I didn't see what happened there. They were, they were already parked up when I got there. Oh, right. So, yeah. so but when you did get that, oh, I see, I see. That'll be a red flag, that way, you thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That were it. One of four. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Good practice. It is good practice. And what do you think about Bradley Smith, eh? Three, three restarts, managing to get into first place on all of them, and then finally making it stick. Yeah, good, good on him, yeah. It, uh, I think it's his, it's his first one 
for a while. He's been his first one for a while, yeah, he's certainly not had one this weekend. I mean, we were talking to him earlier on, he had some, well, you of course know what it's like to come away from a weekend with serious damage. A few technical problems with our interview there, sorry about that. So it's uh, Ricky Collett, who we've just heard from there, is on pole for our final race of the weekend. It is MAN. Bradley Smith will start alongside him, still celebrating, no doubt, from his victory earlier on, his first ever in the championship. Second row, Craig Reed and Stephen Powell. Then on row three, it's Stuart Oliver and Ryan Smith. We'll uh, make sure Ryan is there. Hopefully he's repaired his rear suspension from that uh, previous race. Yes, he is there. Fourth row, Simon Reid, and earlier winner, David Jenkins. Fifth row of the grid is John Bowler and Simon Faulkner. Sixth row, Michael Oliver and Jock Borthwick. Michael Oliver is reading on the uh, notice board after that contact earlier on into the hairpin, got uh, a couple of penalty points on his licence. So in a bit of hot water with the clerk of the course for that one, he starts alongside Jock Borthwick. Tom O'Rourke and Neil Yates complete Division 1. And there's a gap and we've got uh, Division 2. Jim Bennett and Craig Evans head up the Division 2 field, followed by Paul Rivette and Adam Bintz. And then John Powell and hopefully Simon Cole, if he's repaired his problems from race three, which he failed to finish, so he'll be starting from the back. The TRP truck and trailer parts. DAF is in position. Uh, thanks to them and all our other partner sponsors of the British Truck Racing Championship. Freyhouse Trailers, Total Care, Vision Track, GBF Fuels, GT Tyres, MAN Truck and Bus, Road Transport Media and MV Commercial, among others. Thanks to all of them for uh, their help. Road Transport Media, the publishers of uh, Truck and Driver magazine. I'm sure you'll be able to uh, read about truck racing on a regular basis in there. So we're in position for the final race of what's been a very lively race, a very lively meeting this weekend here at Pembrey on BARC TV. And let's hope for no red flags this time. Four different winners so far. Ryan Smith, Stuart Oliver, David Jenkins and Bradley Smith in Division 1. Paul Rivette and John Powell, the winners in uh, Division 2. We'll try and add up the points, looking at the standings at the moment. In Division 1, Ryan Smith heads David Jenkins by 45 points. Stuart Oliver is a point behind Jenkins. Bradley Smith fourth in the championship, 106 points back. So the championship is between those top three. It's going to go down to the final weekend of the season. There will be 81 points on offer there. 15 points for a five race wins, a point for each fastest lap and one for pole position in qualifying. Same in Division 2, where it's much closer. Adam Bint heads Paul Rivette by just seven points. John Powell is 28 behind, Craig Evans 55 behind, so technically four drivers could still win the Division 2 title. Jim Bennett in fifth position is 96 points behind. What would be nice is to see Jim take uh, a race win before the season is out, but uh, he would uh, need others to find some misfortune. No disrespect to, no disrespect to uh, Jim, of course, one of the great characters of British truck racing. So here we go. Final action of the weekend. Ricky Collett and Bradley Smith on the front row. chaotic yet brilliant weekend it has been as always here at Pembrey and the se season finale down at Brands Hatch is going to be a very special one no Simon Cole at the back of the grid unfortunately his damage from race three proving terminal will we see another win for Bradley Smith will we see a first win in a long time for Ricky Collins looking back from Stuart Oliver's truck I'm looking forward to this race. This is going to be a lively one, I reckon, to round off the weekend. 
Jim Bennett heads Division 2 in the Isham Gravels, Seven Atkinson. On board with Simon Reid in the Avico. Starting alongside David Jenkins. See him weaving away there to warm his tyres up, making me dizzy. Final race of the weekend then for the British Truck Racing Championship. 15 minutes around the Pembrey circuit. Ricky Collett and Bradley Smith head the grid. Bradley Smith looking for his second win of the weekend. Second row of Craig Reed and Stephen Powell. Stuart Oliver and Ryan Smith on row three. Simon Reed and David Jenkins complete the top eights. The battle will still be joined in Division Two. Only seven points in the championship between Adam Bintz and Paul Rivet. They start together on the second row for Division Two. Here we go then, the last race of the weekend here at Pembrey gets underway. Ryan Smith's not hanging about, he's heading down the outside. He's going to try and make it three wide, it's the hairpin. We know that doesn't work, he moves in behind Bradley Smith. It's going to be Ricky Collett who has the lead. Now are they all going to get round? It looks like it. And uh, Stuart Oliver's rear-facing camera getting some attention from Simon Reid. Stuart Oliver onto the grass, he's been pushed wide there. Oliver on the grass, is he going to gather that up again? There's a bit of a traffic jam there, David Jenkins is slow, one of the reeds in trouble as well. We didn't quite see, Ryan Smith's on the grass as well, so we didn't quite see what happened there from the onboard of Stuart Oliver. He went off, I reckon somebody spun in there. Craig Reed's on the grass. So we'll try and get a replay of what happened there, but it's created a bit of a traffic jam. Adam Bint's gone to the front of Division 2 ahead of Craig Evans. But we'll pick up the order in Division 1 very shortly. Chaos on the first lap once again. It is Ricky Collitz from Bradley Smith. Stuart Oliver has saved it. He's in third place ahead of Simon Reid. John Bowler's up to fifth. And there's Jock Borth looking what's left of his MAN in seventh place as they come round to complete the opening lap. Jock just happy to be back racing again after the injuries he suffered, forced him to miss three rounds earlier this season. Down the pit straight, Craig Reed is pulling up, he doesn't want to stop there, that's on the track, on the exit of Senna. Well, that's going to be a red flag certainly if the truck is stopped right on the track there. Clearly something has broken for Craig Reed. David Jenkins is being shuffled back down the order at the hairpin behind Tom O'Rourke, behind Stephen Powell has Craig Reed got going again. Is the race going to continue? No, he hasn't. He's right on the track there and the leaders are coming round towards him. Look out, Craig Reed. He's got to move out of the way. They'll see him. They're going to get through on the inside. And Craig Reed is moving. Oh, that's dicey there at the far end of the circuit. There is room to get through, but only just. Yellow flags being shown by the marshals. That could have been nasty if Craig Reed was unable to move. Well, Ricky Collick continues to lead the way. Ryan Smith was down to 16th. Yeah, he's right down and among the Division 2 trucks after that off. Collett leads from Stuart Oliver now second. He's got ahead of Bradley Smith. Now, let's see if we can see what happened. Ricky Collett was in the lead. Three, oh, you, they tried to go three wide. That doesn't work through Spitfires. Craig Reed got squeezed in the middle. He got caught up with Ryan Smith. They went off. And that caused everybody else to bottleneck behind. So David Jenkins hit the back of Stephen Powell. So that's what happened. Ryan Smith is now going to have to do, as they say in America, a burn from the stern. He's going to have to come through from the back. He's ahead of the Division 2 group, which is led by Craig Evans. There's the big four in Division 2. It's Evans that's got the lead of Division 2. Can he hang on for his first ever win? So Ryan Smith came across the line 13th. He's now up to 12th. Now he's got to catch the rest of Division 1. Ricky Collett leads, but Stuart Oliver's done the fastest lap in second place. 1 minute 12.37. Craig Evans leads Division 2, but Paul Rivette is on his tail. And we know how quick Paul Rivette is. Here comes Stuart Oliver. Tries for the lead. No, you don't, says Ricky Collins. Two of the all-time greats of British truck racing out in front. Third place is young Bradley Smith. Then it's Simon Reid, a holding family honour with Craig out of the race. Smoke there from Stuart Oliver. Hope that's nothing serious. Fifth across the line, John Bowler. He gets a bit of a tap there from uh, Michael Oliver. Michael Oliver needs to be careful. He's already been uh, in front of the clerk of the course once this weekend. At the inside, Simon Reid takes Bradley Smith for third place. Bradley gives him room. Big 
next in the order, Bowler and Oliver, fifth and sixth. Seventh behind them, it's Jock Borthwick, then Tom O'Rourke. As up the inside, at the crossing, oh, Ricky Collett onto the grass there, just dropped his front wheel off the course, but he's held the lead. Be a great defensive job, as he always does, Ricky Collett. Meanwhile, here's the battle in Division 2. Here comes Adam Bins. Paul Rivette's already gone through. And Craig Evans is still going to be left looking for that first-class win. Oliver tries again. Down the speedway straight to the inside. Collins closes the door. Great racing here in this final race of the weekend. Simon Reed staying with them in the Iveco. MAM, Volvo, Iveco. Another MAM in fourth. That's Bradley Smith and Stuart Oliver pushing Ricky Collins now. Collett moves to cover. Get off, he says to Stuart Oliver. And they've got to be mindful that Reed's there as well. We look back at Simon Reed from the truck of Stuart Oliver. Through Hatchet's hairpin. Bradley Smith's closing back up as well. Fifth is Bowler. Sixth, Michael Oliver. Here comes Stuart. He's got the better exit now from the hairpin. He goes through. That's uh, Spitfires. Ricky Collett had to give him room. And Simon Reed, I think he's going to get through as well. Stuart Oliver says, thanks very much, Ricky. I'm off. And the Volvo clears away, looking for his second win of the weekend. Ricky Collins still holding second. He's such a tenacious driver, is the 61-year-old from Halifax. And he clings on to second place. Right, him off at your peril, Ricky Collins. Bradley Smith in fourth. Fifth is John Bowler. He's running well ahead of Michael Oliver. Then a gap back to Jock Borthwick, who's got ahead of Tom O'Rourke in the Battle of the Scots. For seventh place, Stephen Powell behind them is ninth, and Ryan Smith is up to tenth. It's ahead of David Jenkins. He's ahead of Simon Faulkner. Jenkins was delayed. We saw on that first corner, Shamozzle. He hit the back of um, Stephen Powell. Over the line they come once again. Ricky Collins still holding second. His best result this year was a third at Snetterton. We saw on our highlights earlier. Paul Rivette at the head of Division 2 once again. Adam Bint behind him, so the gap will close by another couple of points. Division 2 is going to be such a showdown at Brands Hatch. Simon Reid tries again. This time he's got to run on Collett at the crossing. Up the inside at the left-hander, he's through. Up in the second place. Now, can he go after Stuart Oliver? Bradley Smith, John Bowler and Michael Oliver behind them. Stuart Oliver pulling away, we've lost, uh, oh that's Craig Reed. sorry, I always get the Reeds mixed up there. That's where Craig pulled off earlier on. They really need to do something to make their trucks look different. There's Gentleman Jim, still going at the tail of the field, he's fifth in Division 2. Great to have Jim Bennett back in the championship after a year away. Black and white flag being shown. That's to uh, Michael Oliver, John Bowler and Tom O'Rook for exceeding track limits. Ryan Smith stuck in 10th place. So he's not going to secure the championship this weekend, that's for certain. And Wallop, goodness me, Stephen Powell goes straight into the back of Tom O'Rook. But Powell got the worst of that. Smith up the inside. Now he's going to try and get up the inside of O'Rook as well. And no sooner have I said that Ryan Smith is stuck in 10th place, suddenly he's 8th. That'll start it when Stu Stephen Powell smacked into the back of Tom O'Rourke. I thought they were both going to go spinning off. John Powell, John Bowler rather, all over the back of Bradley Smith for 4th. over six minutes of the race to go. David Jenkins now gets a track limits warning as well. Let's have a look at that again. This, as I said, Ryan Smith was stuck behind this group. Let's see what Stephen Powell does here. Up the inside. Bang! Lucky he didn't burst Tom O'Rourke's tyre there. Did he just misjudge that or uh, are his brakes fade? He's lost three places as a result. Still, Stuart Oliver leads from Simon Reid. Can Ricky Collins hang on for his second podium 
of this British Truck Racing season. Michael Oliver still having a go at John Bowler. Ryan Smith's next target is Jock Borthwick. Running well in seventh in the MAN. This is the battle for ninth. David Jenkins ahead of Stephen Powell. They've got ahead of uh, Tom O'Rourke now. After that little schmozzle through the crossing. And Jenkins is sliding wide. Oh, I thought he was going to go into the grass there. Stephen Powell. More contact. There's going to be nothing left of that MAN. They drag their way along the straights. Let's look back at Division 2. Being led by Paul Rivetta ahead of Adam Bintz. There's going to be such a battle between those two for the title. John Powell's up to third now. So Craig Evans once again relegated down to fourth. Here comes Stephen Powell again. David Jenkins moves to cover. Powell not close enough to attack. Tom O'Rourke closing up as well. There's bits of bodywork everywhere. You can tell it's the last race of the weekend. But it's been a real treat for truck racing fans this weekend with six races instead of five. Another five to come at Brands Hatch. And a firework display as well. There's Ryan Smith. He shedded uh, most of his front body work. Still Ricky Collett in a podium position. Smith now in uh, eighth position. Bradley Smith is fourth. Ahead of Bowler and Oliver. Still the same order in this little group. It's under four minutes to go. There's Neil Yates. Black and white flag being shown to Stephen Powell. And Michael Oliver has got a five-second penalty. Ryan Smith has got past John Borthwick. Tom O'Rourke's got a five-second penalty, both for track limits. And Ryan Smith is only three and a half seconds behind Michael Oliver, so he's going to gain another place. Staying ahead of uh, John Powell, doing all he can in Division 2, but he's four seconds behind Paul Rivent now. And MAN is so quick. Division 2 could yet go down to a tie break this year on race wins. And in that case, I think it would be Paul Rivet who's done the majority of the race winning. Is that is Ryan Smith slowing down? I thought he slowed there, coming along Speedway straight. John Borthwick was back up alongside him. I think Smith's in trouble. Borthwick's there with him. Yeah, Smith a little bit off the pace, so maybe he missed a gear there. Let's have a look as he comes through. Borthwick up the outside. Yeah, Smith not as quick as he was. Let's look at his lap time. Yeah, 1 minute 14.9. His quickest was a 1.11.4. So Smith a little slow, but he's still going. And he leans on Borthwick through the hairpin. I don't think he saw him there. He's gone by. Jenkins is going through. Smith's in trouble. Dan Ryan Smith's in trouble. He's, he is slowing down. Well, Borthwick was the big loser there because Smith leaned him wide. He's lost two places. And Ryan Smith, is he going to be able to keep going? There's only two minutes on the clock. He could limp it round for another couple of laps, whatever the problem is. But the championship leader is in trouble. Is he going to be able to keep going? He always seems to have problems here at Pembrey. It's a bit of a bogey track for him. He crashed out of one race here last year. Last time we visited in May. Paul Rivette isn't in trouble. He's dominating Division 2. And this man is dominating Division 1. Stuart Oliver, we haven't forgotten about him, is heading for victory for the second time this weekend. Ryan Smith's going to try and limp it home. Ryan Stewart Oliver's leading by eight and a half seconds now. Can Ryan Smith limp it round to the finish just to pick up a few points? He isn't quite safe for the championship yet. If he has more misfortune at Brands Hatch, Jenkins and Oliver could catch him. 
just playing into the hands of Stuart Oliver. David Jenkins, meanwhile, is in seventh. Smith limps on. He's going to be lapped by Stuart Oliver, who probably can't believe what he's seeing. There'll be one lap to go. Is Smith going to carry on or is he coming into the pits? He's trying to carry on. Into the last lap of the weekend we go here at Pembrey. The lead is up to 9.6 seconds now. The white flag is showing. That means slow moving vehicle. As Ryan Smith limps on. But he's going to have to do another lap because the lead has gone through. We'll wait to see if he's going to be classified. Well, here is the man who has dominated this race once he got his way past Ricky Collett at Spitfires. He has cleared off into the sunset here at Pembrey, the 10 times British truck racing champion. At one time, a European champion as Tom O'Rourke, another man to pull in. It's going to be a win for the second time this weekend for Stuart Oliver. Checkered flag is out. Oliver takes a dominant win. 15 points and the fastest lap for the bonus points. And this man's going to win Division 2. Paul Rivette closes up again on Adam Bintz. behind John Powell so it's not going Binty's way at all this weekend as the rest of the pack make their way home Oliver the winner ahead of Simon Reid Ricky Collick gets his podium across the line in Division 2 Adam Bint only third in the class as Paul Rivette takes the win we'll confirm the full result in just a moment and what about Ryan Smith is he going to make it home yes he is he's going to limp it home but he's going to finish in 18th overall and 13th in Division 1. That's only three points. And a no score in the previous race as well. Ryan Smith despondently crawls over the line. There's your result then. Stuart Oliver, the winner by nearly 10 and a half seconds ahead of Simon Reid. Ricky Collett, second podium of the season in third. Bradley Smith, fourth. What a day for him with his first win. Completing the top five, John Bowler ahead of David Jenkins. Then Michael Oliver, Stephen Powell, Jock Borthwick and Simon Faulkner round out the top ten. Paul Rivette wins Division 2. Well clear of John Powell and Adam Bintz. Craig Evans, fourth again. And behind them, Neil Yates, Tom O'Rourke was classified as a finisher, I think, in 16th place. We'll await to see, though, uh, to confirm officially. Jim Bennett's finished under uh, Ryan Smith a lap down after his problems. We lost Craig Reed on the first lap after that contact. Now time to do the maths. I'll hand down to Pointy. Hello, how are we? Welcome down then to the pit lane for the last time this weekend here at South Wales Pembrey Circuit. Wow, what a way to finish the weekend. My gosh, that was a race and a half, wasn't it, people? We saw some battles. We saw two by two by two coming through that line and eventually the chequered flag, of course, goes to the phenomenal efforts of Stuart Oliver as he tries to run over one of his teammates. <laughs> Let's get in there now and give him some congratulations. Not, of course, to forget the sterling effort of Simon Reid in the 89. But, of course, it's so wonderful that we got to talk to him earlier on as well. Ricky Cullett taking his first podium of the weekend. We'll have a quick chat to Stuart Oliver as we get him out of the truck here. And we'll wait for Ricky to dismount and we'll have a quick chat to him as well. But the lead that Stuart was pulling by the end of that race, Stuart, run us through what we just saw. My gosh. 
Yeah, that was interesting. I, I knew I had a, a bit of damage, and I see I've got a bit of damage, and I wasn't just confident because, but uh, I got got away, and then I, obviously Ricky was in front of us, and Ricky's a 45 foot wide race truck, you know, and uh, but fair juice to him, you know, he knew he was under pressure, and you know I got up, got up alongside him, and that was it. He yielded, so uh, fair's fair. It was and, all clean, to be fair, at the front. Very, uh, you know, very respectful racing, which we're all happy to see at this stage of the weekend, of course. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah, normally this one it's a it's a massive pile up, but uh, there was a bit of argy bargy at the at the, uh, at the first corner and. Uh, I saw Ryan going round the outside. I thought, oh my God, and then everybody jumped on the brakes in front of us, and it was sort of, we all just ended up <laughs> having to sort of start again, really. But uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy at the front there, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was, I, but oh, no, it was well good. Done, Happy Another Happy first place podium for you. Absolutely incredible. Well done. Thank you. Going yeah, home thanks. with some serious silverware. And I tell you what, Ryan dropping back near the end of the race there as well. Minimal points for him the last two races of the weekend. That's right. It's, uh, it's looking a bit close for Brands Hatch now, eh? Yeah, well, that's, that's racing, as they say. That's racing, so yeah. We, all, we do yeah, love no. to leave it till the final weekend, oh, yeah, don't yeah. we? Well, absolutely. Why not? Why not? That's what it's all about. Oh, get yourself over into Park Burbank. We'll come and give you some trophies in a minute. Very quickly, if I can, find Ricky Cullett somewhere. Oh, there he is. He's over there. He's over there. Ah, Ricky! <laughs> oh, Ricky Collett, ladies and gentlemen, well done to you, sir. Well, you see, I told you you're going to get a podium, I told you. Yeah, yeah I, wish I, I wish I was so sure when we were talking, but yeah. <laughs> I, I just couldn't do it with Simon and, uh, and Stuart. They just they were just too strong for me. But you still held your own for a few laps there, and the, the third place, it was still a battle. It was still a battle all the way to the end. Yeah, yeah. I was ever so happy when I saw that last lap board. I bet come you out. were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that afternoon nap you had earlier on obviously made, uh, made its way. Makes all the difference. Makes, makes all, all the difference. Well, we yeah. could take a little leaf out of his book, eh? Yeah, come on, let's, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, come on, let's go and have a lie down. I'll tell you what, we'll need a lie down after today. Four races, right. You head over there, we're going to get some trophies, and we'll send you on your way home. How's that sound? That's brilliant. Thank you. Well done, Ricky. Good job. Right, we're going to head over now to Park Ferme. Uh, congratulations all round. You can feel the uh, relief that is in the air right now without too much serious damage. Massive shame for Ryan Smith, of course, not to be uh, forgotten. But, uh, yeah, a bit of bad luck, hasn't he had this, this afternoon here at Pembury? But, uh, right, we're going to jump over the fence now, quite literally. We'll throw back to the studio and we'll see you in a minute with some more post-race action and, of course, the all-important trophy. Stay tuned. Well, what a weekend, is all I can say. There is a uh, dejected Ryan Smith with the number one truck. He did make it home in that one. By calculation, he scored four points from that race and a no score in race four this weekend. So by my own calculation, this is not official, the lead in the championship is down to 34 points. For Ryan Smith over Stuart Oliver. David Jenkins is five points further back. And so the championship is still between those three. In Division 2, Paul Rivette another win with fastest lap. Adam Bint only third in the class that time. Bint leads Rivette by four points. We've got ourselves a showdown in Division 2. And John Powell's only 27 points off the lead as well. With Craig Evans on 56, so he's still in mathematical contention. What a weekend it's going to be at Brands Hatch on Bonfire Weekend. We've crowned champions this weekend. Congratulations to Will Sharp, the MG Owners Club champion. Also, Wayne Spiller, the Welsh sports and saloon car champion. Well done to the pickup trucks as well. A wild weekend in all of our classes, especially for the big rigs. That's our final visit to Pembrey with the BARC for 2023. We're back in action on BARC TV next week though we're at Donington Park for the uh, final round of the MSUK British Endurance Championship Brick Car Trophy and also the Classic Touring Car Racing Club have their finals next week as well champions to be crowned there so join us from Donington Park next week to close out here at Pembroke we must say thank you first of all to all our volunteer marshals we couldn't go racing without the Orange family Great to hear from some of them this weekend with uh, Pointy and Ewan as well. 
thank you to all the other staff here, the uh, rescue crews, the recovery drivers, the uh, medical staff, the race control staff, all the officials from the British Automobile Racing Club and everybody else that made this Pembrey event possible. Thanks to all our classic car exhibitors getting to do a couple of laps of the circuit as well. Thank you to the drivers for their entertainment and to their backup teams and crews for keeping the race vehicles running. Well, we'll see you at Donington next week then. But that's about all from BARC TV here at Pembrey. On behalf of Ewan Dunlop, Pointy, all our camera crews, directors and everyone else here this weekend, this is commentator Dave Goddard signing off here at the home of Welsh Motorsports. Thank you very much indeed for watching this weekend. We'll see you at Donington next week. Bye for now.